What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if neglected Naruto shows his true power. Summary, after being neglected by Kakashi, Naruto decides to show his true self and show Konoha what he's capable of. Chapter 1 Chapter 1 Bride, Inheritance, and Summons Konoha Hospital A 14-year-old Naruto was currently arguing with his so-called sensei in the hallway of the hospital. What do you mean you can't train me for the finals? Naruto yelled while Kakashi who had his book in his face sighed. Because Naruto I'm already training Sasuke and I can't help you both. Plus he's facing that ninja from Suna and he needs all the help he can get. The copy nin responded while Naruto looked at him in shock. He wasn't even gonna try to help him. What the hell do you mean he needs all the help? I'm facing that Bakanaji in the first rounds damn it, and I don't even know how to fight him. The blonde screamed. Again Kakashi doesn't bother to look at Naruto's who had a look of anger and hurt on his face. But that all changes when Kakashi says these words. I know that and so what? You're not ready to take the next step as a shinobi and perhaps getting beat by Neji will wake you up to reality. Sasuke is the only one on the team who has what it takes to be a real ninja and I won't waste my time with someone who can even control his own chakra. I'm sorry Naruto but you have no talent nor do you deserve to be a ninja. He said but failed to realize that Naruto was trembling in rage with his head down. His eyes became slitted as he realized that Kakashi didn't give a shit about him. He was just like the other villagers and teachers, minus Iruka in the academy that ruined his academics. The only reason you're a ninja in the first place is because the son Daime felt sorry for you and he said until smack. Naruto smacked the book out of Kakashi's hand shocking the jounin and saw the look on Naruto's face. His eyes were filled with anger, hatred, rage, and hurt. If looks could kill, then Kakashi would be dead right now. Naruto just looked him with a dark expression on his face. He was clenching and unclenching his hands trying to keep himself from socking his sensei in the face. Is that so? I have no talent as ninja huh? I'm not ready to take the next step as a ninja just because I'm not like Sasuke? He said raising the tone on his voice. Kakashi realized that everyone in the hospital was hearing Naruto raise his voice and started to speak up. Please Naruto calm down he tried to say only for the pissed blonde to cut him off. Shut up, he yelled out making the man's eyes widen in shock. I will not calm and I will not listen to a fucking thing you say Hatake. Let me tell you something you piece of shit. I may not have talent like your fucking Uchiha but at least I'm not a fucking coward who's a jutsu stealing bitch. I have done more for this team than that spoiled brat has. I'm the one who got your sorry ass out of Zabuza's water prison not Sasuke. I'm the one who beat Haku not Sasuke. And not only that, in the forest of death, I took on Orochimaru while your so-called Uchiha and Haruno froze up like little bitches. But do you want to know what pisses me off more? He growled out while Kakashi looked at Naruto with the same shocked expression. You didn't follow your own damn motto those who break the rules are trash but those who abandon their comrades are lower than trash. I guess that makes you and those brats lower than trash because unlike them I took that motto to heart. You are nothing but a fucking hypocrite, he yelled out at the silver haired Jounin. Look Naruto I Kakashi tried to say again but got cut off again. Save your bullshit for someone who cares asshole because as of now I'm done with this team. So go ahead and train that fucking brat. I don't need your training. I'll find someone who will train me and then not only will I kick Neji's ass, I'll kick Sasuke's and that Tanuki from Suna's ass also. If I don't make Chunin then I'll ask for a team transfer. I'm pretty sure a guy would make a better sensei than you. After all, he trained a dead lass that kicked Sasuke's ass and almost killed Gara. Even if he is a little odd in the head. He then walks off while the doctors moved out of his way because they didn't want to face his wrath. Kakashi tried to grab Naruto's shoulder only for the blonde to swipe at his hand with his now clawed hand. Kakashi slowly backed away from the snarling blonde. Touch me and I'll rip your fucking hand off you son of a bitch. I can't believe you of all people was my father's statuant. He said and again walked off leaving a wide-eyed Kakashi in the hallway. Little did they know, Mei Terumi, the goddamn Mizukage of Karagakura was watching and couldn't help but smile when she saw her so-called deceased fiancé was still alive but frowned when she realized that the council lied to her about him dying with the Ondame who arranged a marriage with her and his son and also growled when she saw his sensei brush him off. Don't worry my maelstrom, if he won't help you then I will, she said and shun shines out of the hospital. Naruto was now in a forest no longer wearing that black jumpsuit but a black one with fingerless gloves sitting under a tree branch with a blank expression on his face. I should've known that bastard wouldn't teach me anything. Hell the only thing he did teach me was tree walking while going to train the Uchiha in private. That fucking asshole. No talent my ass. I was the one who saved his sorry ass from Zabuza when he trapped him in that water prison while that demon Haruno wanted to run away like little bitches. He then closes his eyes and falls asleep. I'll show him no talent when I kick Neji's, Sasuke's, and that San Nin's ass in the finals and make Chunin.
It's time I stopped playing the fool and show Konoha what I can really do. He mumbles. He then finds himself in his mindscape which was in the form of a forest. He opens his eyes and finds himself resting his head on the lap of a red hair, red-eyed woman who in his eyes looked like a goddess. She wore a ruby red kimono with flowers on it and had flawless skin. She smiled back at Naruto who did the same as well. Kit we have to find a way to get rid of that seal the heavy put on you in the forest of death, QB said while Naruto nods. I know Q-chan. It's been screwing up with my chakra control and I can only stay in contact with you for a few minutes so what do we do? Naruto asked. QB thought about it and was about to speak until a voice spoke. Simple my other half, we must become one again. That's when another version of Naruto appeared but there's a difference. Instead of being 5 feet 3 inches he was 5 feet 6 inches and was built like an athletic swimmer. There was hardly any baby fat on his face and the whisker marks on his face were gone and he also had deep blue slitted cerulean eyes and canines that jutted from his upper lip. His hairstyle and facial appearance was similar to the Yondimes, Minato was a kid. He also wore a black jumpsuit. Hello my other half. How many years has it been? Naruto's other half said while he smiles. Seven years. He started to say but felt a pull in his mindscape by the seal. Look we only have a few seconds before I'm pulled out by that accursed seal. We need to become one again, Naruto said while his other half nods. Hi let's do this. The other half replies and reaches his hand out as does Naruto. When their hands grasp each other, their bodies glow. Kyuubi's eyes widen in shock when a white light surrounds them and the white orb grows larger and larger until it covers the entire mindscape. Outside Naruto's body, Naruto's resting body is surrounded by a blue cocoon made of chakra and it slowly grows white. After a few minutes, cracks then started to surround the cocoon and then it shattered and there stood the new and improved Naruto wearing a new outfit. He was now 5 feet 6 inches wearing a dark blue long sleeve jacket with pockets on it and a silver line going down the sleeves. He also wore black onbu styled pants with a silver line going down the middle and onbu styled sandals that stopped below his knees. He also wore a black muscle shirt that hugged his body and wore it like a second skin and it showed off his chest and abs. On the back of his jacket was the picture of the QB in a crouching position as well as the five elemental kanjis for water, wind, lightning, fire, and earth. He also had black fingerless gloves on and they had metal plates on them. He also had crimson highlights in his bangs. Naruto walks over to the lake and looks at himself. He smirks and looks at his new clothes. He then stretches his arms and sighs in relief. Man it's good to be whole once again. I don't know what I'd do if I had to play the fool for one more day. I better inform Oji-san that I'm back and ask him about this seal that's cutting me off from Q-chan. He says but stops for a moment and performs a ram seal. Small trees started to form around him but stopped when they only reached to his height. He sighs and wipes a bead of sweat off his brow. Damn. I must have lost a lot of my strength when my soul split in half. I guess I have to regain my strength again. He says until he hears a voice that sounds like an angel's. Perhaps I can help you Naruto-kun, said the soft and serene voice. Naruto turns around and sees someone whom he can only describe as a goddess in human form. It was the only way to describe the woman that was in his line of vision. She had long red russet colored hair which was pulled up into an elegant top knot on the top of her head and a bang came down from the top of her head and covered her right eye. Her eyes were a beautiful jade green, a small nose and beautiful lips which had blue lipstick on them, all of which were perfect for her face. She also had on a full body fishnet suit and over it she wore what appeared to be a one piece blue garment that hugged her hourglass body and showed off her flawless cream colored sexy legs. This woman was without a doubt the epitome of beauty and Naruto couldn't help but blush. May who was watching his eyes wonder on her figure giggled at his dazed look and smiled. Are you done checking me out now? She asked which caused Naruto to blink for a while and when he realized what he was doing, he turned red and jumped back. S sorry. I didn't mean to stare at you like that, he said while she giggles and walks up to him until they're a few feet from each other. Naruto had to keep his eyes from ogling her cleavage and chest. It's okay. I expect my future husband to look at me like that, she said. Oh I see wait what? yelled Naruto whose eyes were the size of dinner plates while Mei just smiled at him. I'm your fiancé Naruto-kun, she said and Naruto did the only thing he could do. He fainted while Mei looked at his unconscious form. She sighs and rubs the back of her neck. Maybe I shouldn't have been so forward. She says to herself. A few hours later, Naruto slowly opens his eyes and finds his head resting on her lap while she smiles down at him. I'm glad you're finally awake Naruto-kun. Mei says while Naruto sits up and rubs his head in embarrassment. Sorry for fainting but I could have sworn you said that I was your fiancé, he said and she nods. Yes I did say that Naruto-kun. You and I were supposed to be engaged but certain members in this village lied to me about you dying and I need to talk to the Hokage about it.
she said while caressing his face while he had to hold in a shudder. I I see but I don't think Saru Oji had nothing to do with it. That's not his way of acting. I should know he did train me before that incident occurred, he said while she blinked at him in confusion. Okay. Let's go meet him and after that I'll help you with your training, she said and wraps an arm around him pulling him close to her ample chest while he blushes a little and they disappear in a swirl of water. Hokage Tower Saru Toby was currently doing paperwork while glaring at the rest that was piled up on his desk and on his floor. I swear Minato died just to get away from this accursed paperwork. He muttered. That's when a swirl of water appeared in his office and he jumped out of his seat, pulling out a kunai. When it cleared, he saw Mei the god I'm Mizukage with a boy who looked like a younger version of Minato. Hiruzen blinks for a while and looks at him for a while before his eyes widened. Naruto? He asked while the boy nodded and grins. What's up Saruoji? I'm back, he said. Sarutobi blinks for a while and then smiles. I see. That's good to hear Naruto. It must have been hell for you to play the fool for the last seven years. He replied while the blonde sighs in frustration. I'm just glad to be whole once again. Do you have any idea how tough it was for me to do it? The only difference is my strength and knowledge. I lost half of it after what happened to me when I was seven. He replied while Sarutobi nods. I see, Amizakage don't know I apologize for ignoring you. What can I do for you? He asks while Mei has a serious expression on her face. You can start by explaining why you sent me a false document stating that my fiancé died along with his father, Minato Namikaze during the Kyuubi attack 14 years ago and cancelled the arranged marriage? She asked in a dark tone. An action like can be considered an act of war. Mei growled out while Sarutobi looked at her with a look of confusion on his face. I'm sorry Mizukage Dono but I don't recall sending you a document in cancelling an arranged marriage. He replied while Mei raised an eyebrow while Haruzin smirks. I may be old Mizukage Dono but I'm not senile. Do you happen to have the documents with you? He asked while she nods and pulls it out of her garment and hands it to Haruzin who takes it. He opens the paper up and looks at it. When he looks down at the Hokage signature his eyes widen and narrow. He then looks up at the Mizukage. I'm sorry to say Mizukage Dono but this isn't my seal of approval. This seal is a fake. He says and her eyes widened. What? But I could have sworn are you sure? I mean the elders of this village had an anbu with a blank mask sent this. Naruto's and Sarutobi's eyes widen when she said elders and an anbu with a blank mask. Naruto's eyes narrow as does Sarutobi's. I'm going to kill the crippled bastard and his flunkies, Naruto said in a dark tone. You're gonna have to get in line Naruto because I'm gonna deal with them first. Those idiots could have caused a war for doing this. Sarutobi growled and smashed his fist onto the desk. Mei's eyes widen in shock. So you didn't send that Anbu with the blank mask? Hiruzen shook his head. No I didn't. Mizukage Dono on behalf of myself and Kanahagakur no Sato I offer you my deepest apology. I promise you once I get enough proof on those fools I'll have them publicly executed for treason and nearly starting a war. If not then I'll have them sent to you in chains and you may deal with them. I know it isn't much now but unless I find proof of this then there's little I can do. He says while she nods. That was when Naruto spoke up. Speaking of seals Oji-san. There's this seal on me that's screwing up my chakra and contact with Q-chan. Naruto then lifts up his shirt, showing off his six-pack and getting a small blush out of the Mizukage. Sarutobi walks over to Naruto, kneels down, and looks at it. He notices five extra seals on the Shiki Foon and HMMS. The Gagio Foon, five elemental seals. Looks like my student Orochimaru's work. He mutters, just give me a minute to get rid of this Naruto. He says and his fingertips glow blue in his right hand. Brace yourself Naruto, Gagyokan, five elementals on seal. He says and thrusts his palms into Naruto's torso and removes them instantly. Naruto gasps out in pain and clutches his stomach. Sweet Kami that hurt. He cries out but can feel his chakra control return to normal. Thanks Soji-san. Is it possible for me to get my parents scrolls now? He asks and gets a nod from the old man. He goes to a great vault and opens it up, pulling out three scrolls. One was yellow and had his father's jutsu. The other was red and had his mother's, and the last one contained his mother's sword, sword style, and her fighting style. Here you go Naruto, the rest are in your family's compound but I had to seal it back due to certain people trying to break into it. Hiruzen says getting a nod from the blonde. Thanks Soji. I'll be spending the next two months training with Mei-chan so that I can get my strength back to what it once was. He says while Sarutobi had a look of confusion on his face. Shouldn't Kakashi be training you to face Neji Hyuga? He asked only to see Naruto's eyes grow cold. No. 
Unfortunately I'm not worth his time and don't have any talent. But what pissed me off was the fact that he said the only reason I became a ninja in the first place was because you pitied me. He said while Sarutobi's eyes became murderous and he grinds his teeth in frustration. He was gonna have a long talk with Kakashi after the Chunin exams. I see. I'll be sure to deal with him after the finals Naruto. I wish you luck in your training and we'll see you in two months. Now I have to get back to my paperwork. He said with disdain in his voice while May sweat drops at the piles of paperwork. She had the same issue in Kiri. Naruto snorts at the sight and then grins. I think I know a way on how to get rid of your problem Saru Oji. Naruto says. Sarutobi looks at him in shock then appears on his knees begging scaring the blonde while anime tears fell from his face. Please tell me Naruto. He asks in a hysterical voice while Naruto thinks about it in mock thought while Mei just looks at him with wide eyes. I don't know Oji-san. What do I get if I tell you? Naruto asks. Anything. Access to the Hokage vault. Signing traveling rights. Name it and I'll do all in my power to grant it. He says frantically. Show this old man some mercy and tell me please. Did I mention that I always thought of you as my grandson? His lip quivers and he does the puppy eyes jutsu. Naruto however was laughing his ass off inside of his mind. Okay I'll tell you. He says while Sarutobi's eyes become stars. Why not use cage bushins to finish it faster? They pass their knowledge back to the user when they disperse. He says while Sarutobi's jaw drops and may just look at him. The old man then gets up from his desk and he starts banging his head on the wall while calling himself Ibaka. Naruto however was laughing at him but then calms down when Sarutobi returns to normal. Well I'm a man of my word Naruto so for helping me find a way to finish paperwork faster I'm giving you your first S ranked mission pay for helping two kids deal with our worst enemies which is that. He says pointing to the piles of paperwork and also access to the Hokage vault and signing traveling rights. He finishes. Naruto had the biggest grin on his face and was about to say something but found himself being glomped by Mei and having his head buried into her cleavage. Yes. My future husband rid me of my biggest issue, she said and burying him even deeper into her chest. Oomph. Naruto says while waving his arms around the air struggling to breathe and free his head from her cleavage. Sarutobi was watching this and couldn't help but giggle pervertedly at the scene. Naruto you lucky bastard. If Jiraiya was here. He'd be flying out the window via nosebleed right now Naruto was finally able to pry himself from her cleavage and gasp for air. Q, who had just woken up was fuming. That slut. Who does she think she is hugging my Naruto-kun like that? It should be me hugging him like that. She ranted while her eyes glowed red. When Mei releases him a sly smirk appears on her face. I guess that means that I'll have to reward you for helping me Naruto-kun. She says in a sexy voice while a blush appears on Naruto's face and he starts sputtering. She then leans next to his ear and whispers into it. Naruto's blush grew bigger and a trickle of blood drips down his nose. M. Mei Chan. He says while she giggles and sets him down. She then winks at him, grabs his hand, and leads him out of the Hokage Tower while swaying her hips in his line of vision. Naruto just kept his eyes on her ass and drool escapes from the side of his mouth. Q however was grumbling. Her ass isn't that great. Mine is way cuter. Naruto snaps out of his daze and speaks to her in his mind. Q Chan are you jealous? He asks and she HMPS. Please why would I the queen of the Makai realm be jealous of a Ningen? I know my ass is hotter. How come you don't stare at mine like that? She asks with a pout on her face. An evil smirk appears on his face. Because I have another reason for wanting your ass. He says sending pictures in his mind of him violating her ass. She sees them, blushes and hides her ass with her tails. Hentai. Oh well I can't blame you for wanting to do that to me. Think you can convince Mei-chan to let you do that to her? She asks with a sly grin on her face which causes Naruto to nearly fall on his face. What? He yells out loud getting Mei's attention. Is something wrong Naruto-kun? She asks while they head to the forest again. Naruto looks at her and shakes his head. No Q-chan is being perverted. She mentioned something about me doing something to you. He says and rubs the back of his head while looking away. Mei raises an eyebrow and stares at her fiancé. You doing what to me? She asks and Naruto gulps and motions her to lean over and she does. He whispers into her ear and after a while she blushes at the thought. Naruto moves his head away from her and she just stares at him for a while. She then grins pervertedly at him. So you like to give it a try Naruto-kun? She asks and he gives her a shocked look. Eh? Mei-chan are you serious? We barely know each other. He protests while she laughs. I know I know. I don't expect us to become that intimate for a while but if you want to we could she started to say but Naruto waves his arms in protest. No it's fine. W we can wait. He says laughing nervously while Mei laughs at him. 
You're so cute when you act like that. Anyway before we start our training let's introduce ourselves. She says getting a nod from Naruto. I'm Mei Terumi, soon to be Mei Terumi Namikaze, god I'm Mizukage of Kirigakur. My likes are my fiancé, village, green tea, and hot springs. My dislikes are men who think women are only good for breeding, traitors, and the elders of Konoha who lied to me about the death of my fiancé. My hobbies are relaxing in hot springs, swimming, and performing tea ceremonies. My dream is to get married, have children, and know what it's like to be loved by a real man. She says while Naruto blushes. My name is Naruto Namikaze Sanju. My likes are training, ramen and dango, Iruka sensei Oji-san, and Q-chan. My dislikes is most of the village, Team 7, Uchiha's, rapists, and the civilians and elders of the council. My hobbies are sparring with Oji-san, morning jogs, swimming, gardening, cooking, and a lot of other things. My dreams are to become the strongest ninja to ever exist, revive my clan and have a large family, he said and May smiles. So does that mean you'll have to take on more than one wife? May asks and Naruto nods. Yeah but only those that will love me for me and not for my status or money. I hate people who do that. I hope you're okay with this Mei Chan. He replies while she thinks about it. I'm fine with it. However I want to be the one who bears your first child understand? She asks and he nods with a blush on his face. S sure. Mei smiles and kisses him on the forehead. Oh I also have this for you. No one has held this contract for a long time and is considered to be very powerful. She bites her thumb, performs a few seals and then slams her hand onto the ground. Kushios no Jutsu. Summoning Jutsu. In a puff of smoke a large silver white scroll appears and on top of it was the head of what looked like a silver dragon with fangs. This Naruto-kun is the contract for the Akuhe, Hydra, clan. There are clan who are of a higher group of serpents but they're related to dragons. I found it in a cave off the shores off Mizu no Kuni. Once you sign this, you'll be sent to their realm to meet their leader so try not to upset her or she'll kill you, Mei said in a serious tone while Naruto gulps but nods. The scroll opens up and reveals a list that only had one name in it but it was smudged so Naruto couldn't tell whose name was on it. He then bites his thumb and smears his name on the blank space next to the smeared name and finishes it with the Senja symbol. His name glows blue on the scroll and it suddenly trembles and rolls up, shocking the blonde. The head on it comes to life and lets out a roar before disappearing in a puff of smoke as does Naruto. Mei was watching this and couldn't help but be afraid for him. I hope he's the one. Yamada no Orochi. She says and sits cross-legged onto the grass. Meanwhile, Naruto appears in a puff of smoke in another world. He looks around and couldn't help but admire the sight. He was currently at a lake's edge turning around he saw a forest that seems to stretch for miles and next to the forest was a green hilly area that was attached to a huge mountain. At the foot of the mountain was a huge cave. As he finished surveying the area he turned back towards the lake and sat down. Okay I'm here now what do I do? He says to himself until he hears the sound of splashing water and turns his head around only to see a large gold yellow slitted eye that was the size of a full grown man staring at him. The eye was connected to the head of what looked like a giant serpent that had silver white skin and blackish green spots on it. It also had what appeared to be long sharp spikes on its head and probably went down its neck and back. Naruto just sat there staring at the giant eye for a few minutes and did the only thing any person would do when they saw something of that size. He screamed like a little girl and ran for his life. While he did that, a small sweat drop appeared on the Hydra's head as it watched Naruto run away waving his arms around and screaming his head off about giant snakes trying to eat him again. Inside his mindscape Q was rolling around the ground laughing her ass off and clutching her stomach. Okami this is priceless. Naruto-kun is running away from Yamachan. She then stops and looks up at the sky. Can't blame him though, Yamachan does have that effect on people when they see her in that form. But it was still funny. She says and continues to laugh. Naruto was currently running away until a large white and blackish green tail stopped in front of him, causing him to crash into it. Again the Hydra sweat drops but chuckles when he falls over clutching his head. Damn that hurt. He mumbles and finds himself staring in shock as the Hyrda fully rises from the water. Water glistened from its body and dripped from its black underbelly. Naruto's eyes were the size of basketballs and his jaw was on the ground as he looked at the Hydra. It has eight heads and eight tails. One of the heads moved down to Naruto and looks at him for a while. Why hello little Ningen. What are you doing in my realm? The feminine voice asked while Naruto just sputter and points at her. Said Hydra sighs at this. Why is it that people always act like this whenever I'm in this form? She thought and then decides to show her true form. She glows white and starts to transform. As she shrunk her heads melted together and became one head while her tails resided into her body and she became smaller and more human shaped. When the transformation started to end, 
There was a flash of bright light which temporarily blinded Naruto. When his eyesight returned to him, he was met with the most beautiful woman he had ever seen in his life. She had silky smooth black hair that stopped to her mid-back and it had silver highlights in it. Her skin was creamy white and smooth and it seemed to shine from the sunlight. She had beautiful gold yellow slitted eyes and fangs jutted from her upper lip. She wore a black kimono that had white dragons on it and the outfit seemed to hug her hourglass figure and assets that weren't too big or too small. She also had a slit on the right side of her kimono and showed off her long, sexy, flawless legs. Naruto couldn't help but blush at her appearance. A sly grin appeared on her face and she leans over to give him a better view of her cleavage. Like what you see? Yamada asks while he does the next thing that came to his mind. He fainted. Again. Chapter 1, Training, Perverts, and Finals Naruto slowly opened his eyes and finds himself sleeping under a tree with his body resting on it. He groans and slowly gets up. Man I had the weirdest dream. I was face to face with an eight-headed, eight-tailed hydra that was the size of the Hokage Tower and it then transformed into a beautiful woman. He mutters but then hears a soft and angelic voice speak up. So I'm just a dream you thought of? That really hurts my feelings. He looks around the area and doesn't see anybody but then he looks up to see the same woman from last time sitting on a tree looking down at him with a hurt look on her face. Naruto looks at her and his eyes become bug-eyed. Okami you are real. He says out loud getting a grin from her. Of course I am you silly Ningen. This is my human form after all. She then leaps off the tree and lands on the ground softly. She walks up to the blonde and looks down at him. I am the Yamada no Orochi but call me Shiroi Akuhei, White Hydra. Shiroi asks in a calm tone while Naruto nods. Okay. So you're not the boss summon for a guy named Orochimaru? Naruto asks while Shiroi blinks in confusion and then shakes her head. No I've never heard of him why? She asks. Because he's a senin for the snakes. He answered but the shivered when he saw the dark look in her eyes. Light green chakra swirled around her and she let out a hiss. I see. So that traitorous bastard Manda has a summoner? I should have killed that power hungry fool when I had the chance a long time ago. He had the nerve and audacity to try and overthrow me. The Yamada no Orochi. She hissed out and cracked her knuckles. I swear I'll kill that legless worm and feed his remains to the crocodiles. Anyway I'm sorry for scaring you. She paused for a moment until Naruto rubbed the back of his head nervously and spoke up. Sorry Shiroi-chan, I'm Naruto Namikaze Senju, he said but didn't notice the small blush appear on her face. Naruto, I know you signed the contract for my clan but I must ask you this. What will you do with me as your boss summon and why should I even let you summon my kin? Shiroi asked in a serious tone. Naruto looks at her with an expression that represented a strong will and determination. Shiroi-chan I give you not only my word but I swear on my clan's honor and title that I'll never abuse the power of you and your kin. I will treat you like I treat my comrades and not as tools and I wish to fight by your side as an ally, he said while Shiroi looks at him for a while and then smiles. Your eyes hold no lies or ill intentions. Very well Naruto Namikaze Senju. Ashiroi Akuhei, the Yamada no Orochi and leader of the reptile clan grant you the right to summon me and my kin. Now hold out your right arm. She orders and he does. Her fangs extend and she clamps them down on Naruto's wrist. Said blonde winces in pain while he felt a burning sensation go through his wrist and forearm. The pain dies down and she lets go of his arm. Naruto looks at his right arm and sees the tattoo of an eight-headed hydra wrapped around his arm. He looks at Shiroi for a while then bows to her getting a look of surprise from the Hydra. Thank you Shiroi-chan for giving me the honor to summon your kin. He says and she smiles. You are welcome young Namikaze. The last couple of people who tried to force me under their command were crushed, poisoned, melted by my acid or eaten though I had to cut back on eating Ningen because they give me heartburn, she said while Naruto chuckles nervously. Remind me to never piss you off Shiroi-chan. He replies while she laughs lightly and does a dismissive wave. Don't worry. Also to summon me you must wipe your blood on top of the tattoo. There are also other members of my clan. They are the sea serpents, the crocodiles, hydras, and komodo dragons. She explains and he nods. I also have a gift for you. She says and walks over to the lake and stretches her hand out. Ripples appear around the water and with a splash, a katana with a deep blue hilt, white diamond shaped patterns that has a white diamond on the end of it. The guard was black and carved in the form of a hydra coiling around the blade. It was in a black and red sheath that had a white dragon wrapped around it with its maw opened. She grabbed the sword and walked over to Naruto. She then held it out with both of her hands in front of the blonde who looked at it for a while and at her. She nods for him to take it and he does. When he unsheathes it, he gasps at the blade's beauty. It was a silver blade and there seemed to be no scratches or any sign of markings on it. 
He could also see his reflection off the blade and the sun's rays shining on it only made it more dazzling this sword is beautiful. He says and Shiroi nods while smiling, thank you Naruto kun. This sword is called Shinkan no Akuhei, Fang of the Hydra. I had it forged from my fangs and scales and forged in the white flames of a dragon and cooled in Susano's lake. Try channeling your chakra affinity into the sword. She says and he nods. He channels his lightning affinity into the blade and suddenly lightning runs up the blade and the blonde's eyes widen in shock and awe. Wow so I can channel my chakra and elemental affinity through the blade? This is awesome. He then stops channeling chakra into the sword, sheathes it, and then hugs Shiroi, whose eyes widen in surprise but returns it, and they then let go of each other. So how do I leave this place Shiroi-chan? Naruto asks. Just imagine yourself back at your previous location. She replied. Naruto pictures the forest of Konoha and Mei and he disappears in a puff of smoke. Konoha Forest Mei was sitting in the same spot where Naruto disappeared from but then she jumps up on her feet when a puff of smoke appears and when it clears, Naruto is seen with a sheathed katana in his left hand. He then finds himself being glomped by Mei and his head buried into her cleavage. Naruto-kun you're back. I thought Yamada no Orochi killed you, she cried out while the blonde let out an oomph. After freeing himself she lets him go and he smiles at her. Now Naruto. You said you needed to get your original strength back right? She asks and he nods. Yeah when I was 7 I had an accident where I was working on a seal that'll let Q-chan come in and out of the seal without killing me. I wrote the wrong sealing symbol on my father's jutsu and it resulted in my chakra and Q's to go haywire. I came so close to dying that day but luckily Saru Oji was there and placed chakra compression seals all over my body. He said getting a look of horror from her face while he continued. He had to call in my Kyofu, Jiraiya the Gamma Sen and the repair my seal. While that happened, Kyuchan had to separate half of my soul in order for me to recover and also turned me into a Hanyo that day he saw Mei was about to speak up and he just chuckles. No I didn't gain fox ears or a tail. I gained those when I turned 18. I did gain claws, fangs, and other abilities I don't feel like explaining out in the open. If that incident hadn't happened, I would be at least as strong as an Anbu but now I'm only on par with a high Chinese level Nin so I need to gain it back as soon as possible. He finished explaining and she nods. So what affinities do you have? Mei asked while Naruto pulled out a piece of white paper and focused his chakra into it. First it split it in half, then it got soaked up on one side, wrinkled up in the other and burned and turned to dust on the other sides. Mei's eyes widened in shock as she saw that he had an affinity for all five main elements. Being the container for the most powerful Baiju in the elementals and a Hanyo does have its advantages. I gained wind from my father, water and lightning from my mother, and fire from Q since it's her major affinity. I gained earth from one of her tails but also gained a few sub-elemental affinities. He pulls out another chakra paper focuses even harder on it. A plant grows out of one side and the other side is molten maze looks at the paper and her eyes were bigger than dinner plates. Why you have the same sub-element like I do? And you also have Makutan? She then squeals out loud and pulls him into a hug then nuzzles his cheek. My future husband is so amazing. She then lets go of him and he then destroys the two papers. The last thing I need is for those bastards in the council knowing this. So Mei-chan after we finish training do you want to go to the hot springs? He asks his future wife, getting a smile from the young cage. I'd love to. We can go in the co-ed side and wash each other's backs Naruto-kun. She says in a seductive tone while Naruto rubs the back of his head blushing. Sure I'll wash your back Mei-chan. He replies and they both start to laugh. That's when Naruto spoke up. You have a beautiful laugh Mei-chan. This causes a blush to appear on her face. Thank you. Anyway let's get started on your training. For the next couple of hours, Naruto worked in his chakra exercises as well as did push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups in his mother's kenjutsu and taijutsu styles, the heat and Mitsurugi Ryu, flying heavenly sword, and Shinku Ryu Ken, crimson dragon fist. After spending the next five hours training his ass off, they headed for the hot springs. After signing in, Mei reserved the co-ed side for her and Naruto only. Said blonde was relaxing his body into the warm soothing water with his eyes closed. Sleeping on top of his head curled up into a ball was a red fur covered fox with two tails. It was Q. Said fox's ears shot up and opened one of her pink colored eyes. She saw Mei walking towards the hot spring with her hair down and a towel wrapped around her body. A grin appears on her face and she jumps off of Naruto's head and into the hot spring, swimming away from him and later leaps on a warm rock. Shakes the water off and falls back asleep. Naruto feels two arms wrap around his neck and a chest pressed up against his back. He turns his head to see Mei smiling at him and she kisses him lightly on the lips. Said blonde returns it and gets a good look at her body. 
The towel hugged her flawless body like a second skin and showed off every single curve her body had. Naruto wraps one arm around her waist and pulls her onto his lap getting an eep and a look of surprise from Mei. Naruto smirks at her and pulls her body close to his. Are you comfy Mei-chan? He asks while she smiles and rests her head on his shoulder. Naruto inhales her scent and she smelled like exotic fruits. Mei shivers a little but lets out a sigh and closes her eyes. Well don't you two look cute together. Q says telepathically while Naruto rolls his eyes at her. Look Q I'm not ignoring you anything but I'm trying to spend time with my fiancé. I promise I'll make it up to you when we go back to the apartment. Q looks at Naruto and grins. Fine. When we get back to your apartment you have to let me sleep with you in my human form. She says giggling inside her mind while Naruto blushes and glares at the grinning fox. He then gets an evil glare on his face making Q who's in her fox form I twitch. If I were you Q I'd watch my backside when sleeping with me. I might end up doing something to it that'll make you scream my name. Q shivers and gives him a heated glare. Try it and I'll change your gender you perverted Hanyo. She growled while Naruto snickers at her expression but then his eyes widen and then narrow when he hears a giggle from the distance. Mei-chan. Naruto says. The Mizukage opens her jade eyes and looks at him. Yes? There's a pervert nearby. He whispers into her ear making her eyes widen a little. Would you be so kind and send him here so that I can deal with him? She asks. Naruto nods and gently removes her from his lap then gets up, acting like he's leaving the hot spring. On the tree branch a man with long white spiky hair, wearing a green gi, a red vest, red getta sandals, and a headband with the kanji for oil, was peeping on Mei who got up and looked like she was about to remove her towel with a telescope. He was Jiraiya, the Gamma Senin. Right now he was giggling like a madman when he saw Mei about to remove her towel. Oh yeah I hit the jackpot with this one. My next book is gonna be a huge hit. He says as a small drop of blood falls from his nostril. Little did he know that Naruto, who was now in a pair of shorts, was behind him crouching and grinning like a Cheshire cat. He puts his two hands together and extends his index and middle fingers and aimed them at Jiraiya's ass. Konoha Taijutsu no Ugi, Senen Garoshi. He yells, startling Jiraiya was too slow to react and ended up having a pair of chakra enhanced fingers shoved in his ass resulting in a girly scream from Jiraiya who was clutching his butt in pain and was sent flying into the hot springs, creating a big splash, soaking Mei whose eyebrow was twitching dangerously. Steam was coming off of her skin while Jiraiya, who was rising out of the water, was growling. When I get my hands on whoever did that I'll he started to say until he froze up from the murderous intent he felt behind him and slowly turned his head to see an angry Mei glaring at him with her icy jade eyes. Jiraiya gulped and started to laugh nervously. Now Mizukage don't know I can explain. He started to say until he heard her crack her knuckles loudly and walked over to him slowly. Shut up and I'll make this as painless. Actually I won't, she said as her shadow loomed over the now whimpering Jiraiya. Naruto was in the changing room with his clothes on and his katana strapped to his back, leaning against the wall. Three, two, one he says to himself and suddenly the sound of girly screams and fists making contact with a body were heard all over Konoha. Hiruzen was in his office reading his Icha Icha book while his shadow clones were doing the paperwork. He then heard a scream coming from the hot springs and sighs. When will you ever learn Jiraiya? He mumbles. Please not the face not the face. No not there either please. Naruto winced when he heard the sound of a foot making contact with a groin. Okami my manhood. The toad sage screamed out while Q, who walked into the room, saw Naruto and leapt on the top of his head. Shouldn't you go help your Kyufu Naruto-kun? I don't think he'll enjoy having his jewels melted off by your fiancé. Q asked while the blonde shrugs. Not now. Let Mei-chan beat the crap out of him for a while. He says and strokes her back with a finger, getting a purr from the fox. Ten minutes later, the beating stops and Naruto walks back into the hot spring section and sweat drops at the beaten, broken, bloody, and twitching form of Jiraiya. Mei-chan was massaging her sore knuckles and mumbled something about perverted old fools and melting off their balls with lava. Naruto chuckles at this and walks over to Mei and then places his hands around hers and they glow green. Is that better Mei-chan? Naruto asks his future bride who smiles and kisses Naruto on the lips. Yes it is. She says. They then notice Jiraiya groaning and getting up from the beating he just suffered. Okami I haven't been beaten that badly since Minato caught me peeking on Kushina. He mumbled while popping his back in place. Naruto's eyes twitched dangerously when he heard that. What was that Kyofu? Do I need to let Mei-chan here melt your balls off? He growled out only for Jiraiya to turn around and see Naruto glaring at him. Gaki? Wow what happened to you? The last time I saw you, you were a chibi version of your dad. He said with a goofy grin on his face. A small smile appears on his face. I hit a growth spurt. 
that and I was finally able to become whole again, he said causing Jiraiya's eyes to widen a little but return to normal. I see he then looks at the Mizukage and back at Naruto and a grin appears on his face. So do you mind explaining what you're doing with the Mizukage Gaki? He asks and Naruto mutters about perverted godfathers being nosy. If you must know she's my fiancé. He says causing Jiraiya's jaw to drop. D did you just say that she is your fiancé? Naruto groans and nods while rubbing the back of his head. Jiraiya then finds himself bowing down before his godson chanting I am not worthy while Mei and Q sweat drop. I'm never gonna leave my children slash kits alone with that man. They both thought while Naruto sighs at how he was acting. Jiraiya then places his hands on his godson's shoulders while anime tears fell down his face. I'm so proud of you kid. 14 years old and you already have an older woman, a cage no less, as your future bride. He ran it on until Mei coughed out loud getting their attention. Please don't corrupt my future husband Jiraiya Sama or I'll have to kill you, she said in a sweet tone making the man shiver at the tone. D don't worry I don't plan on it. Yet. So Gaki do you need any help with your training? I already have Mei-chan helping me but I could use your help with Fu and Jutsu and get me back to my original level of strength. Also do you think you can help me with the Rasengan? He asks and gets a nod from Jiraiya. Sure I was actually planning on teaching it to you when I came back and let you sign the Dode contract. Thanks but Mei-chan already gave me a contract for the Akuhe, Hydra, clan but I could use the Toads as a support summons. He said and Jiraiya's jaw dropped again and saw the tattoo of an eight-headed eight-tailed hydra on his right arm. Damn Gaki you're gonna be one hell of a ninja if you have that clan as your summon and sure I'll let you use the toads as a support summon. Naruto grins while Mei walks in to get changed. I also heard from the old man that you tangoed with a white snake in the forest of death. Are you okay? He asks in a serious yet sincere tone and Naruto nods. Yeah, despite the fact that I was eaten alive by a snake and then fought said summoner and got my chakra screwed up by a seal the team slammed into my gut while my teammates froze up like a bunch of bitches. Other than that I'm fine. Speaking of seals, do you know the Gagiofun, 5 elemental seal? Jirai blinks at Naruto for a while but nods. Yes I do why? He asks. I might need to use it in the finals because there's guy from Suna who's a container like me only his seal makes him unstable. I know he has the Ichibi no Tanuki Shukaku sealed inside him due to the fact that the demon is a sand apparition. Naruto explained and Jiraiya rubs his chin for a while and grins. I see. So are you facing him first? Jiraiya asks. No I'm facing a prick named Neji Hayuga. Naruto answers. But I already know how to beat that idiot due to the fact that the Hayugas only use their Byakugan and Jukan style, but Gara is gonna be tough for me even when I gain my strength back. He can manipulate Sam to the point where it protects him and attacks his opponents. He also has a final defense called Suna no Yoroi, Sand Armor, and it is stronger than steel, but it's also his weakness. In order for him to keep his armor strong, he needs Chakra. His Taijutsu is non-existent and I doubt that he knows Genjutsu. Naruto explain while Jiraiya smirks. Great. So we have two months to get you ready to face the Hyuga kid and the Tanuki, raccoon dog, kid. But let me ask this first Gaki. What did your sensei Kakashi teach you because the old monkey just glared at me and told me to ask you? Jiraiya replied only for Naruto to frown and narrow his eyes. Aside from tree walking? Nothing. He was too busy being Sasuke's bitch to teach me or that pink haired brat anything. He also said I wasn't worth his time and didn't have what it takes to be a shinobi and that our leader only made me one out of pity. He answered and sees Jiraiya growl and release a small amount of ki around the area, but then stopped and an evil grin appeared on his face. Don't sweat it Naruto. After the exams are over, I'll take you on as my apprentice like I did your old man even if you don't make chounin this time. Also how far can you go when using the Hiraishin no Jutsu? The Toad Sage asks causing Mei's eyes widen in shock and awe. Why you know the Hiraishin too? She asks and Naruto nods. Yes I do but not to my dad's level. The farthest I can go is 50 miles per hour. And I can only use 4 kunai at a time. Last time I tried to use more than 4 I almost threw up my stomach. He mumbles while Q who was in fox form snickers. Jiraiya's jaw dropped at this but then a huge grin appears on his face. Mangaki you are full of surprises. I knew sensei was helping you with your skills when you were younger but damn. Well, I should get going. You and your fiancé meet me at training ground 26. It's the one with the huge waterfall in Lake Johnny. He says and disappears in a puff of smoke. Mei then walks over to Naruto and smiles. I have to go to Naruto or else my bodyguards will get worried. I'll be at the Golden Leaf Hotel. She replies, getting a nod from Naruto. Mei then wraps her arms around his neck and kisses him fully on the lips for a few minutes and then ends it with Naruto just staring at her. She giggles and disappears in a swirl of water. 
Q leaps off Naruto's head and morphs into her human form, wearing a black shirt and red pants and started to stare at a dazed Naruto and sighs. She then grabs his cheeks and stretches them out until Naruto cries out in pain. Itai. Q what's wrong with you? He cried out, rubbing his sore cheeks while she glares at him and huffs, crossing her arms against her chest. You were in a daze baka. Anyways it's getting dark, I'm hungry and tired, and you promise to sleep with me while I'm in my human form, she said with a cheeky grin on her face while Naruto groaned. Fine Q-chan but don't try anything funny, he said in a playful tone while her grin grew. And if I do? She asks but eeps when he pulls her against his body. I'll give you a reason to watch your backside you sly vixen. He growled in her ear and squeezed her ass. She squeaks and frees herself from his grip glaring at the grinning blonde. Keep your hands off my ass or I'll make you regret it, you pervert. She growled, showing off her canines but Naruto just smirks at her. I'll try Q-chan but you know how my hands wander while I'm sleeping. He says making her twitch. He then walks over to her and again wraps his arms around her and kisses her on the lips for a while. She then looks at him and smiles a little. Can I at least cope a feel Q-chan? I know you like it when I massage your cheeks. He says in a husky tone causing her to grumble but gives in. Fine but I want to give you something in return. She says and he blinks for a while until she leans into his ear and whispers something into his ear. Naruto's eyes widen and a tint of pink appears on his face while she giggles and licks her lips. She sees the look of shock on his face and she grabs his hand and shunshines them to his mother's apartment. Midnight, Naruto's bedroom. Naruto and Q are engaging into a tongue battle while in their underwear on the bed. Naruto was wearing a pair of black boxers while Q was wearing a red bra and panties and was on top of him. After five minutes of tongue wrestling they stop for air, panting heavily. Q grins evilly at the blonde whose eyes widened but returned to normal. So are you ready to do that to me Q-chan? He asks while she nods and giggles pervertedly as she watches the tent in his boxers grows. Oh I'm gonna enjoy this Naruto-kun. She says and grinds her waist against his friend, getting a groan from Naruto. Not as much as I am you horny vixen, he says while her grin became bigger. Lime scene with a small lemon, Q starts to kiss Naruto's chest and makes her way down to his abs. She places her hands on his waist and kisses his stomach for a while. Naruto's heart was beating even faster as he watched her make her way to his crotch. She then stops and slowly opens up the slit from his boxers, causing his erect member to pop out. She licks her lips slowly and puts her hands around his cock and blows on it. Naruto's bites his lip while his member twitches slightly. D damn it Q-chan stop teasing me. He growls out and she looks up at the frustrated blonde and chuckles. As you wish Naru-kun. She says and moves her mouth toward the head and licks it with her tongue. Naruto's lets out a groan as he felt her tongue move around his anatomy. She then takes it into her mouth and starts to bob her head up and down. Oh Kami. Naruto says out loud as he feels her hot breath and tongue increase the sensation he was getting. He then hears Q make sucking noises and his breathing gets faster. Oh my. Q-chan. He mutters out while she places her hands on his waist and makes more suckling noises. Naruto couldn't take any more so he moves his hands to her head and forces it even further down her throat. Ur Q chalked out when Naruto does this but doesn't stop. Q Chan. He cries out and then came into her mouth. Q swallows his seed and slowly removes her mouth from his cock. She looks up at Naruto who was panting heavily while she licks her lips. Not bad. A little salty but not bad. She says. Naruto suddenly growls and pulls her close to his face. We're not through yet. He says in a husky tone and sits up. Turn around, he commanded while lust in his eyes and he just stares at him blankly. Now Q or I'll make you, he said raising his voice a little while she growls back but replies. Fine. She says and turns around with her ass in his face. Naruto then gets on his knees and pulls down her panties, showing off her round and well firm ass. Q however was shivering in excitement at what he was going to do. Naruto then places his hands on each cheek and spreads them apart until he sees her back entrance. He chuckles evilly and positions the head of his cock near her asshole and pokes her. Q's eyes bulge out and looks at Naruto in shock and horror. No Naruto-kun please not there. She cries out and tries to get away but his grip on her waist was too tight. He slowly pulls her ass towards his dick and watches as the head enters her asshole very slowly. Q lets out a gasp and bites down hard on her lip. F fuck. She whimpers out as Naruto's member slowly makes its way into her backside until it's fully in. Oh fuck. She screams out as Naruto thrusts into her ass. Q buries her head into the sheets while Naruto moves back and forth. A muffled squeal escapes her mouth as Naruto increases his pace until he releases into her ass. Naruto then removes his member from her ass and then strokes it with his green glowing hands and she lets out a sigh of relief. Lime slash small lemon ends there. After doing that he pulls her panties back on her. 
his anatomy in his boxers and wraps his hands around her waist and kisses her neck. Naruto you jerk. You better be lucky I'm your mate or I'd be castrating you. She mumbles and turns around to sit on his lap. Naruto couldn't help but chuckle and starts to kiss her jawline and neck. They lay back on the bed with Naruto on top of her, still kissing her neck. He then moves down to her stomach and starts to kiss and lick her navel making her giggle. Naruto does that for a while then make his way back to kissing her lips. After all that they snuggle against each other with Q purring on the crook of his neck while Naruto rubs her bare back. Good night Narukun she mumbles and goes back to sleep. Good night Q Haim. He says and rests his chin on top of her head. For the last two months Naruto spent his time training with his Kyofu, Godfather, and Finnis. Jiraiya helped him with Fuinjutsu, and also taught Naruto some of his personal ones like the Hari Jizo, Needle Guardian, and Yomi Numa. Swamp of the Underworld. He also helped Naruto with the Rasengan and to his shock, Naruto managed to master it in a week. Mei also helped him with his Yotan element and taught him a few Sweden Jutsu. For the rest of the second month, Naruto worked on his mother's Kenjutsu and Taijutsu style. Two months later, Chunin Exam Stadium. In the cage booth, the Hokage, and Kazekage, Orochimaru in disguise, were sitting and waiting for crowd to settle down. The Jinan that didn't make it to the finals were sitting with the crowd. I wonder where Sasuke-kun and Naruto are? They're not here with the other finalists. Ino replies while Sakura scoffs. Who cares about that blonde baka? He's nothing compared to Sasuke-kun and Neji and their geniuses, she said not caring if the Hyuga killed Naruto or not in the finals. Ino looks at Sakura in shock. Sakura he's your teammate. I know he's not as smart as Sasuke-kun but have some faith in him, Ino said and Choji nods while eating a bag of chips. Shikamaru looks around and frowns when he doesn't Naruto or Sasuke. Troublesome those two are missing and so is that Doku guy. Stop looking around kid and face the audience, in this main tournament, you guys are the stars, said a senbo and chewing jounin named Genma. At the Hokage booth, a jounin appears next to Sarutobi and whispers into his ear. Hokage sama Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha still haven't showed up yet. What do we do? He asks. Then Sarutobi looked out of the corner of his eye to see Mei and two of her bodyguards coming up. Don't worry, I am sure that Naruto Uzumaki is fine, but keep a lookout for Sasuke Uchiha. He says getting a nod from the Jounin who shun shines away. Mei sits down next to the Hokage with her guards flanking her. Hello, Mizukage Dono, I trust that the long journey was not too long? He asks with a smile and she smirked. Not at all, Hokage Dono. Hello, Kaze Kage Dono. The Kaze Kage nodded his head in respect to her, but inside, Orochimaru was panicking about her presence. Curses. Another cage is here? I might have to cancel the invasion. I can't take on both Sarutobi and the Mizukage. He thought in his mind. Sarutobi turns his head to Mei and whispers. Mei-san, do you know where Naruto is? She smiles at him and says. Don't worry. He's just preparing for a flashy entrance. Sarutobi chuckles at her response. Just like his father. Now then, he then stands up while the crowd gets quiet. Thank you, everyone for coming to Konoha's tuning exams. We will now start the main tournament matches between the eight participants who made it through the preliminaries. Please stay and watch until the end. The Kaze Kage then spoke up as Hiruzen started to sit down if it's eight, then two appear to be missing. Sarutobi said nothing and while that happened, Genma pulled out a piece of paper. There's something I would like to tell you before the matches, look at this. Everyone peered at the matches to see that it was even. There are some minor changes to the tournament, so check again who you are fighting. Shikamaru thought, I had an extra match, did that Dosu guy forfeit? Gara's hand began to twitch as he waited and said, Okay, this is the finals, the secrecy is different, but the same rules from the prelims still apply, got it? Now will Naruto Uzumaki and Neji Hyuga step forward? Neji stepped forward with a smug look on his face and suddenly a swirl of water, wind, and ice dance around the arena shocking everyone but Mei who was smiling under her hat. After that, a hooded figure wearing a dark blue cloak appeared in the middle of the whirlwind and then it died down. Genma looks at the figure who grabs the cloak and flings it off shocking everyone in the stadium. It was Naruto Uzumaki but what shocked everyone was his appearance. He was now 5 feet 6 inches wearing a dark blue long sleeve jacket with pockets on it and a silver line going down the sleeves. He also wore black onbu styled pants with a silver line going down the middle and onbu styled sandals that stopped below his knees. He also wore a black muscle shirt that hugged his body and wore it like a second skin and it showed off his chest and abs. On the back of his jacket was the picture of the QB in a crouching position as well as the five elemental kanji for water, wind, lightning, fire, and earth. He also had black fingerless gloves on and they had metal plates on them. 
He also had crimson highlights in his bangs. Strapped to his back was a sword with a red hilt, gold guard, and a black sheath. It was Naruto's mother's sword the dragon sword, and on his right hip, he had another katana strapped. It had a deep blue hilt, white diamond shaped patterns that has a white diamond on the end of it. The guard was black and carved in the form of a hydra coiling around the blade. It was in a black and red sheath that had a white dragon wrapped around it with its maw opened. It was the Shinkan Akai. Around his neck was what looked like a Magadama jewel that was attached to a necklace, Eye of the Dragon from Ninja Gaiden. Oh my god that's Naruto? Ino shouted out while Sakura couldn't believe that this was Naruto and thought that it had to be a trick. Sarutobi chuckles at this. Most of the girls, both civilian and Kunoichi were blushing at the new and improved blonde Janan. Tenten's cheeks were red and she couldn't help but admire his swords. Tamari was also blushing and couldn't help but look at his chest and abs. Whoa, he went from shrimpy to hottie in less than two months? I wonder if I can get him on a date after this, she said to herself while her cheeks burned red. Shikamaru's eyes were wide as well but he chuckles and mutters troublesome blondes. Gara looks at him too but had a feeling that this blonde kid from the exams was dangerous and smiles darkly. Perhaps you'll be the one I prove my existence to Uzumaki, he thought but was wondering why Shukao was quiet. Naruto looks at Genma and grins. Am I late Proctor-san? Naruto asks while the Jounin chuckles and shakes his head. No. Actually you're just in time for your match against Neji Hayuga. He says while the blonde nods. Good. So can we get started? I have a Chunin flak jacket with my name on it and a prick's ass to kick. He says ignoring the glare Neji was giving him. Genma nods and looks at the other Janan. The rest of you go to the stadium and wait for your match, he said as they walked away. One moment Proctor. Oi. Tamari-san. He yells out, getting her attention. He then removes his swords from his back and right hip and holds them out to her. Would you mind holding these for me? He asks getting a nod from her and he hands them to her. Thank you beautiful. He replies, making her blush. She then walks over to the stairs quickly while Naruto chuckles. I'm definitely going on a date with her. He says to himself but then looks back at Neji. In the stadium Izumo and Kotetsu look at the blonde. This ought to be good. I wonder how strong the kid got in two months? Izumo wondered while Kotetsu smiles, who knows. But the question is can he beat Neji Hayuga who's considered a prodigy in the Hayuga clan? Kotetsu replies. This should be good. Kiba says while Hinata clutches her chest. Naruto-kun. She says quietly. So the Baka changed his clothes. So what? He's still gonna lose. Sakura says and Ino glares at her former friend. Some teammate you are Sakura. Naruto may be the dead last but at least he's in the finals so shut up. Ino replies while the pink-haired girl looks at Ino in shock but then turns away from her. Hyashi and his daughter, Hanabi were also watching the fight. Watch closely Hanabi, there isn't another Hayuga whose blood is stronger than Neji's. He says getting a nod from his daughter. Meanwhile as Genma moved back so he didn't get caught in the crossfire. Neji decides to speak up with an arrogant tone. So you've changed your wardrobe, facial appearance, and you now have two swords that I doubt you could use. That won't save you though because fate has declared me the victor of the tournament. He says waiting for the blonde to lash out at him. Naruto just stands there with his hands in his pockets and just glares at the Hayuga. He then removes his hands from his pockets and tilts his neck a few times, getting a few crack noises out. He then breathes in and out and looks at Neji like he's a short-minded fool. Neji raises an eyebrow at Naruto. I suggest you get ready to admit defeat Uzumaki. I have fate on my side and no one can defy fate. He says. Naruto then decides to speak up. Neji do me a favor and shut the fuck up, he said getting a gasp from everyone while Neji twitches. There is no such thing as fate. It's only an illusion that weak, ignorant, and pompous fools like you use because you don't have the strength or the balls to defy it, he said while Neji growls at the blonde and gets into a jukin stance. I'd pick my next words carefully you fool. They may be your last. He says and activates his Byakugan. Naruto smirks at the Hyuga prodigy and speaks up. Oh shut up pale eyes and get ready to have your ass kicked. He says and leaps back performing a few hand seals. Kirigakur no jutsu. He says and suddenly, a white mist appears around the stadium, making Naruto's image vanish in the mist while Neji frowns and looks around. So you know a jutsu. Big deal it won't save you from my eyes. He says but here's no response from the blonde. The mist gets thicker and Neji gets frustrated because his eyes can't seem to trace Naruto. What's the matter dead last? Can't face me like a true shinobi? He taunts but his eyes widen and he ducks as a barrage of shuriken move past his head. He gets up and looks around for Naruto. Come out and face your fate loser. He yells while Naruto who was in the mist grins and moves his right arm forward, 
pointing his index and middle finger at the Hyuga. Raten, Bayakurai he says while his fingers glow and a small orb appears with static electricity. When that happens, a beam of white lightning shoots towards Neji's back. The Hyuga senses something behind him and that was a bolt of lightning coming straight at him. He manages to dodge it but his cheek gets grazed by it, making the Hyuga wince from the pain. Damn it! If that attack had hit me it would if he started to think only for Naruto to appear on his right with his fist cocked back and swings at Neji. He ducks and gets ready to perform a palm strike to the blonde's chest only for Naruto to sidestep and grab the Hyuga's wrist. He twists it slightly and delivers a chakra enhanced kick to his chest, sending the Hyuga flying through the mist. Neji manages to flip in midair and lands on the ground, skidding back a couple of feet and coughs a few times. Lucky shot. He mutters. I heard that girly boy. Naruto says in the mist. The mist suddenly clears and Naruto is seen twirling a Fumashurikan in his hands at a slow pace. Neji just frowns and charges. Naruto smirks at the prick and twirls the windmill even faster until it's a spinning buzz saw he then tosses it at Neji full force the Hyuga leaps over it and lands on the ground again and charges at Naruto full speed. Naruto's eyes widen and before he could do anything, Neji strikes him in the chest with a palm strice and he gasps out, shocking everyone. Ha! Told you he'd lose. Sakura says. Neji smirks at the shock expression on Naruto's face but his smirk becomes a frown when Naruto says one word, fool. He then bursts into water, surprising and shocking Neji. What? A Mizubunshine, water clone? When did he he cries out but then the windmill shuriken turned into a puff of smoke, revealing Naruto in the air with another spinning windmill in his hands. Hey Neji! Naruto yells out and the prick turns around to see Naruto with another windmill shuriken in his hands. Said blonde then throws it and performs a few seals. Cage Fuma shuriken no jutsu. He cries out and the one Fuma shuriken becomes twenty. But Naruto isn't finished there. Fuuten, Senpuk and Wind release, Hurricane Fist, he says and Naruto punches his fist out and releases a gust of wind that increases the speed of the shurikens that were going for a shock Neji. Whoa! He knows a wind jutsu? Now I really want that date with him. She says to herself and hugs his swords to her boy. Tenten was glaring at the Sunakunoichi because she wanted to hold those swords. The other Janan's eyes widen at what Naruto just did Kiba then shouts out. Yeah Naruto. Neji curses and his body glows for a while. He then spins really fast, creating a spinning chakra shield cut in. Heavenly rotation. He cries out and the shuriken are deflected. Hyashi had a look of surprise and awe as did Hanabi. Tito-san that was. I know. Such skill is wasted on the branch family. He says in a low tone, Naruto lands on the ground as the kaiden dies down. Neji then stops spinning and smirks at Naruto. You should be honored. It's not every day that I use my trump card on a mere commoner. He replies. While Naruto just looks at him and scratches his head. That was your trump card? Pretty lame if you ask me. He said getting a face fault and sweat drop from most of the ninja and civilians. Hyashi growls at the blonde for insulting his clan's most powerful technique. Wow is this dude delusional or what? Sarutobi couldn't help but chuckle. Leave it to Naruto to insult a clan like the Hyugas. Asuma and Kurunai hear this also and Asuma smirks at the blonde's actions. That kid must have balls of steel to insult one of the strongest clans in Konoha. He says and Kurunai nods with him. Neji now was fuming. How dare this nobody insult my technique? He'll pay. Neji once again gets into the Juken stance. I'm done holding back Uzumaki. Now I'll show you the true power of the Hyuga clan. He says while Naruto looks at the ninja in mock shock. You were holding back? Wow and here I thought you were a spoiled brat with a stick up your ass, he said while Neji growls. Shut up you peasant. He yells and charges at Naruto. Naruto's expression hardens and he gets into a fighting stance with his legs slightly spread apart, his right arm cocked back into a fist and his left arm out with the palm opened. When Neji is a few feet near him, Naruto swings his right arm at Neji who dodges to the left and performs a sweep kick at his legs. Naruto leaps over the move and lands on the other side. He then dodges two of Neji's palm strikes and performs a roundhouse kick at Neji who blocks it with his arms but Naruto adds more force to the attack, breaking Neji's defense. Seeing this Naruto spins and knees Neji in the gut, making the Hyuga gasp out as Naruto performs another knee strike then grabs Neji by his jacket, flips him over and slams him onto the ground hard. The Hyuga winces in pain but then his eyes widen when he sees Naruto lift his right leg up into the air and brings it down fast and hard. He barely manages to roll out of the way as Naruto's foot comes down and makes an impact with the ground. After rolling out the way Neji watches as Naruto removes his foot from the small crater his foot made and just stares at Neji. 
He then pulls one kunai from each hand and throws them at Neji who pulls out one and deflects them. Two shadow clones flank Neji's side with a kadachi in their hand and swing at Neji's sides. The Hyuga jumps into the air and another clone appears performing a drop kick. Neji manages to tilt his body back as the clone passes him and he lands on the ground, only to get an uppercut to the jaw by the real Naruto, who leaps into the air grabs Neji by the collar of his jacket and arm. As they went down, Naruto slams Neji into the ground while said Hyuga coughs up a little blood. Naruto's not finished and he picks the Hyuga up and punches him hard in the stomach three times, knees him into gut, cocks his fist back, and socks him hard into the jaw, sending the Hyuga sprawling to the ground, skidding backwards and stops a few feet from Naruto. Before Neji could do anything, his ankle was grabbed by Naruto and he was lifted off the ground, only to get slammed on his back on the opposite side. Naruto does three times and then spins around fast with Neji spinning also. He then flings Neji into the wall and hits it hard, leaving an imprint of his body onto the wall while he slides down. Naruto then vanishes and appears before Neji and grabs him by the collar of his jacket and flings him back into the middle of the field. Naruto then slowly walks towards the Hyuga who was struggling to get back on his feet. That when Naruto once again grabbed him by the collar again and pulled him to his eye level. So are you gonna apologize to Hinata or do I still have to make an example out of you? He asks and Neji spits blood and saliva on Naruto's face shocking everyone. Naruto on the other hand rears his left fist back and socks him across the jaw hard and proceeds to unleash a barrage of punches on Neji's face, making the boys jerk back. To say everyone was shocked would be an understatement. Neji Hyuga Last year's Rookie of the Year and member of the Hyuga clan was getting his ass handed to him by Naruto Uzumaki, the dead last man, he's beating the crap out of that Neji kid. Hopefully the blonde doesn't kill the kid with those punches. Genma mutters and his face twitched a little when he saw a couple of teeth fly out Neji's mouth. Kuji dropped his bag of chips and couldn't help but keep looking at the beating Naruto was giving to Neji. Remind me to never piss Naruto off, he says to Ino who just nods without looking at him. Naruto however continues with the assault but the pause is when he sees Neji's bloody face. He then performs an uppercut that sends the prodigy flying upwards in midair. After that, Naruto runs towards one of the walls and runs up it. He then adds chakra to his leg and uses it to launch himself off the wall at high speed towards Neji and kicks him back into the same spot making the crater bigger and once again he slides down the wall. Neji wobbly get up but the feels a fist buried into his stomach and hunches over in pain, coughing out saliva. Naruto then grabs Neji by his hair and drags him across the field and onto the middle of the arena and drops him. He then stomps on the Hyuga's hand, breaking the knuckles and a few bones. Neji screams out in pain while Naruto releases his foot from the Hyuga's now broken hand. Neji rolls away clutching his now broken hand. While Naruto just glares at the boy. Pathetic. I expected you to be stronger than this. Boy was I stupid in getting worked up with kicking your ass. So much for the Hyuga clan being the strongest clan in Konoha if their prodigy is this weak and pathetic. But do you know the most embarrassing part? You got the shit beat out of you by the dead last. Ironic isn't it? Your clan always preaches about how their bloodline makes them invincible. Such foolishness and arrogance is not needed in our ranks. Do you honestly think that your all-seeing eye and juken style is enough to beat your opponent? Please, I can think of 20 different ways to beat you and your bloodline without breaking a sweat. He says in a cold tone. Hyashi clenches his fist at the boy. Neji gets up and glares at Naruto. Don't get up Neji, you can't fight me anymore now that your hand is broken, unless you know one-handed seals which I doubt since you probably didn't even bother to learn more than your clan techniques. Am I right or what? He asks only to get silence and he chuckles. Kami you bloodline users are stupid. What would have happened if you faced an enemy who knew how to fight your Byakugan and the Jukan? You would have had to retreat or you would have died and had your eyes and balls taken to be examined and probably produce a new clan of Hyugas who aren't in Konoha. He replied, Shut up. Who are you to tell me to expand my horizon? I am a Hyuga and there's no one else in this village or any other that is stronger than you POW. Neji got punched right in the face by Naruto. The sound of cartilage breaking is heard and he tumbles away. He stops and clutches his face in pain and lets out a muffled scream. Shut the fuck up you piece of shit. You have no room to talk about whose clan is stronger because if your clan was so fucking strong, then why haven't any of them become Hokage yet? He yelled out. Asuma had to bite down on his lip to hold and laugh. I take what I said back. His balls must be made of brass and steel. A clan who enslaves their own family and treats them like pets is not a clan. Even the Uchiha clan didn't have slaves which is very shocking to me. So tell me Neji. What's it like to kiss the ass of a bunch of old farts who can't even shit right without assistance? He asks while Neji gets up, 
holding his nose but by the scrunching of his face he was pissed. Sarutobi lets out a cough to prevent himself from laughing. Mei looks at him and smiles is everything alright Sarutobi-san? She asks while he nods. Yes I am just a little fit. The Kaze cage chuckles at what he was hearing. Your Genin skills are impressive Sarutobi-san. I thought he was the dead last of the academy. Sarutobi snorts. Deception is a shinobi's most deadliest weapon Kaze Kage-sama. He nods and looks back at the fight. Naruto then spits on the ground and looks back at the pissed off Hayuga. What's wrong Neji? Are you pissed because I insulted your clan? Or is it because you are the pet who can't do nothing more but respond to your master's call like a dog? He says and senses the key coming from the boy. Proctor, call the match, he can't fight me with a broken hand or cast jutsu. If not I'll do more than break his hand and nose. He says and cracks his knuckles. Genma moves between them. The winner is Naruto Uzumaki. He says while the crowd cheers but as soon as Naruto walks away he hears a roar filled with hate and rage and turns his head to see a pissed off Neji charging at him. I'll kill you. Neji screamed out with his Byakugan springing to life. Gemna tried to stop him but the Hyuga was too quick. Naruto vanishes and kicks the enraged Hyuga in the side of the head so hard that he is sent into a tree and collapses into unconsciousness. When the Proctor announces the winner Hyuga you limp away to the medical ward not attack the victor. He says and vanishes into a swirl of leaves and to the other Janan who are in the finals. Naruto walks towards a blushing Tamari and stops in front of her. May I have my swords back Tamari-chan? He asks while grinning at her. She nods with a blush on her face and hands them back to him. Thank you and I wish you luck in your match. He says as he straps his words back on. Dh thank you Naruto Kuai mean san, she said as her blush increases. Naruto just chuckles and walks away from her and back to the other Janan grinning. Hey Shika, Shino, how's it going? He asks and the Nara decides to speak up. Okay Naruto I know you probably have the answer but what the hell happened to you? He asks and Shino nods. Yes Uzumaki-san I too am curious about your new appearance and skills. The Aburami asks. Naruto smirks and replies. Come on now Shika I know you're lazy but not stupid and Shino isn't deception all part of the shinobi way? Naruto asks and Shino raised both eyebrows. I understand now. I apologize if I insulted you in any way Uzumaki-san. He says and Naruto rolls his eyes. Shino you don't have to call me Uzumaki-san. I prefer Naruto. He says while the bug user nods. Very well. He says while Shika chuckles. Man Naruto. You are so troublesome. He says while the blonde grins. Oh shut up lazy ass. You think everything is troublesome. No wonder all the females in your clan kick your asses, he said while Shikamaru twitches. Speaking of females, when do you plan on asking Altino? He asks out loud getting a blush from Mino and from the shadow user. Don't worry dude I'm not going to steal her from you. I'm more interested in the Tamari. He says while the wind user looks at him, turns red and sputters while he winks at her. May hears this and a smirk appears on her face. It appears Narukun has already found another female to join his harem. She's not bad looking but if anyone is bearing his first child, it's me. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. She thought while Naruto, Q, Tenten, Tamari, and Anko sneeze. Someone's talking about me. Probably Mei-chan thinking about our honeymoon. He says to himself. Meanwhile in the cage booth Reidu appears near Sarutobi. Hokage-sama. Sasuke Uchiha still hasn't showed up for his match. What should we do? He asks. Sarutobi sighs in frustration. Tell Genma the Sasuke Uchiha is disqualified. He says in the Kaze Kage spoke why not postpone the match? Everyone including the lords from the other nations came to see the Uchiha fight. Reidu looks up at the Kaze Kage excuse me but someone who doesn't show up on time doesn't have the right to be a Chunin. Clan members are not an exception. He says while Mei is right. I agree. If this was a war and the Uchiha's team was late due to his ignorance then it'll cost not just the current team, but the entire village. Ninja who don't follow the rules have no right to be ninja, she says and Sarutobi agrees. They're right Kaze Kage Ono. I can't show favoritism to anyone, though will be disqualified and that is my final answer. He says while Reidu Shun shines away to inform Genma. Damn that woman. The invasion has been compromised. I have no choice but to call it off. The Kaze Kage made a hand sign to call off the attack and Kabuto saw it and just stood there, observing the match. After Genma got the message he announced this. Due to him not being on time, Uchiha Sasuke has been disqualified from the match, making Gara the winner by default. He replied while the crowd booed at the decision. What? That's not fair. Sakura screamed out while Ino, who covered her ears smacked the girl upside the head. Shut up Sakura, Ino yelled. 
Naruto smirks at this. So much for the almighty Uchiha clan. He says and Shikamaru mutters troublesome again, skipping the other matches. After Shikamaru gave up his fight, he walked back up to the arena glaring at a grinning Naruto. If you ever do pull something like that again Naruto I'll kill you, he said in a dark tone while the blonde shrugs. Not my fault you're lazy. He says and then appears next to Tamari who eeps. Naruto chuckles and puts an arm around the blonde Kunoichi, who blushes when she felt the muscles in his arms. Great match Tamari-chan. Too bad you didn't clock Shika in the head with your fan. Well it's time for my match. He says but then whispers into her ear. I'll help your brother defeat his inner demon. He says and her eye widened but before she could say anything he vanished in a swirl of water and ends up in the arena with his arms crossed. Guard is the same with his sand and appears a few feet away from Naruto and smiles a smile filled with bloodlust. I see you've gotten stronger Uzumaki. Perhaps your blood will satisfy my mother. He sees in her monotone voice while Naruto smirks. Sorry Tanuki, but your mother won't be tasting my blood today. Plus the only one who gets to taste any part of me is my water goddess. He says with a smile on his face. Mei hears this and blushes when Naruto calls her that. Jinam was about to start the match until they were interrupted by swirling leaves and in the middle of it were Sasuke and Kakashi. Naruto narrows his eyes at the man and at Sasuke. Yo did we make it? Kakashi asks with a nice smile while Ganma frowns. No Kakashi the Uchiha was disqualified now get off the field. He says getting a shocked look from Kakashi and a look of anger from Sasuke. What? I can't be disqualified I'm a Uchiha. The prick yelled while Genma snorts. And your point? Now beat it kid or I'll remove you from the field personally. Sasuke sees Gara and starts to charge at him in anger but he is then knocked out by the Shinkan no Akui sheath courtesy to Naruto who then tosses the brat at Kakashi who catches him. Get your butt buddy off the field Hatake. Naruto says coldly while the Jounin shivers from Naruto's words and vanishes into the stadium. Sorry about that Gara. It's always the arrogant and weak-minded ones that don't know when to piss off. He says while Gara nods. Apology accepted Uzumaki. Shall we begin? He asks while Naruto nods and removes his jacket and swords, revealing his skin-tight shirt which showed his well-toned body. The females, minus Sakura blush at this, May however was licking her lips if he's this gorgeous now I can't wait to see what he's like when he's older. She thought as did the other girls, again minus Sakura. He places Ryukan and Shinkan no Akuhei on his back and then tosses his jacket to the side and when it hits the ground, a large crater is created, shocking everyone due to how wide and deep the crater was. Naruto stretches for a while and smirks. Let's get started Gara. He says and flares his chakra which was a dark blue color. Gara nods and the cork on his guard pops off and his sand swirls around the sociopath like a snake. Naruto grins and then leaps back when a sand tendril hits the area he was at. Naruto then pulls out Shinkan no Akuhei and twirls the blade around for a while then gets into a Kenjutsu stance with his sword in a thrusting position. He then charges at the red-haired Genin and does a horizontal slash at his head only for a wall of sand to block the attack and Naruto jumps back when another tendril tries to strike him. Naruto then plants the blade on the ground and performs a few hand seals. Katan, carry you endon. Fire release dragon flame bomb, he says and shoots red hot flames that was in the form of a dragon at Gara. Another wall of sand appears in front of Gara while the flames hit the sand, turning it into glass. Naruto then sheaths his sword jumps into the air and performs more hand seals. Sutan, Tepodama, water release, water bullets. He says and fires three water bullets from above Gara's head but again the sand protects him. Naruto lands and back flips a couple of time to avoid being crushes and continues to fire water bullets at Gara, who starts to get bored at him firing water bullets at him. Naruto performs a few more seals and yells out. Sutan, Suiaku Udan, water release, water hydra missile. He says and focuses his chakra into the ground. The ground trembles and suddenly. A large amount of water heads rises from the ground and morphs into a hyrda with glowing red eyes and it hisses at Gara before charging at the red head. A dome of sand surrounds him and when the water hydra makes contact, it explodes into water and soaks the field. Sarutobi's eyes widen in amazement when he saw the technique. In the stands, the Janan saw this and their jaws dropped. Sasuke grits his teeth in frustration because he wasn't able to copy it for some reason. Damn it, why can't I copy Thajutsu? He thought furiously while Kakashi wondered how could he do a jutsu with his level of chakra control. Wow, what an asshole. When the water dissolves, Naruto sees the sand drop and Gara was unharmed. Is that it Uzumaki? I expected more from you. He says and holds his hand out to have his sand constrict but when the sand rises it falls back down. Gara's eyes widen in shock. What the he says and tries again only for it to do the same thing. Naruto chuckles and speaks up. 
You should know Gara that when sand makes contacts with water it becomes soluble and results in becoming clump of mud. Its weakness is water and it needs to be dry in order to move freely but that also means he starts to say but he then appears beside Gara, delivering a jaw-shattering punch to his face and send Gara flying into the wall, resulting in a crater appearing on a wall and Gara falling to the ground groaning while his face cracked and pieces of sand fell from his face. You're nothing more than a sandbag waiting to get ripped apart. I know about your sand armor being stronger than steel but I wonder. Can you keep it intact? He says and charges at Gara who growls out and sends a wave of dry sand at Naruto who leaps over it and shoots out a jet stream of water from his mouth, making the sand soggy and then fires a second stream at Gara's. Soon a no yoroi, sand armor. The water makes contact with Gara's armor which turns dark brown and he struggles to sit up because the water made it heavy. Here's another chemistry lesson Gara. What do you get when you add wet moldy sand with lightning? He asks as he focuses yellow lightning chakra into both hands and places them on the wet sand. You get a French fried redhead. Raiten, Raikonagashi, lightning release, lightning current. He yells out and a huge current of electricity spreads throughout the ground. Gara screamed in pain as Naruto sent the currents to the gourd on his back and electricity coursed through the Sunajin Churiki's body. The boy fell to the ground, panting with smoke rising out of certain parts of his body. Naruto watches as Gara starts to get up slowly and glare at Naruto. I will not lose. I will prove my existence. He says and his chakra spikes while Naruto curses. He then appears in front of Gara and grabs the Sunanin by the throat. Sorry Gara, but I can't let you endanger the lives of these people. He says and adds pressure to the redhead's neck causing Gara to struggle for air. And he says and his fingertips on his right hand glow yellow. It's over Gara. Gagyofun. He cries out and slams his hand into Gara's stomach causing the sand user to cry out in pain and then enter the world of darkness. Chapter 3, Promotion, Family, and Fight Gara's unconscious form falls over but the blonde catches him in his arm. Maybe now you can regain what you lost Sabaku no Gara. He says and sets the Suna down gently. He then lets out a sigh of relief and wipes a bead of sweat from his brow. Man that was close. I need to work on that suit and jutsu though. It took too long for me to pull that water from the ground. Naruto says and stretches his arms. Again everyone was shocked that Naruto beat someone even Lee couldn't beat. Orochimaru was seething at the fact that this boy had ruined his plans. Naruto looks at Genma and speaks up. Well are you gonna call the match? He asks and Genma nods. Winner, Naruto Uzumaki. He says while the blonde does a victory sign while grinning. Mei was smiling as was Sartobi. Well done Naruto. Your parents would be proud, he said quietly. That was when the crowd cheered very loudly. Kiba jumped up shouting. Who? All right Naruto. The Inuzuka cried out. Choji's eyes were wide and Ino's mouth was hanging open. Unbelievable. Naruto just beat Neji and that Gar guy, she said while Choji nods. Yosh. Naruto's flames of youth were amazing. He yells out while Lee was happy yet a little jealous that Naruto had beaten his rival and the kid from Suna. Sasuke was pissed beyond belief that Naruto, the dead last, had beaten someone of Gara's level and what frustrated him even more was that he couldn't copy his jutsu. Why couldn't I copy his jutsu? How could the Dobi, the dead last of the academy, get so strong? I should have that power. I need it more than he does. Sasuke rants into his mind while Kakashi wondered who trained Naruto and where he learned that water jutsu from. He'll just ask him and have him teach Sasuke that move. Wow, what a jerk. Sakura thought she was dreaming that the Baka on their team beat that monster. There's no way Naruto's that strong. This has to be a trick. She says to herself. Izumo and Kautetsu were smirking. Damn. First he beats Neji like a rag doll, and then he beats the kid from Suna. The kid has come a long way. He should be promoted to Chunin after this. Izumo says while Kautetsu snorts. Chunin? The kid should be a Dokubutsu Jonin. His strategy and tactics were at least mid in level as was his stealth. Hell he even henched himself into a Fumashuriken and Kawari made with a Mizubushin. That takes a lot of skill to pull off, Kautetsu said. Naruto was about to walk back to the ring until a white-haired man wearing a kabuki outfit appeared in front of Naruto with a grin on his face. Yogaki, that was one hell of a match, he said while the blonde smirked. Thanks sensei. He says while a deadpan look appears on Jiraiya's face. Something tells me that this is a once-in-a-lifetime event, he says while Naruto frowns at him. Yes it is you should know why. He says while Jiraiya groans. Damn it Gaki are you still mad at what happened? He asks with a peeved look on his face. You bet your perverted books I'm still mad Urasenin. You walked in on Mei-chan when she was in her underwear. 
he yells at his godfather while everyone sweat drops at this. Mei however tilted her hat down to hide the blush on her face while Haruzin looks at Mei and a smirk appears on his face. Care to explain Mizukage Dono? He whispers. Shut up you old monkey. She mumbles while Haruzin chuckles. Damn it Gaki how many times do I have to tell you that I thought you were in the room? He yells in his face. I told you I was in the room on the right side not left Gama Baka. He yells back. I am not a Baka you blonde haired brat. No. You're a super Obaka who needs to get his brain checked. Naruto yells back. What did you say? He yells. You heard me or are you deaf too? He yells back and they growl at each other. Ino blinks at the scene and then speaks. Who's he? She asks and Guy speaks up. That is Jiraiya, the Gama Senin who was taught by the son Daime along with Tsunade Sama and Orochimaru. Jiraiya Sama was also the one who trained the Yondame Hokage. He may look odd but he's as strong as a cage. He says in a serious tone. Sasuke frowns and clenches his fist. How the hell does the Dobi know him? He snarled while Guy ignored his attitude but answers. Who knows? He says, Orochimaru eyes narrow in frustration at the situation. God damn it, Jiraiya is here too? It's bad enough that the Mizukage is here but now that fool is here too? Curses. Just you wait Sarutobi I will kill you one of these days. He thought, Genma coughs so that he can get their attention. Not to be rude or anything Jiraiya-sama but we still need to continue the matches. He says while Jiraiya rubs the back of his head and grins sheepishly. Sorry about that he then picks up Gar's unconscious form and looks at Naruto. I'll deal with fixing up the kid's seal. He says and vanishes with the container of Shukaku. Tamari had just came down from the stairs and then says. I forfeit Proctor. This is one match I know I can't win due to the fact that you beat my brother. She says while Naruto grins. Oh come now Tamari-chan. I won't rough you up that much unless you want me to. He says while wiggling his eyebrow while the blonde Kunoichi was blushing and looking at the ground. You pervert. She mumbles while he snickers at her. Winner of the Chunin exams, Naruto Uzumaki. Genma says getting a loud cheer from the crowd. Naruto smirks while wondering about the irony that he the village pariah, was now gaining respect from the people who used to despise him. I'm proud of you Naruto-kun. Looks like I'll have to reward you for winning, she says in a husky tone while Naruto blushes and Q giggles. Meanwhile the Hokage, Mizukage, and Kaze Kage appeared on the field as do the Genin, minus Kara, who stand before the three cages. Thank you all for participating in this exam, now will the following please approach me as I call them. Sabaku no Tamari, Shikamaru Nara, and Naruto Uzumaki. He says, Sasuke frowned and brooded that his name wasn't called and the dead lasts was. The three called stepped forward. Tamari had a small smile, Shikamaru had a lazy look and Naruto had a large grin on his face. Mei had to hold in hers while Sarutobi spoke up. You three have shown extraordinary skills and tactical expertise, strategy, cunning and trickery also used the terrain to your advantage then exploited your opponent's weaknesses. Therefore it is my honor and pride to dub you three as Chunin. Congratulations, he said. Mei handed them their certificates and their flak jackets and she shook each one of their hands in respect. Naruto winked at Mei who also winks back at him. Now to the rest of you. Don't give up and try to do better next time. This concludes the Chunin exams, we will see all of you in two years. He says, the people who came leave from their seats while Shikamura groans. Troublesome. Now I have to do more work. He says while Naruto smirks. It's either that or deal with your mom and if I remember, she knocked you and your dad out of the house with a frying pan because you left the deer's pen open. He says while the Nara pales, say, didn't Yoshino-san put you in a coma because you ate one of her pastries? He asks while the Naruto twitches. How should I know? I had amnesia when I woke up from being in it for two days, he said while Naruto blinks at him for a while. Dude it wasn't for two days it was for a week. He says while Shikamaru raises an eyebrow at him. And how would you know? He asks and Naruto snickers. I was there when it happened. I was helping your mom clean deer antlers. He says while the Nara walks away mumbling about blondes being too smart and moms with short fuses. Naruto saw Tamari walk up to him and speak. I still can't believe you beat Gara like that, she said while Naruto smiles at the blonde. You sound like you were worried about me Tamari-chan. He says while she crosses her arms against her chest smirking. Yeah I was fearing for your life. Anyway what happened to you? You went from a loudmouth shrimp to a hot blonde? She asks while he rubbed the back of his head while he started to say until he heard Sakura screech out his name. Let's take this to the medical ward. Uro-senin should be done with your brother's new seal. He says and wraps an arm around her waist. 
making her blush as they Mizu Shun shines to the ward to avoid the Banshee and the Brooder. Medical ward. Jirai wipes the sweat that was on his head with his arms, finally finishing making Gara's new seal. Naruto appears with Tamari behind the sage who turns around and to see his godson. Hey Gaki who's she? He asks and Tamari steps forward. I'm Sabaku no Tamari. The daughter of the Kaze Kagi and Gara's older sister. Is he alright? She asks with concern and walks over to her sleeping brother and panics. Wh why is he sleeping? If he falls asleep the Shukaku will she cries out but Jiraiya places an arm on her shoulder. Relax I already knew about his sleeping problem. Don't worry, Shukaku won't be bothering him at all. He says and gets up and pops his back. Well I'm off to get a little R&R &R Naruto. I'll see you later. Ja. He says and disappears in a puff of smoke. Gara slowly opens his eyes and sees Tamari looking at him with a concerned look on her face. Kankuro had walked in and Naruto explained what happened. Tamari? He asks while she reaches for his hand and places it in hers. The redhead freezes up at first but when he sees the look of hurt in her eyes he relaxes getting a small smile from her. Gara, I'm glad you're not hurt. She says while Gara looks around and sees Naruto leaned against the wall. Why didn't you kill me Uzumaki? I failed to prove my existence. I don't deserve to live. Gara says while a saddened expression appears on Tamari's face. Naruto sighs and gets off the wall. Simple Gara. 1. Your life was similar to mine and 2. I didn't want her to break your sister's heart. He replied making Gara's eye widen. What do you mean? He asks. I'm a container just like you Gara. I know what it's like to live a life of hell but the only difference was that I gained people who cared for me while you were left alone. Am I right? He asks while Gara just looks at him. You've suffered your whole life didn't you? No one to care for you or become your friend, you were declared as a monster and abomination by your own people weren't you? Gara's eyes widened even more. I would have ended like you if I hadn't met them. Saruoji, Choji, Shikamaru, Kiba, Akamaru, Mei-chan, Kyofu, Iruka-sensei, the Ichirakus, Kyu-chan. They saved me from my life of hell. His hair covers his eyes and he talks in a low tone. They are my precious people Gara, and I won't let you or anyone else whether their comrades or not harm them. If you try to harm them, I'll stop you. He then looks at the Sunan in with cold slitted eyes. And if have to kill you to protect them I will. He says getting a shocked look from Gara. Why? Why go so far for them? He asks because he was still confused and Naruto's gaze softens because they're the ones who give me strength. As long as I have them by my side I can accomplish anything. Gara, you may not think it but Tamari and Kankuro care about you. They're your family and they want to be there for you but unless you stop being so cold and distant from them. You'll end up losing them. Naruto says while Gara looks over at Tamari and Kakuro who look back at their little brother with sympathy in their eyes. Tamari increases her grip on Gara's hand a little and her eyes become glassy. Don't push them away Gara, let them in and I promise that you won't regret it. He says while Gara thinks about what he said. So he gains his strength from people who are important to him huh? Perhaps. Perhaps I can too. I may not have as many people as he does but at least I have Kankuro and Tamari. Maybe I'll gain more in the future. Naruto Uzumaki. Thank you. He says and looks at his siblings. Kankuro. Tamari, I'm sorry. He says. Tears form around Tamari's eyes and she lets go of his hand and pulls her brother into a hug. While sobbing quietly. Gara's eyes widen at the hug but relaxes and rests his head on her shoulder. Kankuro walks over to them and places his hand on his sister's shoulder and on Gara's back. Don't sweat it Gara. We're a family no matter what. He says. A family huh? I like that. He says with a true smile on his face and falls asleep on his sister's shoulder. Tamari places him back down gently and then gets up and walks over to Naruto. She then hugs the blonde Chunin. Thank you Naruto-kun. Thank you for helping my brother and bringing my family back together. Say says and hugs him even tighter. Naruto blushes in embarrassment but returns it. You are welcome to Mari-chan. He says. She lets go of him and kisses him on the cheek. Kankuro smirks at this and Naruto rubs the back of his head. Oh and Kankuro do us a favor and stop wearing your sister's makeup. People might take it the wrong way and think you're gay. He says with a cheeky grin and shun shines away. Leaving a pissed Kankuro and a laughing to Mari. Stupid Gaki. It swore paint. He mumbles. Meanwhile, Mei was on the roof of the Golden Leaf Hotel and felt a pair of arms wrap around her waist. She smiles and turns her head to see a smiling Naruto who lets go of her and walks beside her, holding his hand into hers. Congratulations on your promotion Naruto-kun, she said while he smiles. Thanks. I owe it all to you my Onibara no Megami, goddess of the sea. He says while a tint of pink appears on her face and tightens her grip on his hand. I just helped you with your training. 
That's all Naruto-kun. I didn't do that much. She says but Naruto leans over and kisses her on the cheek. Yes you did Mei-chan and I'm eternally grateful for your help. He replies while she looks at him with a loving smile on her face. Thank you Naruto-kun. Your parents would be proud of you. I know I am. I just hope this engagement between us will turn out great. I really want this to work Naruto-kun she says and he smiles at her. It will Mei-chan. I'm positive it'll work out. I know this seems to be rushed, but I feel like I've known you for a long time. He says and she nods in agreement. She was about to say something until he saw Kakashi appear looking at Naruto. Naruto, Kakashi said while the blonde just gave Kakashi an icy glare that made him nervous. Mei just looks at him with a blank expression but on the inside she was furious that this fool interrupted their moment. What do you want Hatake? Can't you see that I'm talking to the Mizukage right now? He said in a cold tone making the copy in flinch but remain stoic. I just came to Tal he started to say but was cut off. I'm not interested in hearing any of your stupid ass excuses nor do I have the patience to deal with your bullshit so what the hell do you want? He said making his tone even harsher. Kakashi cringed at the sound of his voice. Where did you learn those jutsu and where did you get those swords? He asks while Naruto's eyes narrowed. That's none of your fucking business. He answers while Kakashi decides to pull rank. I asked you a question Chunin now answer it. He ordered a Naruto's flash red for a moment and was releasing key on the nin until the Mizukage placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder and speaks. I suggest you leave Jounin. I was in the middle of having a conversation with this young man until you decided to be rude. Mei spoke up while Kakashi gave her a lazy look. With all due respect Mizukage don't know I don't have to listen to you because you are not the cage of this village. He says but instantly regrets saying it when he feels murderous intent coming from Naruto and Mei. What the fuck are you doing you idiot? She's a VIP in the village and you dare talk to her like she's a fucking commoner? Are you trying to get us in trouble you dumbass? Naruto snarled and was a few seconds from punching this idiot in the face for talking to his fiancé like that. You shouldn't talk like that in front of the Mizukage Naruto shut the fuck up you dumbass baka. I'll talk anyway I want now get the hell out of my sight you trash before I dub you as a threat to our client and have you arrested and stop staring at her chest before I beat the shit out of you and get you demoted. The blonde yelled while Kakashi narrowed his eyes at Naruto. What did you call me? He says in a low tone. I called you trash because that's what you are. I'm not gonna tell you again to leave Hatake. Naruto growled and flexed his hands. Kakashi frowned at the blonde. Naruto I know you're mad that I didn't train you but Sasuke he said but was interrupted by Mei, had what it took to be a shinobi and deserve to move up into the ranks. You also said that you won't waste your time with someone who can even control his own chakra and said he didn't have any talent and shouldn't even be a ninja did you not say that Jounin? Mei said while Kakashi paled when he looked at her. How did you I was in the hospital when I heard you neglect your student. You could have given him a scroll or a few books on how to improve his chakra since you were too lazy and stupid to help a subordinate. You know what? I bet you were hoping that the Hyuga would kill him during the finals, she said while the Jounin's eyes widen. And no I, I am very disappointed with you and I am sure the Hokage is too since I reported to him how insensitive one of his Jounin were. He was very displeased with your actions and told me that he will deal with you accordingly, she said with a smirk on his face while Kakashi turned as wide as a sheet. He was about to say something else but Mei snaps her fingers and four of her personal Anbu appeared around her and Naruto with their ninjatos drawn. Leave or I'll consider you a threat to my life and have my Anbu kill you, she said and Kakashi shun shines away. Mei snaps her fingers again and the Anbu melt back under the roof. Naruto lets out a frustrating sigh and brushes his hair back. Mei sees this and wraps her arms around him and kisses him on the forehead. Are you okay Naruto-kun? Mei asks him but he nods. Yeah I'll be fine. I was 10 seconds from feeding that Baka his own teeth. He says while Mei giggles at him. Can you believe that he was ugling you? I swear the next person who looks at you like that will be getting their eyes ripped out of their head. Only I can look at you like that. He says with a cheeky grin on his face and grabs her hand. Mei couldn't help but blush at what he says and was about to say something until an explosion was heard from the main gate, getting their attention. Mei Chan you head to the Hokage Tower. I'll go check and see what that explosion was. He says and she nods. Okay but be careful. She says and Naruto nods back and kisses her hand. Naruto shun shines away. Anbu. She called out. The four previous Kiri Anbu appeared around her. We're heading to the Hokage Tower. She says getting a nod from her men who follow her to the Hokage Tower. At the main gate, civilians were running away screaming while three three-headed snakes were hissing and demolishing buildings with their tails. Some ninja were escorting the civilians while the others tried to hold them off by throwing kunai shuriken and casting jutsu. Orochimaru and Kabuto were watching this from a tree far away. 
My invasion may have failed but that doesn't mean I won't leave Konoha without giving them a farewell gift, he said with a sneer on his face. Kabuto tilts his glasses up and speaks. Should we stay and watch how this occurs Orochimaru-sama? The medical nin asks, a smirk appears on the heavy's face. As fun as that would be I have more important matters to attend to. And Kabuto if you ever get the chance, kill Naruto Uzumaki. That brat has been a pain lately and I want his head mounted on my wall. He hisses out while Kabuto nods and they vanish. Meanwhile Naruto had landed on the street and saw one of the three-headed snakes. Time to let Yama-chan out to play. He says and bites his thumb then rolls up the sleeve on his right arm revealing the Hydra tattoo. He smears his blood on the tattoo and slams his hands onto the ground. Kushio Snojutsu, Yamada no Orochi. He cries out and in a huge puff of smoke, a Hydra with eight heads and tails, silver-colored scales and a black underbelly, and four legs with black claws on them appeared with her eight tails swishing around and the seven heads swaying back and forth. She also had two folded black bat-like wings on each of her sides. It was Yamada no Orochi. Queen of the Reptile Clan and Divine Beast of the Dragon Clan, her land form is the form of a dragon. Naruto was on the middle head while the snakes stopped causing destruction and looked up, only to tremble in fear at who they saw. Some of the ninjas saw the new summon and started to sweat bullets. Oh no not another one. One Jounin called out but the other one was wondering. Why isn't the snake attacking? What's it waiting for? The second one asks. Hey isn't that Izumaki on that snake? The third Jounin asks while the others squint his eyes. It is. But why would he summon a snake? The first one asks. That's not a snake, said a deep voice. They turned around to see the Sondaime in his battle uniform. Sondaime-sama. If that isn't a snake then what is it? He asks while Sarutobi looks at him. That is Yamada no Orochi, the Hachibi no Akuhei and ruler of the divine reptiles. He says while their eyes widen. She's a Baiju? The Anbu with a lion mask asks. Yes but she's a divine beast. He replies while their eyes widen. I wonder how he got that contract? Probably from Mei. He says quietly. Meanwhile one of Orochi's heads looks at Naruto. Hello Naruto-kun. I didn't expect to have you summon me so soon. Shiroi says while Naruto looks at her with a small grin. Hey Shiroi-chan. I thought you'd like to get reacquainted with some old friends. He says pointing to the three snakes. Another of her heads look at the quivering forms of the snakes and an evil grin appears on her face. Well well well, if it isn't the triplets. I'm gonna enjoy hearing your vile worm scream. Her seven heads let out a might roar, making the earth beneath them shake. She then walks towards the trembling snakes and then she spreads her large wings and takes off into the sky. Whoa! Naruto cries out and adds chakra to his feet to stop himself from falling. Sorry Naruto-kun, she says while he lets out a sigh of relief. Don't worry I'm fine. I didn't know you had two forms Shiroi-chan. Naruto says and she smiles. Yes I have two forms. The one you saw in my realm was my water form. This is my land form. She says while Naruto nods. Cool. But I think your human form is way better. He says while a tint of pink appears on her face. We can flirt later fox boy but now we have some bugs to exterminate. She says getting a nod from the blonde. Hey Naruto get ready to perform a wind jutsu. She said and one of the heads opens its mouth and a ball of red fire appears swirling around. Naruto nods and performs a few seals and sucks in air. Futen. Mugen Datapa, infinite great breakthrough. He then unleashes a huge gust of wind at the three snakes while Shiroi's head shoots out a powerful red flame. Katan, Akuhei Inku, Hydra Flame. Yuu Jutsu, Hainot Bufu, Fusion Jutsu, Firestorm. The fire combines with the wind, creating a huge fire that moves towards the snakes at high speed and the attack hits. The snakes cry out in pain as they were reduced to charcoal and their forms collapse while the flames devour their bodies. Shiroi cackles with glee in her eyes when she saw the burning bodies of the snakes while landing near the rubble. The Akuhei then lowers her head down and Naruto leaps off her head. Thanks Shiori-chan. Anytime Naruto-kun. Let's do this again. Ja. She says and disappears in a puff of smoke. Naruto sniffs the air and smells the scent of burning snake meat. Ew. He says while some of the Chunin and Jounin perform water jutsu to put the burning snakes out. That was when Jiraiya appeared out of nowhere grinning and pats the kid on the back. Nice bonfire Gaki. He says and the blonde looks at his godfather. Where were you Kyofu? Naruto asks while Jiraiya shrugs. Just want to swat a few flies. Anyway thanks for dealing with those snakes. I was on my to help you but when I saw Yamada I figured you had the situation under control and let you increase your rep. He says while Naruto chuckles at the man. Thanks I he started to say until he heard a voice Ho didn't want to hear. Hey Dobi. Sasuke yells with Sakura following behind him. 
Naruto smacks his head when he saw those two. Okami. He mutters while Jiraiya raises an eyebrow when the Uchiha approaches him. I saw you riding on that creature and performing that jutsu. Where did you get them? He demanded. None of your business Uchiha now piss off. He says while the Uchiha frowns. I wasn't asking looser now tell me where you got that creature, those swords, and those jutsu now. He yelled yeah Baka tell Sasuke-kun where you got those at. Sakura screamed and Jiraiya winced from her voice. Naruto suddenly appeared in front of Sasuke's face and grabbed him by the collar of his shirt shocking the Uchiha and releasing Ki on the boy. Now you listen here you jutsu stealing cocksucking emo, he said making the brooder's eyes widen. I don't have to tell you shit. I'm a tuning you bitch and I can have your shinobi license suspended or have you removed from the program permanently for ordering me around and the last time I checked, only the Hokage can order the ninja around and you little boy are not the Hokage. Now get the fuck out of my sight before I break you in half. He said and throws the Uchiha into the street. Sasuke gets up slowly and glares at the blonde Chunin and gets ready to pull out a kunai until he felt a kunai pressed against his neck and realized that the Naruto in front of him was a clone who disperses and the real Naruto was behind him ready to slit his throat. Attempting to attack a fellow ninja is considered a B-class felony and by all rights I can have you thrown in jail for a long time. I'm letting you off with a warning Uchiha but if you try to do this again I will kill you, he said in dark tone while Sasuke shivered in fear. Now Shinon get your sorry ass out of my sight. He said and disappears in a puff of smoke then appears next to Jiraiya with a murderous look on his face. Sasuke desicted to be smart for once and leaves. Sakura was about to yell at Naruto for threatening her Sasuke-kun until the blonde gives her an icy glare to. You leave to you slut. Go stalk your faggot of a boyfriend and suck his dick because that's all you're good for. Bait and being a slut now piss off before I hurt you. He growled. Tears well up in Sakura's eyes and she runs away from the sight. Naruto spits on the ground and then walks away with Jiraiya following him. Damn Gaki if looks could kill you and your father would win big time. Hell your mother would probably make someone like Orochimaru run away screaming like a girl, he said chuckling while Naruto smirks. That was when Ananbu appears in front of them. Uzumaki-san Jiraiya-sama, Hokage-sama and the council wish to see you, he said and vanishes again. An evil grin appears on Naruto's face and he chuckles darkly. Jiraiya sees this and backs away slowly. You got that smile on your face again Gaki. Are you thinking of doing something that is cruel and unusual? He asks and cringes when Naruto turns towards him with the same look. You bet you each a each a books I do. My heritage. He says and Jiraiya also gets an evil grin on his face. Kid I knew you were dangerous but damn. The council is so screwed when you tell them about your heritage, he said. Oh they're not screwed. They're fucked big time. He says laughing evilly as they head for the Hokage Tower. Council Chambers Naruto and Jiraiya walked inside of the room to see the civilian council, the elders along with Donzo glaring at Naruto. The shinobi side who were made up the clan heads looked like they didn't want to be here. Okay I'm not pointing this to the shinobi side or to the Hokage but what the fuck do you assholes want? I have better things to do than listen to you retards yell and bitch about me being the demon brat and trying to execute me. He says getting a huge glare from the civilians and elders while the shinobi side held in their laughs. Tsume let out a snort while Sarutobi coughed. You'll show us some respect you brat. A civilian member yelled only to get an icy glare from the blonde and he shivered from the gaze. Shut up civilian you may be a member of this council but you will not order me, a ninja around. Now shut your yap or I'll do it for you, he said trailing his hands on the hilt of her yukon. The civilian gulped and shut at his yap when he saw the sword. Now I'll ask again. What the fuck do you assholes want? He asks in a harsher tone. Uzumaki-san, we would like to know who trained you for the finals. Kuza asks and Naruto smirks. Why Jiraiya of course. Since I wasn't worthy of being trained by the perverted Cyclops who spends his time being the Uchiha's personal cocksucker, Sensei here saw the potential I had and decided to train me to face the fate addict. No offense Hiroshi-sama, but your nephew needed no had that beating coming and I hope you don't take my insult to your clan the wrong way. He said while Hyashi nods. None taken young man. He says while Naruto nods a thanks to the man. Why would Jiraiya-sama train someone like you and not the Uchiha? He has more potential. Donzo says while Naruto snorts. Please, that brat would have died if he fought Gara. and as for potential? Please. I have more skill in my pinky finger than he does in his whole body. Naruto says wiggling his finger while the civilian council fumed. How dare you speak to Uchiha-sama like that? Who do you think you are? The Haruno council woman screeched making everyone wince at her voice. The one who rip your voice box out if you don't stop screaming like a damn howler monkey, Naruto yelled out while she cringes in her seat. Jiraiya we of the council demand you train Sasuke Uchiha since you trained the demo Homura started to say until Haruzin glared at the man. 
Finish that word Homura and I'll have you executed and also who are you to command my ninja around? Last I checked I was wearing the Hokage hat, he said releasing some key at the frightened man. Jiraiya scoffed and folded his arms. Like I would train that spoiled brat. He can kiss my A on second thought, I better start watching it because I think the brat plays for the other side. He says turning green, Jiraiya. Kohari yells while the man blinks, giving her a look of innocence. What? He doesn't seem to be interested in girls so he must like boys. He replies while Naruto snickers. I agree. All those fangirls that chase after him and he doesn't even look at them? I'm beginning to think he is gay. Uchiha-sama is not gay, Haruno yelled while Naruto growls at her. Didn't I tell you to shut up you flat-chested bitch? The pink-haired woman growled at him until Sarutobi spoke up. Enough. I didn't summon you here to listen to you civilians whine now shut up, he roared and they did. And you three don't order my ninja around unless I give you permission to do so am I clear? He said glaring at the fools and they nod fearing for their lives. Now I have come to announce that I will be stepping down as Hokage and I've already picked who will replace me, he said and they listened. Donzo fumed because he wanted to be Hokage but he can't since he already competed for the title. It better not be me sensei. I have better things to do than be a paper pusher and listen to people fight like five year olds. Jiraiya said digging into his ear with his pinky finger while civilians and elders fumed at him while the shinobi side snickered. Hiruzen chuckles and says. No Jiraiya it's not you it's my other student. Tsunade sent you. Donzo was sweating inwardly. Tsunade was the granddaughter and grandniece of the Shah Diamond I Diamond was practically royalty. Tsunade Sama? She hasn't set one foot into the village since the third war ended, Inoiki said while Jiraiya smirked. Oh I think I can convince Tsunade to return since her nephew is still alive and was lied to by certain members of this council, he said in a dark tone while the elders sweated inwardly. The clan head's eyes widen when Tsume speaks up. She has a nephew? Who is he and is he in the village? Jiraiya and Naruto smirk. You're looking at him. He says and places his hand on the Gaki's head. Tell them my full name Kyofu. He says with a dark grin on his face. The civilians looked like they were seeing the Sinigami. His full name is Naruto Namikaze Sanju. He says while the civilians turn white, the elders pale, and the clan head's eyes widen. Why you mean a civilian says only for Naruto to cut him off? That's right asshole. I'm the son of the Yondaime and Yellow Flash Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki Sanju the Red Whirlpool. I guess that makes my status on par with a daimyo's. He said as his grin grew and the civilians yell out in outrage. You lie. You are not related to Arkages. I refuse to believe that the demon brat is the son of the he never got the chance to finish and ended up having a blade shoved through his mouth and killed by Ryukan. Naruto pulls his sword out of the now dead councilman's head and wipes the blood off with the dead man's clothes. Does anyone else want to break the son Daime's law? He asks in a cold tone making the civilians and elders cringe in their seats. I didn't think so also speaking of my inheritance as the last heir of the Senju and Namikaze clan I'm demanding that the civilian council make retributions to me for treating me like shit as well as those who are under your payroll. The orphanage that I was kicked out of when I was four? I'm having the employees that treated me like crap fired and executed and it now belongs to me. The same with those who kicked me out of stores, restaurants, and other markets will have their things confiscated and given to me and the same goes with the businesses that I own under my father's name and also the academy teachers who tried to neglect my training? They're gonna get fired and thrown in prison with their chakra sealed away forever. Failure comply with my demands will result in me taking everything you own by force and then executed, he said in a cold told while the civilians trembled in fear. Most of their businesses did come from the Namikaze and now they were screwed. If you think my demands were merciful just wait until Tsunade Obasan gets back here. I now own you bastards and if you even think about stepping out of line I'll kill you. He replied while Haruno frowned at the blonde. Also why was it that my fiancé was lied to about my death, Koharu Homura, Donzo? Naruto asks giving the old fossils an icy cold glare. Said elders were sweating inwardly. WH what are you talking about? Koharu asks only for Naruto to narrow his eyes. Don't play stupid with me you ancient relic. I have proof that you bastards committed treason and nearly caused Konoha to go to war with another nation. He says while they gulp. Naruto then turns his head to the door. You can come in now Mei-chan, he says and the door opens revealing them Izakage walking towards Naruto. She places her hands on the sides of his face and then kisses him fully on the lips while everyone watches in shock as Naruto returns it and places an arm around her waist and pulls her closer to his body. A grin appears on Jiraiya's and Sarutobi's face while the elders cursed inwardly. Q was watching the scene while eating popcorn. This is getting good. Damn how long can Naruto-kun and May hold that kiss for? She thought as they kept at it. Meanwhile, 
Mei and Naruto ended the kiss and smiled at her. Did you miss me Mei-chan? Naruto asks while she smiled back. I sure did Naruto-kun. She says in a seductive tone. He looks at everyone while keeping his arm around her waist. Everyone, this is my fiancé, Mei Terumi the god I'm Mizukage or should I say Mei Terumi Namikaze? He says. Donzo was now livid. Damn it. Now Hiruzen knows that I sent my rude members to her. He thought while Sarutobi smirked at the Warhawk. That's right you fool. You can hide your drones from me but I can now remove your two pawns. If you try anything I will have you killed. The god of Shinobi thought as he saw the look of fear in Donzo's face. Now that Naruto's inheritance has been revealed, he'll be receiving everything from both the Namikaze and Senju clan estates. Not only that, but everything that he has demanded from certain members on this council will be given to him and if you fail to do so I'll have you removed from the council, your possessions taken by force and your families living on the streets, he said with a stern look on his face. Naruto and Mei grin at the civilians who were gulping in fear. They had wronged an heir who belonged to not one, but two clans and they were paying the price for it. Sarutobi then looks at Koharu and Homura. And as for you two, how dare you deceive another cage by sending a document I didn't approve of and forge my seal of approval. Do you idiots realize that an action like that would have caused a war between us? He yelled at his former teammates. We did what was necessary Sarutobi. We couldn't allow the boy to be in another village, Homura said not caring that he could have started a war that he was sure Konoha would win and Koharu nodded. You and the Yondai Mei were being foolish in trying to make peace with a weak village like Kiri. We do not need to associate ourselves with barbarians like her. She said glaring at the Mizukage but they instantly regretted it when Naruto grabbed them by their throats and lifted them off their seat and near his face. Naruto's eyes were now crimson and his fangs became longer. Both elders were struggling from his grip while he tightened his hold on their necks, making them choke. How dare you talk to my fiancé like that you pieces of shit. I should kill you both right now for all the hell you've put me and my family through but I'm not because I'll be hurting your grandchildren. If you value your lives I suggest you shut up from now on or I'll send you on a one-way trip to meet this Hinigami do I make myself clear? He says making them nod in pain and drops them on their asses. Sarutobi then snaps his fingers and four Anbu appear. Place Koharu and Homura under house arrest for treason and for interfering in clan and foreign affairs. You two are no longer my advisors or permitted to come to council meetings unless I say so. Be lucky Naruto is merciful because I know Tsunade won't be when she gets her hands on you. He says while the Yonbu drag the struggling elders away. Naruto I don't doubt your power or anything but do you think it's wise for your heritage to be known? Tsumi asks while Naruto looks at her. If you're concerned about Iwa knowing then I'm not worried. I doubt they want to start another war with us since the last thing they need is a second yellow flash crippling their forces. He says with a smirk on his face. Plus we're allies with Kergakur and Sunagakur and speaking of Suna what's going to be done about them? Naruto asks. We should wipe them off the map. They plotted an invasion with an S-class criminal who was from this village and shouldn't get away with it, Donzo said while Naruto glared at him. Shut up you old fool. If we did that then that'll make us look bad to the other villages. We are not barbarians so shut up. You're annoying, he said and Donzo glared at him with his one eye. Suna was desperate due to the loss of military power since the wind daimyo cut their funding and sent missions to us. Therefore, they had no choice and joined Orochimaru who can be highly persuasive when he wants to be. Inoiki says, so to prove that they are still our allies, Suna is offering the former Kaze Kage's daughter, Tamari in a political marriage to a shinobi of our choosing. The Yamanaka finished. She should be given to the Uchiha. She is strong and will bear him powerful children, Haruno said with the civilians agreeing. You have no say in the matter civilian. This is a matter between shinobi not you people, Hiyashi said while they fumed since their power was reduced to a minimum. Sasuke Uchiha was not the one who defeated their strongest ninja so Tamari is being given to Naruto Namikaze. Shibi Aburame says getting a raised eyebrow from the Namikaze Senju. The Uchiha would have been killed if he faced Gara, who is the container for the Ichibi no Tanuki Shukaku. Naruto San knew Gara's weakness which was his sand and used water and lightning jutsu to beat his attacks. He also used a few injutsu that cuts him off from his baijuo making him weaker so Sunagakur didn't want to face the power of the one who beat Gara. they're offering his sister to you Naruto-san. Shibi says while the blonde rubs the back of his head. Oh well as long as she agrees with it then I'll be more than happy to accept it since I fall under the CRA. I already talked to Mei-chan about it and she was okay with it. He says while the clan members nod. Since Naruto is the Mizukage's future husband and he is the only one she trusts, he should be the ambassador for us and Kiri. Shikaku says. Okay is that all? Naruto asks until Haruno speaks up. No we want to know why you attacked Uchiha-sama? She yelled and a vein appeared on his face. That prick demanded me, 
a Chonin to tell him where I gained my techniques and when I refuse, he tried to attack me by pulling out a kunai, so I restrained him and threatened him that if he tried something like that again I'd kill him since attacking a comrade is a B-class felony which would have gotten him sent to prison and his chakra and bloodline sealed now shut up and keep your slut of a daughter away from me or you'll regret it you whore. He said unleashing key at her and she falls out of her chair and runs away. After the meeting the civilians were dismissed and the clan heads left also. Alright Gaki, let's go get my teammate. Last I heard she was in a town called Danzaku Gai so let's hurry and get back. Mei-san would you like to accompany us so that you and Naruto can get better acquainted? Jiraiya asks with a lecherous grin on his face but then leaps out of the window because Naruto tries to cut him in half with his Ryukan. He sheathes it mumbling Uro-sen in while Mei giggles but eeps when Naruto holds her in his arms bridal style while the blonde grins at her surprised expression. He then looks at Sarutobi and disappears in a swirl of water. Route to Tanzaku Gai. Jiraiya was ahead of the others mumbling about short-tempered blondes while rubbing the lump that was on his head. Naruto was carrying Mei in his arms bridal style while she rested her head on his chest. Naruto got a good view of her cleavage causing a tint of pink to appear on his face. Mei saw this and moved her body a little to give him a better view. Like what you see Naruto-kun? She asks while his eyes look the other way. Mei giggled and kissed him on the cheek. I don't mind you ogling my chest. I actually prefer if you did than your godfather. She says while he snickers. I heard that. Jiraiya says while Mei just giggles. I think it's better that I walk now Naruto-kun. She says while Naruto shakes his head. No can do Mei-chan. I don't want you ruining your beautiful feet on the hard and dirty ground. He says while she smiles at him. Well aren't you sweet? But don't your arms hurt from carrying me this far? She asks while Naruto smiles and kisses her on the nose. Me get tired of carrying my Tenchi? Never. I have arms of steel Mei-chan. He says. Mei sighs and rests her head on his chest. Naruto kisses her forehead and walks up to catch up with Jiraiya. Hotel. After they checked into the hotel Jiraiya ran off with some female who winked at him while Naruto sighs at that and he and lets Mei down. They head upstairs to the room they rented. Naruto unlocks the door and throws his backpack on the floor and Mei sets hers down also. The blonde then places his swords next to the bed and Mei removes her sandals and shin guards. Naruto sits on the bed while Mei walks over to the blonde and sits on his lap and Naruto wraps his arms around her waist. Think Jirai will come back anytime soon? Mei asks while Naruto shrugs let Uro Sen and go do his research. It just means more alone time for you and me. He says and tickles her sides while she giggles and squirms in his grip. He stops and she wraps her arms around his neck and they go into a lip locking session. Naruto moves his hand down to her exposed leg and strokes it, making Mei shiver and let out a moan when he moves his hand up and down her leg. Naruto removes his lips from hers and starts to kiss her jawline while Mei lets out a sigh. His hands explore her curved and flawless body and he makes his way to her neck. Mei moves her hand through a soft blonde and spiky hair and places her other hand on his chiseled chest. Said blonde moves back up to her jawline and then to her lips. Their makeout session continues until Naruto's eyes widen as does Mei's. They then stop. Mei gets off his lap and they get up slowly. Mei do you sense that? He asks and she nods. Hi and they're close. I know one of them is familiar and has the chakra of a Jinchuriki. The other is a mystery to me. She says. The other one is Itachi Uchiha. I remember that chakra level. He killed his entire clan in one night. Naruto picks up his bag and hers. Mei places his swords on her back and puts her sandals and shin guards back on. They then slowly move towards the window and Naruto carefully opens it. A knock was heard and the blonde curses. Mei-chan come on. He whispers she nods and looks out the window. She then sees a platform and steps out on it. Naruto then does the same and then closes the window. Outside in the hall were two figures wearing a black cloak with red clouds. One was taller than the other. He was blue and wore a mist headband with a scratched symbol on it. He also had what seemed to be gills on the sides of his cheeks and on his back was a man-sized sword that was wrapped up in bandages. He was Kisame Hoshigaki. Next to him was a male with raven black hair that was tied into a ponytail and he had red eyes with three tomos in them. He was Itachi Uchiha. They were following Jiraiya, Naruto, and Mei so that they could capture Naruto for the QB. Itachi knocked on the door again but once more, no one answered. Kisame was getting impatient and growled. Fuck this, he said and kicked the door off its hinges and walked in. Itachi did too and looked around for any source of chakra. He narrowed his eyes at the window for a while and spoke up. Let's go Kisame. They're not in this room, he said and the shark nin nodded. They left out of the room to search for their target. Meanwhile, Mei had her arms around Naruto's neck while he slid down a water pipe. When Naruto's feet touched the ground, Mei let go of him and lets out a sigh of relief. That was close. 
We should find Jiraiya and leave as soon as possible. I can handle Itachi but Kisame is one person you don't want to fight. His chakra levels are on par with a Jinkei or Riki's and he also has a sword that eats chakra. Come on Naruto-kun. It's only a matter of time before they realize we're not in that inn. She says and he nods. He grabs her hands and leads her into the crowd of people. Meanwhile Kisame was fuming at the fact that they lost the QB Jinkei or Riki. That damn kid and the Mizukage gave us the slip Itachi. What do we do now? Go after them? Itachi closes his eyes then reopens them. Come Kisame. It appears that we're on a hunt. He says and the shark grins. Mei and Naruto were currently leaping from roof to roof until the blonde Chaunin curses. Shit. They already realized that we gave them the slip and are heading our way. Mei-chan let's head to that clearing in the forest. We can't fight those guys in the town otherwise everyone here will get caught in the crossfire, he said. Mei nods and they head to the forest. Itachi and Kisame were following them and the Karinin grinned. So they want to take this fight away from civilization eh? I can't wait to get reacquainted with Mei. Who would have thought that she of all people would become a cage, he said placed his hand around the hilt of his sword. Don't get cocky Kisame. We don't know the extent of Naruto's abilities and that could get you killed. Same goes for the Mizukage don't get too excited, he said while Kisame grunts. You sure know how to ruin my fun Itachi. Kisame grumbled while a small smirk appeared on Itachi's face while they increased their speed. Forest clearing. Naruto and Mei land in the clearing of the forest. Naruto throws off the backpacks and Mei tosses him Ryukan and Shinkan no Akui. Naruto places both blades on his back and cracks his neck. That's when Itachi and Kisame appeared a few feet away from them. So you guys finally caught up. It's been a while Itachi or should I say Mongoose-san. He says while a small smirk appears on Itachi's face. So you remember my Anbu name a Naruto-kun? You've gotten taller. He says in monotone. The blonde smirks at this. Mei however frowns when she sees Kisame grinning and stroking the hilt of his sword with his fingers. Why hello Mei-chan. I heard you are now the Mizukage of Kirigakur. Congratulations. How is Chujuro doing? He asks while she scoffs at him. He's fine, but I don't think you came all this way just to talk about the good old days did you? She asks getting a chuckle from the shark man. No I didn't actually we're here for the brat so if you could just hand him over please do. I don't want to shave off that pretty face of yours. He says showing his sharp white teeth. Mei narrows her eyes at the monster of the mist. If you think I'll let you touch Naruto-kun then you better think twice. She says while Kisame lets out a sigh. He then removes the bandaged sword from his back and slams the blade on the ground hard, creating a small crater. You always were the stubborn one in the group Mei. Now I have no other choice but to use force. He says and grins evilly. Naruto-kun we can do this the easy way or hard way. Come with us and she won't be harmed. Itachi says making Naruto narrow his eyes and pull out Shinkan no Akuhe. I have a better suggestion. I kill you and tuna fish over there and collect the bounties on your heads. He replies while Kisame growls at being called that name. Watch your mouth brat or I'll cut off your arms and legs. He says. Itachi sighs and looks at Naruto. Apparently I'll have to use force. Itachi says and opens his eyes fully, revealing a fully mature Sharingan. Naruto's eyes become as cold as ice and he twirls his sword around twice. I know I can't beat you Itachi but I can at least injure you. He says and his sword glows white. He then deus a vertical slash creating a crescent chakra wave at the missing nin. Itachi moves to the left and charges at Naruto pulling a katana from under his sleeve. Naruto does the same and when they meet, there are blades, causing small sparks to fly. Mei pulls out a scroll and opens it. The seal on it glows and a puff of smoke appears. Out of the scroll appears a strange looking sword that looked like its Vihandara with a red hilt, Red Queen from Devil May Cry. She grabs the hilt with her right hand and places the flat side of her sword on her shoulder. Kisame chuckles while he lifts Samata up into his. Oh, it appears that Samata, Shark Skin, and Kunheim, Blaze Princess, get to play again. I wonder if your Kenjutsu got any better. He says while Mei removes the flat end from her shoulder and holds the hilt with both blades. She then twists the hilt making their blade glow a reddish-orange color. I'll be then happy to show you traitor. She says in a dark tone while Kisame's grin grew even bigger and the two swordsmen charged towards each other with flames trailing from Kinheim. Itachi and Naruto were engaging into a sword fight with Naruto on the defense. Itachi seems to be forcing Naruto back and then he unleashes a kick at Naruto's chest while the blonde leaps over it and land behind Itachi. He then swings at Itachi's side while the ex-Anbu captain turns and blocks it with the flat end of his sword and Naruto pushes against it with his sword. Itachi then breaks the stalemate and does a thrusting strike with his sword at Naruto's head who sidesteps but ends up getting a small cut on his cheek. 
Naruto growls and performs a series of slashes, and thrusts at Itachi who had to increase his speed a little due to the fact that Naruto got in a few cuts and slashed at his arms and shoulders. Kisame swung Seimata vertically and horizontally at Mei who ducks, sidesteps, and weaves from the attacks. She then ducks under a slash that went for her head and she performs a stabbing attack at his torso. Kisame sidesteps the move and raises his sword into the air. He brings it down and she leaps back while the sword causes another small crater. Mei then charges and swings at Kisame's head but the shark man blocks it with the flat end of his sword but winces when the flames from the sword scorch his left leg and right arm. Mei then jumps in the air and kicks the shark hard in the face hard, sending him skidding back a little. Kisame glares at her while blood fell from his broken nose. Kisame pushes it back in place and licks the blood off his lips. That's what I'm talking about. He says with his eyes filled with bloodlust and charges at her increasing his speed. His sword strikes start to get faster and Mei starts to move her body faster to avoid the strikes. Kisame then brings his sword up into the air and brings it down fast. Mei blocks it using both hands on her sword but she then grunts at the strength behind it. D damn it. I forgot about his strength. I can barely hold it off. She said while gritting her teeth while Kisame grins as the tip of the sword makes its way to her left shoulder. Have you forgotten Mei? My blade same it doesn't cut he says as his grin grows wider. Kisame then jerks the blade backwards while the bandages on the tip of the sword are torn apart by a bunch of sharp purple blades that extend and rip the flesh off her shoulder and some of her arm. Mei cries out in pain as the flesh on her left shoulder and arm were shaved off by a bunch of blades. It shaves the flesh from your bones. He says and cackled like a madman. Mei drops Kanheim and clutches her now bleeding arm while stepping backwards. Naruto who was pinned by Itachi to a tree from the strength of his sword saw Mei on her knee clutching her left arm. Mei-chan. He screams out and then lets out a growl and increases his strength to push Itachi off who is surprised by his increase of strength. Get the hell out of my way. He yells and kicks Itachi away who lets out a grunt and Naruto leaps over the Uchiha and runs towards Kisame who would say Mata in the air again and bites his thumb then performs a few hand seals. This time I'll shave that face of yours off. He says and brings the blade down and Mei rolls to the side of while the sword hits the ground. Kisame smirks and does it again. Mei jumps back only for her arm to throb and she clutches it even harder. Damn it he must have hit a nerve in my arm. She says. Kisame appears in front of her and brings the sword down on her head. Mei's eyes widen when she realizes she won't be able to make it. That was when the ground exploded and a black Komodo dragon appears out of it and opens its maw that was filled with razor sharp teeth and snaps at Kisame's arm. The shark nin jumps back in order to avoid having his arm bitten off by the monitor lizard. Said creature hisses while green saliva dripped from his maw which hit the ground steam rose from the ground. Naruto appeared before Mei and helped her up. Mei-chan are you okay? He asks but his eyes widened when he saw the blood running down her arm. I it's just a scratch Naruto-kun. Mei says but winces again at the throbbing of her arm. Naruto growls at Kisame and draws Shinkan no Akuhei and adds lightning chakra to the blade. I'm gonna fucking kill you, you overgrown sushi roll. He says while the swordsman of the mist grin and steps forward. Go ahead and try Barat. I'll shave you and that little girl apart. He says but watches the dragon whose hissing got louder. Itachi appears before Kisame but then his eyes narrow when he senses another chakra level which was very powerful. Kisame we must leave. Jiraiya is on his way and you know we're no match for him. He says while Kisame growls in frustration but sighs. Damn it just when things were getting interesting. You are lucky Mei but next time I'll shave off your face. He says while Naruto's eyes become crimson. Try it and I'll you into chummy fucking mackerel. He says in a demonic tone while the shark man chuckles. Sorry kid but you're 10 years from being on my level. He says and they leap away when a long pink tongue comes at them but then retracts into a horse sized toad that leaps and lands near Naruto and Major Aya then appears near the toad and looks around for Itachi and Kisame and then sighs. He sees Naruto with a first aid kit opened and was healing Mei's left shoulder and arm with green chakra. The black Komodo dragon dispels and Naruto then pulls out some disinfect and sprays it on Mei's shoulder and arm while she bites her lower lip from the steaming. He then pulls out some bandage wrap and starts to wrap it around the end of her shoulder and down to her forearm. Let me know if it's too tight Mei-chan. He says getting a nod from his future bride. After he was done she rips off the sleeve of her arm and throws it away. Thanks Naruto-kun. She says and then gets up to retrieve Kunheim. She then seals it back up into the same scroll and walks back to the others. Where the hell have you been Urasenin? Naruto asks while Jiraiya looks at him. Hey now I was on my way Gaki. I can't help it if I'm not as fast as I was in my prime. He says while crossing his arms. Just be glad I showed up. He says while Naruto's brow twitches and sighs. That's not the point. 
Mei Chan got hurt because you were taking your precious time, he said while a tick mark appeared on his head. She's a cage for Cammy's sake brat not a weakling. She could have handled those two on her own if she wanted. It's possible she underestimated Kisame and slipped. He says. Naruto was about to speak up at his words until Mei places a hand on his shoulder. He's right Naruto I did let my guards down for underestimating my former comrade and it could have cost me my life. I'm sorry if I worried you. She says while Naruto grabs her hand and strokes it. It's okay Mei-chan. Just try to be more careful alright? Naruto said getting a nod from her. Alright let's get going. We should be in Tanzaku guy after we leave town. Tsunade won't stay there for long. Jiraiya says and they head off to Tanzaku guy to find the next Hokage. Chapter 4, Relatives, Bets, and the Snake. Naruto, Mei and Jiraiya were currently in Tanzaku guy and walking through the busy streets. So Kyufu. I heard that my Obasan was considered to be the best medic in the elemental countries. What else do you know about here? He asks and Mei was wondering too since she heard about how powerful Tsunade was from her parents and always wanted to meet her in person. Jiraiya thinks about it and speaks up. Well aside from being known for her awesome skills in medical jutsu and being the granddaughter and grandniece of the first and second Hokage, she's also known to be very strong. She can smash a boulder with a tap of her finger and cause earthquakes with a click of her heel. The last time I saw her go all out, she demolished a mountain with her entire fist. He answered causing Naruto's and Mei's eyes to widen. Whoa. She can do that? Man I can wait to meet her. The blonde says. She also goes by another name Naruto. Jiraiya says. Oh? And what is that? He asks. She's also known as. The legendary sucker. He says and laughs out loud at the shocked look on their faces. Legendary sucker. What exactly does that insinuate Kyufu because if it's in a perverted manner that all Naruto says as his brow twitched. Jirai looks at the look on his face and rolls his eyes. No not in that way Gaki. What I meant was that she sucks at gambling. I mean seriously she has a debt that's the size of the Hokage mountain. He states and Naruto face faults but gets back up. No way. No one's luck can be that bad. Naruto yells but Jiraiya grins. Sorry kid but it's true. Her luck is so terrible that she even lost a bet to an 8 year old. He states in Naruto's jaw drop. Please Kami don't let that trait get passed on to me. He mumbles and Jiraiya laughs out loud at that. Oh don't worry Gaki. Tsunade's luck at gambling is a once in a lifetime curse. You on the other hand have the luck of the fox. He states and Naruto rolls his eyes. Just because I'm affiliated with a fox doesn't make me one. He says and Jiraiya shrugs. Anyways, how are your skills in Makuten going? He asks his godson. Not as far as I hoped. I can still grow trees but it takes a lot of chakra to grow an adult sized one. Right now I can at least use roots, vines, and branches from the trees and other plant life. He answers and Jiraiya nods. Mei-chan helped me with some of my lava based jutsu. Say how did I gain Yotan anyway? He asks Jiraiya who grins and Mei wonders also because only members of her clan had lava and boil release. Well apparently Heiseramas and Tobirama's father Genryusai Senju had a high affinity for both fire and earth and he combined them to gain Yotan. Not much is known about the man since he died during the beginning of the clan wars back then but from the Senju clan history books his abilities with Yotan was so great that he can make volcanoes erupt a force of will and can even create small volcanic islands with his fused affinity alone. He answered causing Mei and Naruto to gawk at him. Holy crap that sounds awesome. To be able to create an island using chakra alone. Hopefully when I'm good enough with my Yotan I can pull that off. Then I can make it into a private resort for me, Mei-chan, Damari-chan, and any other girl who wishes to help me revive my clans. He says in a thinking pose while Jiraiya who was inwardly crying because of Naruto getting to have a harem to revive his clan and wondered why he couldn't have that luck. Mei was blushing at the thought of having a private island with her future husband and spoke of. Speaking of reviving clans, Naruto how many females do you plan on having join your clan? She asks and he looks at her. Well there isn't a total but no more than 10 why? He asks her. Oh. Well so that you know if anyone is going to bear your first child or take your innocence it's gonna be me. She says with a cheeky grin on her face and Naruto almost trips over his feet and Jiraiya started to giggle pervertedly. She then wraps her arms around his neck and presses her assets against his back. But since we can't have kids yet that doesn't mean we can't have any fun while waiting for that right Naruto-kun? She whispers into his ear, making him blush at what she meant. Why yeah. He says while Jiraiya slowly reaches for his notebook. Uro-sensei if you value your manhood you will not pull that pad out. Naruto speaks out and Jiraiya slumps his shoulders. Aw oh, come on Gaki. Do you have any idea how fast my research will go? I'll even name the title after you. I'll call it the prince and his water goddess. 
He states in May's brow twitches, What do you value more Daraya-sama? Your research or your life as a male? She asks in a sweet yet dangerous tone as she held Naruto closer to her body and the man shivers at the dark horror surrounding her. Why is it that I get in trouble being a pervert and Naruto doesn't? He says walking away and slowly dragging his feet but ends up getting hit in the back of his head by the sheath of Ryukan. I'm not a pervert or Obaka. Naruto yells out while a lump appears on Jiraiya's head. Mei smirks while Jiraiya rubs the lump he had. She giggles and then releases her future husband when four of her onbu appear and sighs. Well Naruto-kun I have to be going now. She says and Naruto looks at the onbu and blinks. Do you have to? I really want you to meet my obasan, he says and a sad smile appears on her face. I know I want to also but I also have a village to run just like Sarutobi-sama does. Don't worry I'll be safe and you can visit me whenever you like and send me letters via summoning or shadow clone. She says and walks over to kiss him on the lips and he deepens it before releasing it. She then backs away from Naruto and waves at him before all five Miss Ninmizu shine away. That was when a thundercloud appeared on his head and his shoulders slumped while he cried anime tears. I miss her already. He sobs out while Jiraiya falls on the ground laughing his ass off. Okami this is rich. Minato acted the same way when Kushina went on a two-week mission to River Country. I've never seen someone sulk so much in my life, he says while Naruto glares at his godfather and looks away again. Flashback. Jiraiya was trying to hold in a laugh as he saw Minato pestering Kushina who had a tick mark on her face as she and her team got ready to leave. So you have everything right Kushina-chan? He asks while her vein throbbed making the Anbu sweat drop at how the two were acting. Yes. She answered. Extra clothes? Yes. Extra food? Yes. Extra weapons? Yes. She growled out as more veins appeared on her head. Dot what about extra ramen caused if you want I can go. For Kami's sake me not oh I have everything now stop being such a worry ward it's annoying. She yelled out performing the demon head jutsu and yelling at his chibi form while Jiraiya snorted and covered his mouth. But, no buts damn it. Seriously Minato I'm going on a two week scouting mission so stop worrying over me. She says and huffs while folding her arms until Minato cupped his hands into hers and anime tears fell from his face. But I'll miss you Kushina-chan. He blubbered out and Kushina's whole face turned red in embarrassment and her colleagues snickered. I haven't even left yet you idiot and stop making a scene you're embarrassing me. She yelled. After that, Kushina and Dianbu left out of gate while Minato was on his knees crying. I miss you already Kushina-chan. He bawled out and Jiraiya busted out laughing and rolling around the ground clutching his sides. Kushina hears this and shakes her fist in anger and embarrassment and lets out a frustrating sigh. For the love of Kami he's such a baby. She mutters. Flashback ends. Jiraiya couldn't help but think that this was similar in a way. Man oh man if old age doesn't kill me then my fits of laughter will. Honestly Gaki your father was a big baby when it came to your mother. You should have seen what your old man did to Fugaku when he tried to make the moves on your mom. Poor bastard was in the hospital for a month. I wonder what would happen if his son tried to pull a fast one on your fiancé? He says until Naruto gets out of his funk and his eyes were glowing red. If that team even thinks of touching my Mei-chan I'll RIP those fucking eyes out of his head, tear his beads off and shove them down his throat and throw him into a gay bar. He yells out and Jiraiya's sweat drops. Yep, just like Minato. He says as his sweat drop got bigger when he saw the kanji for death hovering over Naruto's head and could have sworn he saw the feigned image of the Shinigami hovering over his godson. Alright Gaki we wasted enough time so let's go and find. Run. Run away. That monster destroyed the castle. A civilian cried as he and some others ran past Naruto and Jiraiya. The two blinked on confusion. Monster? What the heck is he Naruto starts to say until his eyes widen as he catches a whiff of what smelled like snakes. Kyufu. I smell a snake coming from that direction and it's not that Proctor's sent from the Chunin exam. It's stronger and there's two of them. He says. So Orochimaru is close by. Let's go check it out Gaki. He says and Naruto nods while they head to the ruined castle. Destroyed castle. Naruto and Jiraiya appeared in the location of the destroyed castle and looked around. Yeah this was Orochimaru's doing. Jiraiya says as he looks at the rubble. Naruto's eyes narrow. Gah. This place practically reeks of snake. But there's something else. It's not that strong but I also got the scent of medicine, sake, and money. He answered. Jiraiya's eyes widen when he said that. Tsunade was here also. He says. Do you think there was a fight between them? He asks and the toad Sanin shakes his head. I doubt it. Tsunade is one person you don't want to corner and if there was a fight, this castle wouldn't be the only thing that was leveled. Trust me. I know. He states and Naruto nods. Now one thing remains. What the hell does that snake want with her? 
He asks and Jirai HMMS, local bar, Tsunade was sitting at a table with a worried Shizun and Tantan drinking sake, wondering if she should take Orochimaru's offer. She then lets out a sigh and looks at her image in the sake bottle. Can this day get any worse? She asks herself. Meanwhile, Naruto was walking behind a sobbing Jiraiya with a vein throbbing on his head. You are a pain in the ass you know that? I turn my back for a few seconds and you end up flirting with a bunch of hookers. Are you trying to catch a case or are you desperate in getting laid or Okufu? Naruto asks while the pervert turned around and glared at his new apprentice. Shut up. They were perfect for my research and you ruined it, he yelled but the winced when Naruto threw a pebble directly at his forehead. Baka. They were going to rob you. For Kami's sake can you think with the head on your shoulders and not the one between your legs for once? In case you forgot, we have a mission to do in finding Saru Oji's successor, Naruto said. Jiraiya's brow twitches and huffs. Kill Joy. Always got to ruin my fun. What's the rush Gaki? You got her sent right? He asks. Yes I do but it's close to being faint. You know if she runs away we'll lose her and I'm not explaining to Saru Oji why we lost my aunt. He said glaring at Jiraiya who was laughing nervously. Okay okay no more slacking off. He says and then sees a bar. Hey let's head to that bar and grab a bite. Hopefully someone in there will have some info on Tsunade's location. He said with a grin on his face and Naruto groans. I give up. Fine let grab some food and hurry and no flirting with women. He emphasized and the man's shoulders slumped while they head into the bar. Jiraiya was the first to enter and saw a few people eating, drinking, or chatting. Naruto walked in and winced while his nose twitched. Man this place reeks of alcohol. Are you positive that bars are a good place for information? He asks. Of course I'm sure Gaki in case you forgot I may he says but then pauses when he sees his old teammate sitting with a black haired woman and a pig. Tsunade tilts her head and sees Jiraiya. Eh? She says as she squints her eyes and sees a white haired man and a blonde kid. Naruto blinks and waves his hand in front of his dazed godfather. Oi Kyufu are you okay? He asks. Tsunade I found you. He yells pointing his fingers at the wide-eyed woman and Naruto jumps back in shock but then turned his head to see a blonde-haired woman. Jiraiya? What the heck are you doing here? She asks slash demanded. Naruto's eyes widen and looks at her. That's my aunt? She looks like she's in her thirties. Heck her chest is bigger than Mei and Q-chan's. He ran it in his mind. The two then sat down with Tsunade and her apprentice, who was looking nervous while Naruto and Jiraiya missed it. Well it's been a long time since we saw each other Haim. He says while said Senja scoffs. Please Jiraiya. I know you didn't come here for old time sakes and who's the blonde Gaki? I thought you stopped taking students after Minato died, she stated and the man laughed lightly. You're right I didn't come here on a social call and as for the Gaki. He should seem familiar to you of all people. He answers. Tsunade raises an eyebrow and looks at the blonde. Can't say I have seen him before so what do you want? Jiraiya rubs the back of his hat and speaks. Well Tsunade. Our sensei has realized that he can no longer keep up the role as Hokage like he used to back then and has named his successor since Minato died 14 years ago. He wants you Tsunade to become the goddamn Hokage of Konoha. He explained. Tsunade had a blank expression on her face and then looked down at her cup full of sake. No. I will not become the Hokage of Konoha, she said in a flat tone shocking everyone. The title of Hokage is shit and is only good for one thing getting killed especially for those who want to become Hokage. She replied, Naruto narrowed his eyes at the woman who was supposed to be his aunt and they become slitted. Jiraiya sighs and rubs his head. You've definitely changed Tsunade. What would your grandfather and granduncle say if they heard you saying this? He asks in a solemn tone while Tsunade scoffs. Frankly I don't care since they're both dead because of that stupid title. Minato died young because he was foolish enough to give his life for the village and because of him I lost the last bit of family I had in this world. Go tell that old monkey to find another fool to take job because like I said only a fool would want to be Hokage, she said. That was when Naruto started to chuckle and Tsunade heard it. You find something funny Gaki? She asks. Yes I do. I find it funny that the strongest Kunoichi in the elementals is nothing more than weak and pathetic crybaby who blames her sorrow and misery on her own deceased family and the one man who thought of her as a daughter. I don't why I got so excited in meeting you when you're nothing more than shell of your former self. He says while Tsunade glares at Naruto. You've got a lot of nerve talking to me like that brat. Who the hell do you think you are? She growled out only for Naruto's expression to change from humorous to pissed and his eyes were cold and slitted. Oh so now that I pissed you off with the truth you won't get all high and mighty huh? And who do you think you are calling the Hokage's fools just because they gave their lives to protect something they cherished? Naruto says, 
standing up and slamming his fist on the table, rattling the food that was on it and leaving an imprint of his fist on it. I don't care what your fucking problem is you old bat but don't you dare blame Saru Oji for your losses. You need to stop wallowing in self-pity and grow the fuck up. You don't see him or Jiraiya Sensei blaming Konoha for losing people they care about, he yelled, making the Senju's eyes widen at what he said. Jiraiya was impressed but worried for his godson's well-being. This Gaki has balls of steel to talk to the strongest female in the elementals like that. I don't know if I should be impressed or worried for his well-being. He thought until Tsunade stood up and gave Naruto a look that would scare even Orochimaru. That's it. You and me outside. I'm gonna teach you a lesson in respecting your superiors brat. She yells and Naruto smirks. Fine. Let's settle this outside. He says while they head outside. Outside the bar, Tsunade was standing a couple of feet away from Naruto while Jiraiya and a worried Shizune and Totan were watching. Don't you think we should stop this Jiraiya-sama? The brunette asks while Jiraiya smirks. Don't worry Shizune. He may be young but he didn't become a Chunin for nothing. If Tsunade was smart she wouldn't underestimate him. Tsunade holds her index finger up and directs it to Naruto. One finger is all I need to beat you brat. She says with an arrogant tone. Man and I thought Neji and Sasuke team were arrogant. Is arrogance a disease that spreads in Kanaha? He thought while he cracks his neck. You shouldn't underestimate me just because I'm a recently promoted Chunin. It could get you killed. He says and pulls a kunai out of his sleeve and flings it at Tsunade. The legendary medic tilts her head to the side while the kunai flies past her head and sees Naruto charge towards her and a smirk appears on her face. Naruto rears his fist back and tries to punch the female Sanin in the face but she uses her index finger and swats it away making him lean over and his eyes widen when she brings her finger and thumb at his forehead and flicks him hard. Naruto tumbles away while she smirks. That's it? I expected more from your apprentice Jiraiya she started to say until Naruto puffed away, making her eyes widen. Cage Bushin? Impossible. No Chunin should have that much chakra to pull that. She thought. Her senses kicked in and she leapt away from the ground and saw two pair of hands appear from the ground and then Naruto popped up from the ground. He then smirks and once again puffs away. Naruto appears behind her with his fist cocked back and swings it at her face. Tsunade manages to grab his fist with her hand and tosses him over her shoulder. He flips in midair and lands on his feet and smirks. Looks like you lose this round Tsunade. He says and she had a puzzled look on her face. What do you mean I lost? You haven't even got a hit in yet. She stated and Naruto chuckles. No I didn't but you failed to do one thing. Remember when you said your index finger was the only thing you needed to beat me? Just recently you used your whole hand to stop my punch, therefore you failed to beat me, a newly promoted Chunin. He stated like it was the most obvious thing in the world. Tsunade spotted and points at him but then huffs and looks at the ground. Great. Just great when word gets out that I got outsmarted by a promoted Chunin, I'll be the laughing stock of the nations. She mumbles. Shizun was gobsmacked and Jiraiya couldn't help but smirk. Another thing Tsunade. Naruto says and she looks up. What? She asks still sulking at being outwitted by a 14 year old. Who was the last bit of family you lost a long time ago? He asks. It was my distant cousin. Her name was Kushina Uzumaki and she was gonna give birth to a boy October 10th but then the QB attacked and they both died when the hospital roof collapsed, she said in a solemn tone. And who pray tell told you your nephew died on the day QB attacked? Naruto asks and she clenched her fists and she looked at the ground. It was those three vultures Koharu Homura, and Donzo. She growled and Naruto sighed while brushing his hair back. Figures. Those bakas have caused nothing but trouble and worse, they lied to you about his death. He says and she looks up in shock. What? Are you telling me my nephew is still alive? She asks and he nods. Yes and he's standing in front of you. Hello Obasan. Naruto says and Tsunade's eyes widen as does Shizun's and Tantan's. H. He's Tsunade Samazoi, nephew? She asks Jiraiya and Tantan oinks. Jiraiya nods, yep, and my godson. Jiraiya answers and Shizun's eyes bulge from her head. Tsunade did the only thing she could do. She fainted. Naruto blinks when he sees his aunt fall over and rubs the back of his head. He then sighs and walks over to Tsunade's fallen form and places her on his back. Hey, you with the black hair. What's your name? He asks Tsunade's apprentice, Shizun. She answers. Shizun-san do you two by any chance have a hotel room nearby? He asks and she nods. Yes we do. I'll take you both there. She says and motions them to follow her. Tsunade's and Shizun's rooms. Tsunade was laying on her bed groaning as she opened her eyes to see Shizun with a concerned look on her face. Tsunade-sama are you okay? She asks while she sat up. Shizun? Where am I? 
The female Senju asks. In our hotel room. You fainted when we were in the middle of the village. Shizun explained while Tsunade blinked. I fainted? I must have had too many shots of sake. Wait a minute, where is Jiraiya and the blonde kid? She asks. Outside the room waiting for you to wake up. Should I have them come in? Shizun asks her mentor who shakes her head. Have the blonde Gaki come in first. And if Jiraiya tires anything. Kick him in the nuts. She tells her apprentice who giggles and nods. Afterwards, she opens the door and tells Naruto to come in. Naruto walks in and closes the door behind him and then walks over to the bat and sits by the side of it. How are you feeling Abasan? Did you manage to get the sake out of your system yet? He asks with a cheeky grin and her brow twitches. You are definitely Kushina's kid. I haven't met anyone who has a smart mouth like hers. She says and Naruto rubs the back of his head. Yes yeah, Saru Oji said I inherited that in her temper. He says while she smiles sadly. So this whole time Mayoi was alive and I didn't know? Did Jiraiya know about this? She asks and he nods. He did but whenever he tried to search for you to tell you, he'd lose your trail. That or he's been doing research on his perverted book. He says while she sighs. Yeah that sounds like my perverted teammate. She mumbles. Naruto then finds himself being pulled into a hug and feels teardrops falling on top of his head and feels her body tremble slightly as she hugged him even closer. Naruto returns the hug and rubs her back with one hand while she sobs quietly. Jiraiya and Shizun see this through a small crack in the door and they both smile as does Tantan. After holding her nephew in her arms for a few seconds, she releases him and wipes her tears away. So Obasan. When do you plan on meeting the white snake? He asks while her eyes widen and looks at him. How did you she asked and he smirks. Found the demolished castle and you're sent along with his there. It's one of the perks of being a Jinchuriki. He explained and her eyes widen even more. So you're the vessel for the QB? She asks and Naruto nods. Yeah but she's not that bad. A little cranky and sadistic yes but not evil like a certain Uchiha and Snake. He growled while she looks at him wondering what Uchiha he's talking about. Anyway, when do you plan on meeting that pedophile? Naruto asks. In a week why? She asks. That faggot shoved his fingers into my gut and summoned some snakes to attack Konoha. I could have sworn he felt me up when he cut me off of Q during the Chunin exam. He says while shivering at being violated by a pedo. Tsunade's brow twitches and then smirks. Say Naruto. How would you like to make a bet? She asks and the blonde blinks. Sure what did you have in mind? He asks. Jiraiya taught you some techniques correct? Did he happen to teach you one of you father's jutsus? She asks and Naruto nods. Yeah he taught me some of his personal techniques and the Rasengan why? He asks and she grin. How far are you in using the Rasengan? She asks and Naruto holds his right hand up and chakra swirls into a ball of spiraling and compressed energy. I finished mastering it in two weeks during my training for the finals and now I'm working on my own version of the jutsu by shaping it into a weapon like a shuriken and hopefully work on throwing it. I got the shape down but throwing it is like trying walk on air. Impossible but I'm pretty sure I'll get it done. He says while she had an odd look on her face but then smirks. Alright then. I'll give you until the end of the week to complete this other version of the Rasengan. If you win I'll give you this. She says and holds out a necklace with a green gem on it. Naruto blinks and looks at it. What is that? He asks and she smiles. This Naruto belonged to your great grandfather the Shadaim Hokage. It's kinda like an heirloom in our clan. This alone can buy three mountains and a gold mine. She states and his eyes widen. Damn. Ah but what if I lose? He asks and her grin grows. You have to give up all the money in your father's vault to me. So do we have a bet? She asks. Naruto looks at her hand and grins while shaking it. You've got yourself a bet Obasan. He says until he see the door open and Shizun fall over as does Jiraiya. Tsunade-sama are you serious? What are you thinking placing that necklace in a bet? With your nephew no less exclamation mark slash are trying to kill the only family you have left? She yelled while Jiraiya groans and stands up rubbing his back. Naruto blinks and looks at his aunt for an explanation. To make a long story short I lost Dan and Nawaki when I gave them the necklace and it is believed that the necklace is cursed and kills people. She says while Shizun gapes like a fish. Naruto raised an eyebrow and snorts. Curses are nothing but bullshit. Just like fate and destiny. I really don't believe in that crap so I have nothing to worry about. He answers. Be but. But. Shizun stammers while Naruto gets up and walks towards the door. Oi Gaki where are you going? Jiraiya asks and Naruto looks at him. To train. I have a bet to win and a snake's ass to kick in less than a week so my schedule will be pretty tight. See you later Obasan, Shizun-san. Naruto says as he shunshines out of the hotel. Jiraiya does the same while Shizun lets out a big sigh. 
Tsunade looks at the necklace and grips it. Grandfather. Uncle. Nawaki. Dan. I am betting your hopes and dreams on this boy. Please let him succeed and prove me wrong. He's all I have left in this world. She begs in her mind while praying that Naruto does win the bet they just announced. Chapter 5, Ninja Battle Royale Part 1 Tanzakugai Forest Naruto was panting heavily in the middle of the charred and destroyed forest. Sweat was dripping from his face as he looked at the tree that was currently demolished. Damn it. Not good enough. It needs to make a clean cut not demolish it. He says as he straightens himself up and wipes the sweat off his face. He then sits down and cross his legs with a peeved expression on his face. Come on Naruto think. You want to make the blade thin enough to the point where it can cut through its target cleanly while keeping the core balanced. Hey Q-chan do you have any suggestions? Naruto asks the vixen. You could try adding less chakra into the core but make sure it's balanced enough to rotate and move along with the blade. The blade should have more chakra added into it so that it can be stretched out. That way even if the person dodges the attack the velocity and speed that the blade is going will suck that person into the vacuum and the rotating blade will tear the target apart. She explained. Naruto thought about it for a while and slapped himself on the forehead. Kami I'm such an idiot. Why didn't I use that method sooner? He said in a frustrated voice. Simple. It's because you're a blonde. Q said with a grin on her face which caused Naruto to face fault and get back up looking pissed. Fuck you Q. He yelled out loud while she giggled. Maybe later Foxy Coon, she said while Naruto mumbled about horny vixens being jerks. Now that just might work. I'll give it a try tomorrow though because I am tired as hell. Naruto says as he gets up and then he performs a series of hand seals and plants them on the ground. Tree shot up and replaced the ones he destroyed and then walked away only to see a bug-eyed and gobsmacked Shizune. Why you can use Makuten? She asks as she pointed at the trees. Naruto smirks at her expression and nods. Yep I've been able to do that since I was 5 but I had to keep it a secret from certain parties on the council, he said while she stared at the trees. B but I thought only the shot I'm could pull that off. No one else in the Senju clan was able to perform Makuten after he died so how were you able to pull it off? She asked. Oh that's simple. When my roommate was sealed into me by my old man her yokai caused the dormant gene for the wood-based keke genkai to activate and when I was working on my chakra control exercises with Saruoji when I was little I poured too much into the ground and grew a tree the size of a full-grown man. Afterwards I trained in using it in secret. He explained. Shizun snapped out of her stupor and spoke up. Look Naruto-kun I know you and Tsunade made a bet on the necklace but I she tried to explain but he cut her off. And I told you that I don't believe in that superstition crap Shizun-chan. The only person that decides when I die is either Kami-sama or me. I don't believe in stuff like fate or destiny. I make my own path and anyone that tells me otherwise can piss off, he said in a serious tone while she remained silent and took the info in. So you're not afraid to die? She asks and he shook his head. Nope. Death is a natural part of order so I don't fear it unlike a pale-faced boy chaser we all know and hate, he said brushing his hair back and walks past her. So are you coming back to the hotel or what? Because I don't think it would be wise for a pretty lady like you to stay out at night all alone, he said. Shizun blushed when he called her pretty but shook it off and glared at him. Hey I am not weak. I was personally trained by Tsunade sama herself, she yelled following behind him. I never said you were Shizun-chan but you got to remember we're not the only ninja roaming these forests, he said. Oh. She says as they made their way back to the hotel. Hotel room. Naruto kicked the door to his room open and flopped down on the bed. Ah so soft. He said burying his head into the pillow. Shizun was about to speak up until Jiraiya popped out of nowhere with a grin on his face. Yogaki, he yelled causing Naruto to jump out of his bed and hit the ground while Shizun leapt back with a scalpel in her hand until she saw Jiraiya and put it away. Naruto groaned and got up from the ground and saw Jiraiya. What's the big idea scaring me like that you old pervert? And where's my Obachan? I thought you were with her at the bar. He asks and the Toad Sage shrugs. I left not too long ago and she's still there. I think. He said rubbing the back of his head and that was when he was mule kicked in the face by Naruto and sent flying out the room. Yubaka. You left my only living family member in a bar filled with drunken men. Naruto yelled until Jiraiya got into his face with two shoe imprints on his face. Tsunade's a grown woman you brat she doesn't need my protection. She's a sonin for crying out loud, he yelled in his face. That's not the point you pervert. As her former teammate and a man you should be looking out for her and making sure no other guy takes advantage of her and for all we know Orochimaru or one of his goons could be spying on her. He screamed. Shizun however was watching the two arguing over Tsunade's well-being and said female Sanin appeared blinking in confusion. Hey Shizun what's the pervert and the brat arguing about? She asks her apprentice who sighed. You unfortunately. She answered getting a confused look from Tsunade. 
Shizun explained the situation and Tsunade rolled her eyes but couldn't help but smile at how her nephew was being protective of her. Come on Shizun let them argue until they pass out, she said leading her apprentice out of the room while the godfather and godson kept arguing. I swear that kid is just like his old man. Minato was the same way when it came to me and Kushina-chan. He would always fuss about how that pervert should act his age and look out for his precious people, Tsunade stated and grinned afterwards. The only difference is that the Gaki inherited his mother's temper and take no shit from anyone attitude. As she lead Shizun to the room where Tantan was sleeping the brunette had a few doubts in her mind. Tsunade-sama do you think Naruto-kun will be able to master his version of the Rasengan in less than a week? She asked as she sat on the bed while Tsunade thought about it but then smiled. Personally I think he will I mean he did master the Rasengan when he was training for the Chunin exams. Jiraiya told me how he beat a prodigy from the Hyuga clan without even trying and then he beat the Jinchuriki for the Aichibi no Tanuki without using his roommate's chakra or power for that matter. Tsunade said being proud that her clan still kept up their rep as the most powerful even if she and Naruto were the only ones left. So what are you gonna do about Orochimaru and Kabuto's offer? Shizun asks, Oh don't worry I already have an answer for that snake. She replied with a vicious smile on her face. Final day, morning, Naruto was sprawled out on the bed snoring and scratching his chest dreaming about Mei serving him ramen in a skimpy bikini and that was when Shizun barged in the room panting and Naruto instantly jumped up with a Hiraishin kunai in his grasp but saw Shizun panting and lowered his stance. Hey Shizun-chan what's up? And why are you exhausted? Shizun managed to catch her breath and spoke up. Tsunade-sama. SH she's gone. She went back to the castle to confront Orochimaru and his second in command, she cried which caused Naruto's eyes to widen, what? Where the hell is Urasenin? He asked and ran to grab his jacket, blades, and weapons. He went on ahead to catch up with her. He told me to come and get you. She explained while he finally managed to put his last on Bubut on. Come on then. Let's hurry up and catch up with the pervert. He said as he ran towards the balcony with Shizun behind them and they leapt out of the window. Jiraiya was currently making his way towards the castle and he turns his head to see Naruto and Shizun catch up with him. Glad you two could catch up. Naruto do you still have a good scent on Tsunade? He asked and got a nod from the blonde. Yeah she's close along with the heavy and someone else whose scent is kind of familiar, Naruto stated. Do you think Tsunade-sama accepted Orochimaru's offer Jiraiya-sama? Shizun asked in a worried tone while the Toad Sage seemed skeptic. I hope not Shizun otherwise I'll have no other choice but to kill her. He answered grimly and prayed he didn't have to do that while the brunette's eyes widened in shock and she looked down hoping it didn't have to come to that. Hey you two don't doubt her yet? Naruto called out getting their attention. Tsunade Obachan may be a heavy drinker and a terrible gambler but to join forces with the boy chaser? I bet you she'd rather kiss her Okyofu than even accept his offer. He reasoned. Jiraiya twitched at the jab but kept his expression the same and if you're wrong Gaki. That was when Naruto remained quiet for a while and then spoke up. I'll beat her near an inch of her life, remove whatever sake's still left in her system and drag her ass back to Konoha by her ankles, he said cracking his knuckles. DCH. You are her nephew alright. Now let's pick up the pace. I think I saw an explosion near the location of the castle. He ordered and they sped up. Meanwhile, Tsunade was panning a little and was trying to bash Orochimaru and Kabuto's brains inside their skulls. Knowing that the small area was a disadvantage to them, Kabuto made a suggestion to move to a more suitable location. Orochimaru agreed, and let his right-hand man lead him to a large clearing. It seems that Tsunade Haim is out of breath, it might be a good time to put it to use, Orochimaru said. Kabuto took out a soldier pill and ate it as he said, although Taijutsu is not actually my forte. Then he did a few hand signs and his forearms glowed blue. Chakra Mesu no Jutsu, he said making the slug Sanin's eyes widen, so he knows medical Jutsu. Great. Tsunade thought. The med nin suddenly disappears and her eyes widened as Kabuto's hand exploded from the ground beneath her feet. She jumped into the air and slammed her fist quickly into the ground, but Kabuto managed to evade the deadly strike. Large chunks of stone surrounded the two medical ninjas and Tsunade looked to see a large stone by her foot and she kicks it at Kabuto. His kneeling form disappears from the stone's deadly path and he was now behind her in an instant while she stayed in mid-air. Kabuto tapped her bicep and abdomen only to leave Tsunade with an opening as she touched down on the ground. She slammed her shoulder into Kabuto's chest, making him slide back a few inches from her while she winced in pain. Ouch! Tsunade says inspecting her arm. Damn, he cut my muscles. She thought to herself and glared at the smirking spy. That's right, I cut your bicep and abdomen muscles so that super strength trait of yours will not be a nuisance to me anymore, he stated with his arms still glowing. Chakra scalpels? But if you have that, then why would you cut my muscles? 
Why aren't you aiming from my arteries? Tsunade asked confused. Kabuto smirks and tilts his glasses up. Although my skills in the medical field are excellent, but in the midst of a battle I am not that accurate to aim for your arteries or main organs, but if I aim at your neck, it shouldn't be a problem. As he said this statement, he moved toward Tsunade. Tsunade who thought that he was aiming at the neck, made an attempt to block it, but Kabuto performed a faint attack and aimed at her chest instead. Damn you, cough, you hit my lung, cough, I can barely breathe. Tsunade coughed. He isn't an ordinary madman. His speed and strength exceed my own even in my prime. Kabuto shifted his glasses. It would be a bother if you were to die so I won't aim for your neck, but after that blow, you shouldn't be able to move around. He explained but to his surprise Tsunade struck him in the neck sending an electric jolt through his invertebrate. Damn it! I didn't hit her lungs at all, he stated and tried to get back on his feet, but something was wrong with his body functions. What the wham! Tsunade lands a punch across his face and send him sprawling to the ground before he could figure out what was happening to his body. This, this isn't caused by my muscles, it's caused by my nervous system. I see that you seem to realize your problem. I converted my chakra into electricity and transferred it throughout your body, Tsunade said with a smirk on her face. Orochimaru had a smile on his face while he watched the fight. I see, the nervous system runs on electricity, but Tsunade disrupted the initial flow by sending more electricity through it. Now the signals in Kabuto's body is sending to the brain cerebellum is emitting so many signals that it can't distinguish them all at once. Tsunade took advantage of the situation by healing herself while Kabuto knelt there trying to figure how to reoperate his body. Okay, if I moved my right hand, my left leg moves. If I move my left foot, my right shoulder moves. In a matter of moments, Kabuto was able to figure out how to move 60% of his body. Don't think that your level of power, can defeat me, Kabuto shouted as he stood back up. Much to Tsunade's surprise. What? He figured out how to control his body already? She asked bewildered at the fact that this kid managed to get his body functions back up. You are afraid of blood, right? Kabuto asks with a maniacal gleam in his eye. I think I'll show you some now and then scatter enough of it until you feel like you're at the brink of death, he said pulling out a kunai and charging at Tsunade who was still trying to heal herself. Kabuto raised his blade up and tried to bring it down on her chest until a foot planted itself on the side of Kabuto's head and sent him flying backwards and towards a surprised Orochimaru and landed in between them. Tsunade looked up at her savior and saw that it was her nephew. And Naruto? She asks while the blonde turned his head and grins at her. Revealing his canines. Hey Obachan. Why didn't you invite me to the rumble? You're not the only one who likes a good fight now and then. He states while Jiraiya and Shizun appeared in between her as well. Orochimaru frown and unfolds his arms. Why am I not surprised? If it isn't Jiraiya. He hisses while the sage smirks. Long time no see Orochi team, he said. Tsunade took this opportunity to charge at Kabuto with her fist cocked back and ready to knock his head off. That was until Kabuto split his palm open and sprayed blood on her face making her body freeze up. Be blood, she said shivering. Finally my body can fully function, he said with glee and punched Tsunade right in the jaw and sent her flying backwards only for Naruto to catch her. Tsunade-sama, Shizun cried out while Naruto gently set her down while she shivered. She hasn't gotten over it yet. Damn it. Naruto thought and set his gaze on a smug looking Kabuto. You're gonna wish you hadn't done that traitor. Naruto growled out cracking his knuckles. Kabuto on the other hand scoffed and remained smug. Oh? And what are you gonna do Naruto-kun? From my stats you were dubbed as a no-name loser in the ranks and compared to Sasuke-kun you're nothing, he stated but that was when Naruto fired a gust of wind at Kabuto with a flick of his wrist and Kabuto's eyes widen. When the gust died down, Kabuto felt a sharp pain on his left cheek and chest. His cheek sliced open and a red smear appeared across his chest. Kabuto rubbed his cheek, looked at the blood on his hand and back at Naruto who had a vicious grin on her face. Sasuke's got nothing on me especially since I beat last year's Rookie of the Year in the vessel for the Aichibi no Tanuki without using Kyuubi's power. Matter of fact, I barely broke sweat and if that faggot had faced Gara, he'd be nothing but a smear on the wall you butt humping bitch. Naruto replied. Kabuto suddenly charges at Naruto intending on taking him out but he suddenly hunched over coughing up blood due to the fact that Naruto was crouching down with his fist buried into his gut and took a few steps back. Before he could retaliate Naruto uppercuts him in the jaw and send him sprawling back in front of Orochimaru, Naruto stands back up and cracks his neck and knuckles. Hey Orochi Yuk, he said making Jiraiya snort while the heavy sneers at the Namikaze. Tell your bitch to get back up on his feet before I die of boredom. Kabuto rubs his jaw and glares at Naruto while pulling out a blood pill and swallowing it. You're gonna wish you hadn't done that you brat. 
Kabuto snarled out while Naruto got into a battle stance and did a come on gesture with his hand. Bring it on bitch. I'm gonna beating your ass into the ground for what you did to my aunt earlier, Naruto said which made their eyes widen. He was Tsunade's nephew. You're related to Tsunade? Kabuto asks in shock while Naruto grinned. Yep into the show and I daim Hokage's as well as the Yondame Hokage aka the Kier Senko. Minato Nami Kaze. Naruto says with a huge grin on his face making the two's eyes widen and remain silent. That was when Kabuto yelled. Impossible. There's no way weakling like you is related to the Senju clan especially to the legendary Yellow Flash. Jiraiya on the other hand chuckles. He's not lying Brad and as for being a weakling. Naruto I don't think you hit Kabuto hard enough to prove your point to him, he said. You're right. Next time I'll crush his skull, Naruto says flaring his chakra. And scatter his ashes into the wind, he said as his eyes became as cold as ice. Enough of this. Orochimaru snarled out. He bit his thumb and smeared it across his snake tattoo and slammed it into the ground. Kushio Snojutsu, summoning technique, in a puff of smoke a two-headed snake appeared and hissed at the four shinobi. It then lunged at the two after Orochimaru and Kabuto leapt on the other hand. Shit. Scatter. Jiraiya screamed. Shizun grabbed Tsunade and they leapt away while the snake slammed into the ground, causing the ground to shake and large rock debris to fly. Kabuto. You deal with Tsunade's apprentice and Naruto. I'll take care of my buffoon of a teammate. He ordered. Kabuto nods and leaps away jumping from rock to rock locking onto Shizun and a still frozen Tsunade. He then appears in front of a surprised Shizun and strikes her directly into the face making her cry out and be sent descending towards the ground head first with Tsunade. That was until Naruto appeared and caught them both and landed back on the ground. He growls at Kabuto and sucks air into his mouth. Futon, Shinkutama, wind release, vacuum bullets. Naruto exhales and fires a gust of wind and a series of small wind bullets. The gust of wind hits Kabuto and the mid nin blew back a little but his eyes widen when he sees the invisible wind bullets descend towards him. Damn it! He says and shields his body but hissing in pain when the bullets cut, and pierce his arms, legs and torso while the speed and force of the wind increased and he is sent moving farther from them. Naruto stops the jutsu and does another series of hand seals and slams them on the ground. Doten, Ryusi Kyodan, Earth Release rising platform that was when a large round platform of earth formed under the three and it shoots up and stops 20 feet. See if you can snap her out of her hermophobia Shizun-chan. I'm gonna stop that snake from descending. He says while pumping chakra into his feet when he has enough he blasts himself into the air and performs another series of hand seals. After that his chest expands and his cheeks bulge. Yotan, Yugen Numa, Lava Release, Lava Lake. Naruto regurgitates a large glob of lava from his mouth and the molten substance hits the ground and rushes towards the snake. Kabuto managed to land on the ground and heal his injuries but then he looks up and his eyes widen when a large wave of lava descends towards him. Oh shit I can't be hit by that. He jumps away when the lava hits his current location and he lands on a boulder. He looks up to see Naruto releasing lava out of his mouth and he gaps at him. How can he use Yotan Jutsu? He asks himself and wipes the sweat of his head due to the heat the lava was releasing. Man if the heat is this dense then I better not get touched by the molten substance. He says and looks around trying to find a way to get to Tsunade but he smirks when he sees a trail of boulder. Meanwhile on top of the snake. Two blurs were seen clashing simultaneously on top of the snake for a while until they appeared staring each other down. Do you honestly think you can defeat me Jiraiya? You were the weakest of the three back then and you still are. The traitor taunted while the Toad Sage smirks. You're so full of it. Just like the Uchiha brat who thinks he's unstoppable because of his bloodline, he said and that was when Orochimaru launched three poisonous snakes from his sleeves and they descended towards Jiraiya who evades them and in a burst of speed vanishes and palm strikes Orochimaru in the chest hard enough to send him flying backwards. You're gonna have to do better than that Orochi-chan. Jiraiya drawled out until he was bite in the jugular by an extra snake. Orochimaru landed and skidded backwards smirking but then he frowned when Jiraiya turned into mud. His eyes widened and before he could react, a fist smashed itself into Orochimaru's jaw and sent him tumbling backwards. Like I said. Jiraiya lands back on the ground with a serious expression on his face. You're gonna have to do better that Orochimaru, said Snake Summoner gets back on his feet shaking the cobwebs out of his head and spitting out blood and glaring at Jiraiya. Before he could react the two-headed snake cries out in pain and shakes violently due to the fact that he was slowly being consumed by lava. The two Sanin keep their grip on the squirming reptile. Orochimaru looks down and his eyes widen when he sees lava on the ground but was even more surprised when he saw Naruto spewing lava from his mouth. How is that boy using Yotan? Only the Terumi clan was capable of doing that. He states glaring at Jiraiya who smirks. 
No he's not a Terumi you idiot he's a Senju and they possessed a bloodline that allowed them to combine more than two elements to create a sub-element. Naruto can use that and two more sub-elements but I'm gonna let that be a surprise, he said while the snake growled. Naruto lands on top of one of the thrashing snake's heads and struggles to hold on. Stop thrashing you legless lizard. Naruto shouted, pulling out the Ryukin and stabbing in the head. Said snake only thrashes more violently which forces Naruto to be flung off the snake and ascend into the air. He hears Shizune cry out in pain and looks down to see the Kunoichi be struck in the chest and then get knocked out. His eyes flashed in anger when he saw the bastard taunt and brutally attack his aunt. Naruto remembered that he placed a Hiroshin seal on Kabuto when he punched him in the torso earlier and does a small series of hand seals. Kabuto on the other hand cocked his fist backwards and sends it forward ready to bash her skull in until a flash of yellow appeared in front of him and hissed collided with something but it wasn't Tsunade. Kabuto's eyes widen when he sees Naruto appear in front of him out of nowhere with his fist connected to Naruto's jaw but what was shocking was that Naruto didn't seem faced by the punch and said blonde set his piercing gaze onto the traitor. H how did you he stammers out but didn't get to finish because Naruto uses a chakra enhanced punch and sends him flying off the platform and hitting the ground hard leaving an imprint of his body on the ground. Tsunade just remained in her frozen position staring at Naruto. And Naruto. Was all she could say right now. Stay here Obachan and look out for Shizune. I'll deal with the trash, he said and Shun shines off the platform he made and lands onto the ground, making his way towards Kabuto who was getting up and clutching his broken ribs while blood seeped from his mouth. I'm gonna enjoy pounding your ass into the ground traitor, Naruto said slowly cracking his knuckles. Kabuto smirks as his ribs fully healed and wipes the blood from his mouth. So my assumptions were wrong about you. But it doesn't matter anyway. You may have been strong enough to beat Neji and the Gar character but I'm on a whole different level. If anything I am on par with Kakashi Hitake, he said smugly. Naruto stood there for a moment and then busted out laughing. Kabuto seethed at the fact that Naruto was laughing at him. What's so funny you brat, Kabuto yelled while Naruto continued to laugh but calmed down and wiped a fake tear from his face. You think I should be afraid of you just because you're on par with that loser of a Jonin? Oh I am so petrified please don't hurt me Kabuto. Naruto said mockingly acting like he was afraid of Kabuto who was getting pissed. Naruto suddenly regained his posture and spoke up. Let me tell you a little secret Kabuto. During those two matches I wasn't even showing a fraction of my real strength. He states while Kabuto narrows his eyes. You're bluffing. He growled out while Naruto shook his head. I don't bluff team especially to some fruitcake who's butt buddies with a gender-bending pedophile who has an unhealthy infatuation with little boys. Naruto said and then taps his chin with his index finger and looks up at the sky. But then again you're probably the closest thing to pussy Oro Yuke would get since no female in their right mind would even touch him, he stated. Kabuto on the other hand was seeing red and he was sending murderous intent at Naruto. I'm gonna make your death slow and painful you little shit. The med nin snarled out and his chakra no mesa flared up. Naruto did a gesture that said bring it on. Kabuto shot forward in a burst of speed and swung at Naruto's head. When his scalpel cut through Naruto, the blind faded away which caused Kabuto's eyes to widen. An afterimage? Kabuto asks himself but then he cried out in pain while blood shot out, across from his back and he stumbled back. Naruto was behind him smirking with his right arm in a slashing motion and his index and middle finger were extended out while his arm glowed light blue. You're slow team, is that because you gave the heavy a quickie before you went to meet up with my aunt? Naruto taunted while the chakra from his hand grew into an arm blade and extended a little. Kabuto lets out a frustrating yell and unleashed a series of precise slashes and thrusts at Naruto who managed to black everyone with his wind chakra coated arm. How can you be this powerful? You were dubbed the dead last in our generation yet you fight like a seasoned shinobi. Kabuto made an attempt to cross slash him in the chest but Naruto twists his body and slashes him in the side and right leg while blood spurts out and then slashes him twice across the back making Kabuto cry out in pain and frustration. Damn you! He yells and leaps away from him trying to let his injuries heal. Ah ah ah! Naruto said and once again vanishes and kicks Kabuto in the solar plexus making him spit up. No resting for you Kabuchan. Naruto says and stabs him right in the torso with the extended blade. Kabuto froze for a second from the pain he was felling and Naruto pulls it out and roundhouse kicks him in the temple, making Kabuto flop and bounce on the ground like a rag doll. Man this is boring. For being Orochi team's right hand man you're weak as hell. Naruto said while the chakra disappears from his arm. Kabuto slowly gets up while blood drips from his body and he pants a little. You think you've won? He said and saw the grin appear on Naruto's face. Said blonde gets into a horse stance, and claps his hands together in a prayer position. That was when wooden tendrils shot out of the ground and around Kabuto making the man's eyes in disbelief. 
Before he could do anything he was ensnared by the tendrils which started to squeeze him slowly. And no way! Kabuto mutters but groans when the bindings became even tighter. Tsunade's eyes widened so much that they looked like they were gonna fall out of her sockets. M. Makuten? He can use Makuten? She stammers out. Jiraiya and Orochimaru stopped their fight and the heavies looked like he was gonna have a heart attack. Th this can't be. That brat can use the shot I'm's Makuten power? How? Not even Tsunade or her brother could recreate it. The snake cried and was inwardly seething at the fact that he couldn't make the boy his vessel thanks to the QB. Yeah it's pretty awesome huh? He first discovered it when he turned 5 and with Sensei's help Naruto was able to learn how to use it properly. Jiraiya states. And that is what separates Naruto from your golden boy of Anuchiha. Naruto gained his skill through blood sweat, tears and pain while that weakling had everything given to him. He didn't beat Neji and Gaara through luck or with his bloodlines. He used his actual skill just like his ancestors and parents did and that is what separates him from the prodigies, he said and they once again engage in battle. Kabuto on the other hand was struggling to get out of the jutsu while Naruto shook his head. Dude the more you struggle the more pain you're gonna be in. Seriously how is it that you're on par with the Cyclops again? Oh well it doesn't matter. He stretches his right hand out and forms the Rasengan, spiral sphere, in his hand but it didn't stop there. High pitch sound echoes throughout the area and that was when four spinning curved blades formed around the Rasengan and extended until it was the size of a windmill shuriken. Kabuto's mouth dropped when he saw the jutsu while Naruto's grin grew. Kabuto let me introduce you to my version of my old man's technique the Rasengan. But this version is even deadlier than the original. And the best part about this one. Is that I can throw it, he said causing Kabuto to curse and squirm in the wooden bindings. I wonder just how much damage this technique can do to the human body? Care to be my guinea pig for this experiment? Naruto asks sadistically. Fuck you Nami Kaze, Kabuto roared but cries out when his shoulders were dislocated. Sorry bro but I don't swing that way. I prefer females. Now say hello to the Razen Shuriken, Spiral Shuriken. Naruto brings his arm back and then throws the techniques making the Sanin and Kabuto's eyes widen. Holy shit he threw it. Jiraiya screamed in amazement. Naruto just accomplished one of his dad's goals. They all watched as the screeching attack made its way towards Kabuto. No. No. Damn you Naruto erg. He cursed but cried out in sheer agony as the technique grinded into his body and tore him apart at the same time. That was when a spherical vortex made of chakra slowly surrounded Kabuto's body and expanded creating a large crater for a few seconds and then it explodes making everyone shield their eyes from the move. When the dust cleared they all saw a 20 foot wide crater and in the middle of it was a bloody and shredded Kabuto laying face down and twitching on pain. Naruto let out a sigh of relief and looked down in the crater and grinned. It official, I am awesome. How'd you like my new technique cock blocker? Naruto said while doing a victory sigh. Tsunade on the other hand remained speechless and for the first time in her life a true smile formed on her face. He did it. He won. She thought. Chapter 5, Ninja Battle Royale Part 2 Naruto leapt back on the rock platform where Tsunade and an unconscious Shizune were and walked over to the motionless brunette and kneels down. His hands started to glow green and the green chakra formed over Shizune's body. The injuries on her body started to heal up and then the glow died down. Shizune groans and slowly opens her eyes only to see Naruto's smiling face. Naruto-kun? She asks and the blonde nods. Glad to see you're okay Shizune-chan. Naruto says while she sits up and shakes her head a little. The last thing I remember is that Kabuto character striking me in the chest and knocking me out, she said. Yeah he did but you won't have to worry about him because right now he's taking a dirt nap but not a permanent one. He replied with a grin on his face but then he felt a hand on his shoulder. He turned his head to see a smiling Tsunade she then removes the necklace from her neck and puts it on Naruto's. I believe this now belongs to you now Naruto. Congratulations, you won the bet, she said and he smiles back at his aunt. With Jiraiya and Orochimaru, Orochimaru was furious. No, he was beyond furious because the so-called former dead last of the Leaf Village now last heir of the Namikaze and Senju clan had beaten his right hand man with an improved version of his most hated enemy's jutsu the Rasengan. Man oh man if only you could have seen the look on your face heavy. I can't believe the Gaki managed to make an improved version of the Rasengan and throw it, and in a week no less. Guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree ha huh, heavy? Jiraiya states while the heavy's frown grew. This boy is starting to become a nuisance. First he ruins my invasion plans now he beats Kabuto-kun with a more powerful version of the Yondaimiz technique. Not to mention he is the last male of the Senju clan with the powers of the Makuten as well as Yotan Jutsu in his arsenal and not once did he use Kyuubi's power. If he continues to grow at this rate he'll become a huge problem for me in the future so he must die. Right now. 
That was when Orochimaru leapt off the dying snake and descends towards the others. Jiraiya curses and leaps after the criminal. Oh no you don't, Orochimaru suddenly twists his body in mid-air looking back at Jiraiya and launches his long purple tongue at the Gamasanin. Jiraiya manages to evade the tongue but it wraps around the man's ankle. What the devil? Jiraiya didn't get to finish because he is jerked backwards by the tongue and slammed into the hard ground, Orochimaru adverts his body towards Tsunade, Shizun, and Naruto with the blade of Kusanagi extending out of his mouth and aimed right for Tsunade's back. Shizun saw this and gasped. Tsunade-sama looked out, Shizun cried out. Tsunade turned around and her eyes widened as she saw Orochimaru head right for her with a maniacal look on his face and his blade aimed for her heart. Clang! Orochimaru's eyes widen when he sees his prized weapon being blocked with the flat side of Naruto's Ryuken. You really are a stupid fool Oroyuk, Naruto said and started to channel lightning chakra from his hand and into the blade. Raiten, Raikonagashi, lightning release, lightning current. Currents of yellow lightning shot out of the blade and struck Orochimaru all over his body. The heavy cries out in pain as he is electrocuted and burned by the jutsu and starts to stumble backwards. Naruto ended the jutsu and took this opportunity to strike the white snake dead in the face with his fist and sent him flying off the rock platform and into the ground. Orochimaru lands back on his feet, skids back a little, and retracts his blade and grits his teeth in pain and slowly gets back up as static jolts around his body. Damn it! I forgot about his lightning affinity when he used it against the vessel for the Ichibi. He growled out. But that means he also possesses a water affinity meaning he can use all five elements. But that's not possible. The only way he can gain all five is if he had the Rinnegan. Jiraiya groans and gets back on his feet rubbing his head only to see Orochimaru struggling to get up. Man I can't believe he got me with that disgusting move. Now I'm gonna have to use disinfectant to get that slime off my ankle. Kami knows where the thing has been. Jiraiya mumbles. Kabuto, a torn, bloodied, and slowly healing Kabuto was slowly crawling out of the crater with just one arm. Damn it that jutsu has slowed down my healing factor. I can barely crawl out of this crater without being in so much pain. It was a good thing I put a strong layer of chakra around my body otherwise the technique would have destroyed me. He said and winced in pain as his torn left arm throbbed and continued to crawl up the crater. Meanwhile, Naruto was about to advance on Orochimaru with his blade drawn only to have Tsunade step in front of him. Obachan? Naruto asked and said Senja looked back at him and smiled. I'll take it from here Naruto. You've done your fair share in handling the bastard's right hand man so now it's my turn to deliver some justice on this bastard. She says. Naruto blinks at her and grins. Sure thing but first. Naruto placed a glowing green hand on her and her previous injuries were gone instantly and her body was rejuvenated. There. Now you don't have to worry about facing the team with only half of your strength and show him what real ninja is capable of doing. He says and she grins back. Thanks and once we're done with him we can celebrate with a big bottle of sake, she said and that was when Jiraiya appears. Mind if I join in the battle? The sage asks. The more the merrier. It's time to show this traitor what real ninja are capable of. Tsunade answers and Orochimaru was cursing inwardly. Oh Orochimaru-sama, said man heard the weakened and strained voice and turned his head to see a bloody Kabuto crawl out of the crater. Naruto on the other hand was surprised that the traitor survived his new technique. Well would you look at that. The bastard survived. Oh well I'll just have to be sure he's dead for real this time. Naruto says. Orochimaru leaps away and lands near a weak in Kabuto. How long will it take for you to heal? He asked his second in command. Another couple of hours to say the least. I'm sorry but that attack did a lot of internal damage to my body, Kabuto said as he coughed up a little blood in the snake frowned. I see. Now I have no other choice, he said and rolled up his sleeve, revealing the snake tattoo. The three leaf ninja saw this and their eyes widen. Great he's gonna summon Manda. You ready Tsunade? Jiraiya asks and she nods. I was born ready. After today there will be one less Sanin in the ninja world, she said and that was when Naruto spoke up. Mind if I join? There's a friend of mine who has an overdue reunion with that legless swarm. Naruto asked and Jiraiya grins. You sure you got the energy to do a summon Naruto? He asked and Naruto chuckles. More than enough. This is a once in a lifetime fight and I want to be in and remember for the rest of my life. The blonde replied and Jiraiya chuckles and nods. Very well. He says and bites his thumb as does Tsunade. Shizun get as far away as you can. She ordered and the brunette nods and leaps away. Naruto rolls up his sleeve and reveals the Hydra tattoo getting a raised eyebrow from Tsunade who shrugs and wipes her blood on her palm as does Jiraiya while Naruto wipes his on the tattoo. The four go through a small series of hand seals and stop at the ram seal and slam their hands on the ground. Kushio Snojutsu, Summoning Technique. The four called and an explosion of smoke engulfs the area. 
when it clears game Abunta, Katsuya, Manda, and Yamada, in her dragon form, appear in the area with their summoners standing on their heads. As soon as Yamada no Orochi was seen Tsunade, and Shizun's eyes bugged out of their heads while Orochimaru and Kabuto had looks of surprise and disbelief on their faces. H. Holy Shizun sputters out as she shakily points at the eight-tailed and eight-headed Hydra. And no way! Gakiir the summoner of Tsunade also sputters while Naruto had a huge grin on his face. Jiraiya was wishing he had a camera for this. This can't be. That's the Yamada no Orochi. How in the world did a brat like you gain the summons of the legendary Akui clan? Orochimaru practically screamed since he's been searching all his life for the contract and was pissed beyond belief that some kid had it in his possession. That's for me to know and you to never find out. Besides, Shiro Chan wouldn't even let a vile creature like you be the summoner of her kin and would more than likely kill you and judging by the look in her eyes she's ready to tear you and the overgrown worm you're riding on apart, Naruto said. You, Manda hissed out while seven of Shiroi's heads hiss and snarl at the traitor. Hello traitor. You've got some nerve making your own contract to give to that leech on your head especially after I banished you and your kin from my tribe, she said releasing murderous intent on the snake who sneered at his former leader. As if I care. I'm free from your control and your rule wench and now I'll finally have the pleasure of killing you and ending your reign as the ruler of the reptiles, Manda stated and Shiroi's main head shot red fire out of her nostrils. You pompous fool. Have you forgotten who you're talking to? You're nowhere even close to being my equal hatchling, she said and slammed one of her tails on the ground creating a small earthquake. I'm gonna rip you apart and give your carcass to the crocodiles. We'll see about that. Orochimaru no sacrifices are required for this. She's more than enough. He said as he reared his head back while Game Abunda slowly drew his tanto. You were always the arrogant one Manda. Yamada-sama allow me to assist you in dealing with this heavy. The chief toad asked. I too would like to help you Empress of the Hydras. Katsuya request and Shiroi nods. But of course. The more the merrier. She says. Katsuya decided to start the battle off first. Zeshinenzen. Acid slime. Acid spewed from her mouth and Manda slithered around to avoid it. He was able to constrict himself around Katsuyu and opened his mouth to bite the slug and inject his deadly venom, but Game Abunta joined the fray and thrust his blade forward at Manda's head only for the snake to avoid it and clamp down on the toad's blade. One of Shiroi's heads opens its mouth and red fire slowly appears and grows. Katan, Ikuhai, fire release, blazing fire. A stream of red hot fire shoots out of her mouth and descends towards Manda. Said Snake sees the attack from the corner of his eye and curses as he releases his hold on Bunda's Dando and Katsuya. He lets out a hiss as he heads straight for Shiroi who stops unleashing the fire attack. Naruto on the other hand starts to work on a series of hand seals. Shiroi-chan, lift your head up so that I can get a better view of the ground. The blonde says, hi. The Hydra Queen replies and does so. Great, now to slow that team down. Yotan, Diogen Numa. Naruto stops making hand seals and his cheeks bulge out. He suddenly releases a large stream of magma that lands on the field and slowly spreads across the ground. Manda sees the lake of lava and suddenly skids to a stop before he could come close to touching the molten rock. Damn that blonde urchin. Manda growled out. Now's our chance Bunta, gov me some oil. Jiraiya says as he does a series of hand seals. Got it. The chief dode says. His stomach bulges and afterwards. So does his cheeks and then he shoots out a jet of oil. Katan, Gamma Uendan, fire release, toad oil flame bullet. Jiraiya releases a flame blast. When it makes contact with the oil, it turned into a high-powered flamethrower that descends towards Manda. Before the snake could react, his body was engulfed by a torrent of flames. After a while the technique starts to recede and the three were wondering if the technique worked. Did he get him? Tsunade asked as the smoke started to clear. Why and it did. They saw the scorching form of Manda but to their surprise the body slowly crumbled. Damn it. He shed his skin, Naruto said as he looked around as did Shiroi. Indeed. Out of all the snakes Manda was the slickest. Keep your eyes and ears focused Naruto-kun. The Hydra Queen advised while the blonde nodded. The ground started to shake and Naruto's eyes widened. Crap. He's underneath us, he said. Shiroi's eye did the same and a purple blur bursts from the ground and heads right for her. Shiroi uses her clawed hand to grab the blur but to her surprise it was just the tail. The burst once again and Naruto turned his head to see Manda appear behind Shiroi with his mouth open wide. Gotcha, he cried as he ascends at the two. The white hydra on the other hand smirks and before Manda knew it, two of her tails wrapped around his mouth and closed it shut. Please. As if a move like that would work on me, she stated and flung him over her and slammed him into the magma lake and he let out a high pitched hiss. Before he had the chance to free himself. The blade of a giant Tonto slams into the top of his mouth and pins him to the ground. Keep it shut, 
Tsunade yelled since she was the one who used Buna's Tindo to pin him to the ground. Nice move Haim. Jiraiya calls out and the slug summoner gives him a thumbs up. Orochimaru on the other hand growls in frustration because the battle is not turning out the way he wants it to. This is starting to become troubling for me. I have to at least take one of them out. He thought and had his sights on Tsunade. He then launches his tongue at the unaware female Sanin and set appendage wraps tightly around her neck. A strangled gasp escapes from her mouth and she struggles to free herself. Let's see you get out of this one Tsunade Haim. Orochimaru says as he increases the pressure. A spinning demon windmill shuriken makes it way towards the appendage and instantly severs it, freeing Tsunade who pulls the limping appendage off of her and rubs her neck. Orochimaru's eyes widen in shock when his tongue was cut in half and instantly retracts whatever part of his tongue he had left into his mouth. Naruto appears behind Orochimaru with yokai covering his arms he extends them outwards, creating ethereal yokai arms that ensnare Orochimaru's arms and said Sanin's eyes widen in surprise. Hey Orochi-chan! Naruto calls out getting the man's attention. Here's a known fact about Jinchuriki and their partners. When sealed in their hosts, the vessel gains immunity to their potent chakra as well as the ability to use a certain amount. But it has another effect. One that is bad for those who make contact with the chakra. Naruto says while the yokai slowly squeezes the man's arms and they start to sizzle. You see when the skin is exposed to a baiju's raw and potent chakra it acts like a poison and depending on how much yokai the host conjures, it eats away at whatever it touches like your arms for example. Naruto says and Orochimaru starts to grit his teeth in pain. Right now I'm pouring Kyuubi's chakra into your arms and destroying the cells, muscles, and even the bone. Orochimaru couldn't take the pain and howls in agony as the blonde adds more yokai into the man's arms. Said White Snake manages to rip his arms free from the ethereal arms and leap away, glaring dangerously at Naruto. Gah! Damn you, boy! All he didn't get to finish because a fist slammed into his jaw, courtesy of Tsunade Senju, and was sent flying off of Manda and hitting the ground hard. Kabuto, on the other hand, halfway recovers from the attack from not too long ago and leaps towards his master. Orochimaru slowly gets up and watches as his arms turn black and the skin flakes off. M my arms. Th they feel like they're on fire. He says and they limp down to his sides. That was when Naruto, Tsunade, and Jirai appeared in his line of sight and Kabuto appears next to his master clutching his stomach. Gur, Damn you all! Orochimaru, you suck as a summoner. Thanks to you, I can't eat solid food for a month thanks to this damn blade that has put a hole in my mouth. You better not summon me again unless it's to face that wench, he said setting his gaze on Shiroi. You couldn't beat me then and you can't beat me now weakling. Now get out of my sight before I uphold my end and turn you into Krokshaw. She snarled out and Manda let out an angry hiss and dispelled. Orochimaru-sama we should retreat while we can. I'm still recovering from that attack Naruto used on me and without your arms, you can't use any jutsu, Kabuto stated and the snake Sanin growled and glared at the three with all the hate he could muster. I can see that. Consider yourselves lucky especially you boy. You will regret crossing me and my ambitions and I will crush Kano into dust. He swore while Naruto had a feral grin on his face and his eyes were crimson. And I look forward to the day when I bring your head back as a trophy and mount it on your student's wall or oh you Naruto responded while the snake hissed and sank into the ground. Goodbye for now Namikaze. Next time I will kill you. Kabuto says and puffs away as do the summons. After a few minutes Naruto sighs. Well that was fun, he said and that was when Shizune appeared next to them. Yeah fun if you can call it that Mr. I love destruction and chaos. Jiraiya commented while Naruto snorts. Blame my roommate, she's a bad influence on me. Naruto replied while Q giggled in his mindscape. I love you too Naruto-kun. She says. Now then all that's left is to get our things in Tauntaun and head back to the village. Jiraiya states. Already? Come on now Kyofu we don't have to be back at Konoha for another week. In case you haven't noticed, I haven't got a chance to spend a lot of time with my aunt. Naruto said. Jirai groaned and was about to speak up until Tsunade smirks and wraps an arm around her nephew. Don't be such a wet blanket you pervert. Let's go have some fun for a change. I could use a new poker partner, she said with a grin while Shizune sighs. Fine, but only for three days I don't need another verbal lashing from the old monkey. Jirai commented. Got it. Oh and Obachan you owe me 14 years worth of birthday and Christmas presents, he said and she fell over while he walked away with his hands in his pocket grinning. Jiraiya on the other hand laughs his ass off while Tsunade gets up and mumbles about greedy ass nephews and the two take off. Chapter 7, Back to Konoha. Konoha Gakur Hokage Tower. Hiruzen's office. Hiruzen was currently sitting in his office giving a nervous Kakashi Hitake a glare that would make even someone like Kurochimaru nervous as hell. Do you want to know the reason why you are here Kakashi Hitake? 
Sarutobi asked the man who shook his head. It's simple actually. You see I got a report from a certain visiting cage about how you blatantly neglected one of your students in the hospital when he asked you for help against a powerful opponent and you verbally insulted him and ridiculed him for his skills as a shinobi stating that he shouldn't even be a shinobi, he said in a tone that meant Kakashi was in deep shit. Not only that but you even had the nerve and gall to say the only reason he is even a shinobi in the first place is because I felt sorry for him. The god of shinobi released a burst of ki on the jown and who shivered in fear. Where do you? A ninja under my authority go off saying something like that when you know good and well that Naruto got his headband after stopping the traitor Mizuki from escaping Konoha with the forbidden scroll. He asked as the man looked away in shame while Haruzin sighs. I am very disappointed in you Kakashi. If there is one thing I don't tolerate is favoritism, negligence, and disrespecting a guest of our village especially a guest that is a cage. Do you have any idea how much trouble we could have gotten in for your stupidity? He growled out and Kakashi flinched. I'm sorry sir. Kakashi apologized. Yes I know you are especially with how fucked up your team is minus Naruto since he was the only one in your team to be promoted to the Chunin rank. Pretty impressive for the dead last of the academy right? Hiruzen replied while Kakashi remained silent. Hokage-sama if I may ask? How did Naruto get so strong in less than two months? And how was he able to use those elemental jutsu especially with his chakra control being so out of date? Kakashi asked Hiruzen who sighed inwardly. If you must know I had Jiraiya train Naruto and help him learn the things you failed to teach him in the past two months since you were too busy coddling the Uchiha brat and that boy's lack of discipline could have cost us to lose some important clients, Hiruzen said harshly which made the son of the White Fang cringe. But thanks to Naruto and his performance when he faced and beat not only the Hyuga prodigy of the branch house but also beat the Kaze Kage's son who might I add was the vessel for the Aichibi no Tanuki. Shukaku the clients we got have doubled and most of them have requested to have Naruto join in the high paying missions they are offering to Konoha. He finished. I see. So what is happening to team 7? Kakashi asked. Simple. Until I say otherwise or until my successor gets here, team 7 is on a 6 month probation period and will not be allowed to do missions outside the walls of Konoha and will have to do D ranked mission. As for you Kakashi I'm afraid I have no other choice but to cut your rank down to Tokubutsu Jonin. He said which made the man's eyes widened and was about to speak up only to have Haruzin raise a hand. Don't say anything. You will have a chance to regain your status once the probation is done but until then you'll be doing two shifts of guard duty each day and you are not allowed to read your book during this time, he said and was inwardly smirking as he saw the horrified look on Kakashi's face. And that's not all, you will also be assisting your students in these D ranks and train them properly meaning you will train Sakura and Sasuke equally or else you will be having a one-on-one -on -one session with Iviki and Anko for insubordination. He finished, yes sir. Is there anything else? Kakashi asked in a low tone, no and Kakashi, Minato and your father Sakumo would be very disappointed in you. I suggest you start waking up to reality and acting like a real ninja is supposed to and pray that Tsunade is in a forgiving mood due to the fact that you neglected her nephew's training and progress as a ninja," he said as Kakashi left the room but then his eyes widened and paled when he heard this as the door closed behind him. Tanzakugai Casino Tsunade had walked out of the casino with a grin so wide, that it looked like it would split her head in two and the reason why is because her nephew had practically cleaned the casino out and she was hugging a huge bag of money to her body and giggling like crazy. Shizun was right beside with bug eyes and her jaw hanging from the ground as was Tantan. Jiraiya on the other hand was patting aboard Naruto on the back saying how proud he was of his apprentice for being a gambling god. For those that had lost to Naruto were on their knees crying while looking at their empty wallets. Some of the richer folks nearly had heart attacks when Naruto cleaned them out in 5 games of blackjack and 21. I still can't believe that Naruto-kun won all that money, Shizun said with a stumped expression on her face. I never knew you played poker. She said while the blonde shrugged. Mei, Saruoji taught me how to play that in Shogi when I was 8 and I'd always win somehow when I play him in 21 but it was with Candy. He mentioned something about me having the luck of the fox on my side though I could never beat him in Shogi. The man may be old but he has an IQ that'll make the heavy cry. Naruto commented until he was glopped by a squealing Tsunade who was hugging him so tight that he turned purple and his bones started to crack. You've made me the happiest woman in the world my favorite nephew. She said as Naruto struggled to escape from her death hug. Oh Obachan. You're crushing my spine. He strained out but then she dropped him and hugged the money once again. I've never seen Tsunade sama so happy, Shizun said with a sweat drop on her face while Naruto got up and popped his back in place. Yeah. Remind me to steer clear of her grabbing range from now on. Naruto muttered rubbing his back painfully while Jiraiya snickered. After staying in Tanzakugai until the end of the week. The group left and was now traveling on a dirt road towards Konoha until the blonde stopped. 
Tsunade and Jiraiya saw this and stopped as well as did Shizun. Whoever you guys are come on out or I'll make you come out. Naruto called out and that was when four blurs landed onto the ground in front of them, revealing themselves to be Iwen in and from the looks of it they had their focus on Naruto. So the rumors are true. The Konoha no Kiyosenko, Konoha's yellow flash, does have an air, said a female who stepped forward. She had short, black hair and pupilless pink eyes. She wears what seems to be a long, red kimono with the sleeve on her right arm missing as well as the bottom left side of the kimono, the brownie wagakur flak jacket, fishnet tights and shorts over them. And you are? Naruto asked while the female narrowed her eyes at Naruto. My name is Kurotsu Chiatsuburo, the grand after of the Sandaime Tsuchika Dryadenbra no Anaki, Anaki of both scales, and I'm here to kill you, she said and instantly flung a kunai at the blonde's heart at speeds that surprised Naruto who dodged to the left. Kurotsuchi suddenly appeared in front of him swinging a kunai at his throat and another at the area where his kidneys were but Naruto reacted by grabbing both of her wrists and keeping them t-bay. Man she's fast, Naruto said impressed. The other Iwanin were about to interfere until Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Shizun appeared in front of them. Don't even think about it you brats, Jiraiya said releasing Kia on the now frightened ninja because they knew they were no match for Tusani and especially one that trained their most hated enemy. Just stand there and watch my nephew beat the stupidity out of the midget's granddaughter's ass, Tsunade said while they paled. And nephew? H he's essential? One male asked. Oh shit we're so screwed. The other one said. Kurotsuchi was gritting her teeth in frustration as she tried to use her strength to push her kunai forward but Naruto's strength was beyond hers at the moment. A smirk formed on Naruto's face and his bulged, confusing the kunoichi until he sprayed what looked like brownish green liquid in her face making her back away a yell in frustration trying to rub the substance off her face. Ugh. That was disgusting you bastard. She screamed. This coming from someone who takes dirt baths. How's about I wash you off? Naruto commented and did a few hand seals. Sutan, Mijarapa, water release, violent water wave. He shoots a fast stream of water at Kurotsuchi who cries out in surprise when she is hit by the blast and hits the ground hard. Water drips down her face while she looks up at Naruto with a growl escapes her lips. What? Now it'll be easier for you to get that excess dirt out of your hair, he said cheekily which caused a tick mark to form on the back of her head. Shut up, she yelled in anger, does a few hand seals and leaps into the air. Yotan, Sekagyo no Jutsu, Lava Release, Quicklime Congealing Technique. She spits a large quantity of quicklime from her mouth in the form of a substantial projectile that makes it way towards Naruto. Well she can use Yotan too? Well then I can play that game. Naruto says. Yotan Megamabakadon. Lava release, magma bomb. Naruto fires a large orb made of molten rock from his mouth which heads towards Kurotsuchi's attack and cancel each other out and lava splatters all over the ground. WH what the? You can use Yotan too? She asked astonished that a leaf nin, the Ondame's son no less can use it. That and more. Naruto replied and aimed his index and middle finger at her while sparks of lightning form around them. Raten, Bayakurai, lightning release, pale lightning. Naruto fires a beam of bluish-white lightning at the Iwa Kunoichi whose eyes widen at the speed it was going and barely dodges it as it grazed her shoulder making her wince in pain. Naruto appeared below her with a tri-pronged kunai drawn and before she could react, he plunges it into her stomach and her eyes widened in shock. The Iwa Nin watching gasped in fear as they saw their leader's granddaughter get killed. Kurotsuchi sama One of them called out while she stood there frozen but she smirks at Naruto who raised an eyebrow until he saw her dissolve into mud. Atsuchi Bunshine Earth clone? Then that means he didn't get to finish because earth spikes rose from the ground and impaled him in several areas of his body and he gasped in pain. Keikuso Naruto said while Kurotsuchi leapt out of a tree with a smirk on her face. You lose Namikaze, she said in triumph. Any last words before I finish you off? She asked as she pulled out a kunai and raised it. Naruto on the other hand coughed up blood and grins weakly. Boom! Was all Naruto said and glowed white. Kurotsuchi's eyes widened and cursed. Oh she she couldn't finish because Naruto exploded into smoke. A few seconds later Kurotsuchi leapt out of the smoke with burns on her skin and clothes and lands back on the ground panting a little. You're pretty quick, Naruto said crouching down on a tree twirling a tripronged kunai as she turned her attention towards him. Impossible, how did you substitute yourself without me sensing it? She asked while Naruto grinned. What can I say? I inherited my old man's speed though you are the first foreign nin aside from my fiancé to force me to move that fast especially since you're both Yotan users though her style is more adverse than yours. He commented while she scoffed. Well then she must not be that great. She never got to finish because a flash of silver shot past her and embedded into a tree and it happened to be a tri-pronged kunai knife. 
A cut formed on her cheek and a little blood dripped down her face. She wiped it off and looked up at Naruto whose gaze was now as cold as ice which nerved her a little. Rule number one Kurotsuchi chan Don't insult my fiancé because can kick your ass six ways to Sunday and will send you back to your old man in a matchbox, he said harshly. 2. Grow up. What happened back then was war and your people are just as responsible for killing Leaf Nin than my father was killing your leader's ninja and killing me will be bad for your village and do you know why? He asked while she remained silent, because not only am I the last Namikaze but I'm also the last Senju meaning that I am related to not just the Yondaime but the Shodai and Nidaim and also the future god I'm Hokaye's nephew so technically I'm related to four Hokaye's. He answered making her eyes widened in dread. So now do you understand? Killing me will get your village wiped off the face of the earth by my village and her allies so I'll do us both a favor and end this," he said as he appears in front of her without warning and with a Rasengan in his right hand reared back and slams it into her stomach, making her gasp out in pain and be sent flying towards her comrades and hitting the ground hard, losing consciousness. Don't worry she's alive. I held back enough power only to knock her out now please leave. I don't have the time nor patience to deal with what little grudge you have over my dad so do what I told her and grow up he said. The Iwa team glared at Naruto but then took their leader and leapt away into the forest until the leaf team couldn't even sense them. Naruto pulled the kunai out and put it away sighing. Well then shall we? I'm pretty sure you're ready to bust some heads when we get back Obachan. Naruto said grinning while Tsunade blinks but grins also at rubs her hands together in an evil fashion. Jiraiya and Shizune sweat drop when they see this. Ah oh boy, the village is gonna suffer some major collateral damage when she returns. Jirai mumbles while the brunette nodded. Hey Obachan I'll race you to the village gate. Naruto challenged while Tsunade grinned. You're on Gaki, she said and the last two Senju took off like rockets, leaving a dust trail behind Shizune and Jiraiya who were stumped. Where in Kamis do they get this energy? Size come on Shizune. Jiraiya says and they run off to join up with Tsunade and Naruto. As they made it into the gate and headed towards the tower they all noticed that the villagers and ninjas were wide-eyed when they saw Tsunade and Naruto. The ninja were giving Naruto nods of respect as they made their way towards the Hokage Tower. Hokage Tower, you ready? Naruto asked his aunt who cracked her knuckles. Is that a trick question? It's time to rip out the weeds that are sucking the life out my ancestor's legacy, she said as she made her way towards the doors and then kicked them away, revealing a shocked council. Sarutobi on the other hand was smiling warmly while Donzo was fuming that the Iwa nin he had one of his Rutanbu inform about Naruto's heritage failed to kill him and now that Tsunade was back in the village he had to be extra careful especially since his two main backers have been removed from their position thanks to Hiruzen Sarutobe. Ah Tsunade it's great to have you back in the village, Hiruzen said with Tsunade smiling back. Likewise Sensei and I'm pretty sure you'd love to retire again and hand the mantle to me correct? She asked getting a chuckle from the man. But before we get to that I need to know where those old buzzards Koharu and Homura are since they were the ones who told me that my nephew here was dead and were the ones as well as a certain group in this council responsible for how he was treated due to the fact that he contained the QB. She asked in a sweet yet dangerous tone that made the civilian members cower in fear. They're currently under house arrest until I say otherwise Tsunade since they along with a certain Warhawk were responsible for lying about the demise of the current Mizukage's future husband after the civil war was over in Kiri and falsified documents that I didn't approve of, he said and Tsunade raised an eyebrow at this. Current Mizukage? Future husband? Is there something I should know? She asked which caused Naruto and Jiraiya to start sweating bullets. Hiruzen saw this and an evil grin formed on his face. Oh? You don't know? I thought Naruto or Jiraiya would have told you once they found you? He asked while the two waved their hands and shook their hands frantically in the background screaming silent no's. Tsunade on the other hand blinked in confusion a couple of times. Tell me what? She asked while the two shook their fists violently at the old monkey whose grin grew. That your nephew is engaged to the god I'm Mizukage Mei Terumi. He answered making her eyes bug out while the master and apprentice slapped their foreheads. As well as the late Yondaime Kaze Kage's daughter Sabaku no Tomari who was given to Naruto by Suna as compensation for their attempted invasion with Orochimaru. He answered, say what? She yelled while the two made their way to an open window. Naruto. Jiraiya. You two have some explaining to do, she said as she turned her head and saw them make an attempt to leap out the window. And where do you two think you're going? She yelled which made them freeze in place. Run Kyofu, Naruto cried as he leapt out the window with Jiraiya behind him. Tsunade ran towards the window with tick marks on her head. Oi! You two come back here right now and explain yourselves, she yelled waving her fists at their retreating forms and then looked back at Hiruzen who sighs. Go ahead Tsunade but keep the damage to a minimum, Sarutobi said while a predatory grin formed on her face. No promises, she said cheekily and leapt after them. 
A few minutes later, two girly screams were heard begging for mercy while an enraged Tsunade was beating them senseless causing large sweat drops to appear behind the clan heads. At least things won't get boring with us three around, Tsume said to Hyashi who just nodded. Indeed, he said and a large crash was heard which made the ground under them shake. Hiruzen slammed his head on the desk and groaned. Why do I bother? He muttered out. Announcement? Unfortunately everyone the following scene of Tsunade beating her former teammate and nephew was so violent and graphic that I had to skip the scene and move on to another. I apologize for the inconvenience but the raiders would get me in trouble. Hospital. After Tsunade had beaten some sense out of Jiraiya Naruto and healed them, she, Naruto, and Shizun went to the hospital after she heard about one of the Jinan getting seriously injured during the Chunin exam prelim matches and went to see if she could do anything to help this person. As they made their way to the second room of the hospital they heard the sound of someone yelling about proving his flames of youth despite being injured and as they turned the corner, they saw a pissed off Denton dragging a protesting and struggling Lee who was wrapped in a bandage like cocoon back to his room. Lee you're going back to your room and you're staying there. You shouldn't be training in your condition anyway you got injured during your match in the prelims, Tenten said and she struggled to drag Lee back to his room, but Tenten I will weaken if I don't at least get a day's worth of training. Please just 30 push-ups and I'll be done for today. He tried to reason. No Yubaka the doctor said to stay off your feet until Tsunade-sama gets back and training will only make it worse. She responded and was inwardly cursing at how her teammate could be this strong even in his current condition. Yo Panda Chen needs some help? A voice behind her asked and a tick mark formed on her head and growled at the nickname. Don't call me that, she yelled as she turned around but then paused when she saw Naruto walking towards her with his hands in his pocket and was grinning. And Naruto? Yo! Hey Lee shouldn't you be in bed bro? Naruto asked while the bowl cut ninja blinked when he saw Naruto. Naruto-san you have returned my youthful friend. Congratulations on your promotion, Lee said with a grin on his face while Tenchan bonked him on the head and said blonde chuckled. Same hero oh yeah I'd like you two to meet my he didn't get to finish because a green blur crashed into him and sent him flying into a wall and that blur happened to be a grinning guy. Tsunade Sama you have retuned. Thank you oh youthful Kami you have answered my prayers, he said in a prayer position with anime tears falling from his face while a spotlight shined down on him which caused everyone to sweat drop. Tenten on the other hand was trying to pull Naruto out of the imprint he made in the wall when Guy crashed into him and successfully did so while the blonde had swirls in his eyes. Hey Naruto-kun are you alright? Tenten asked the groaning blonde. Tenten why are there three of you standing in front of me? Naruto asked the girl who sweat dropped until he shook the cobwebs out of his head. Man what the heck hit me? Not what hit you Naruto, who hit you? Tenten said pointing at Guy but then her eyes bugged out when she saw her idol standing a couple of feet from her. I is that she tried to say but the words died in her mouth. Yep. That is Tsunade Senju. The next Hokage and my aunt. Naruto said which made Tenten's jaw drop and just stare at Naruto who blinked a few time. What? He asked and the next thing that happened was that she fainted but luckily for her she was caught by Naruto. Before she hit the ground, Tsunade shook her head and then looked towards a bound up Lee. So you're the one who got injured during your fight with Sabaku no Gara, correct? Tsunade asked Lee who blinked and nodded. Well then let's head to your room and see what the damage is but first let's get these off. She ripped off the bandage as he was bound in without even trying shocking the taijutsu specialist. Now come on young man, she said motioning him to follow her which he did while Guy was thanking Kami for bringing the goddess of medicine back to the village. Naruto on the other hand sweat dropped while holding an unconscious Tenten in his arms. He sighs and sets her down on the ground, pulling out some smelling salts from one of his pockets, popping the bottle open and waving it in front of her nose. A few seconds later, her head shot up and she looked around. Who? What? Where? She said and saw Naruto. Oh hey Naruto-kun I had the weirdest dream that Tsunade-sama was here and you were her nephew, she said and the blonde rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. Well I hate tell you this but it's true. He answered which made her eyes widen. But don't faint again Tenten rubbed the back of her head and blushed in embarrassment. Hey sorry about that. Oh I wanted to talk to you about those two swords you had on your person after the tuning exams but you already left with Jiraiya-sama to find Tsunade-sama. Where did you get them by the way? She asked. Naruto was about to speak up but that was when an Anbu appeared in the hospital. Namikaze-sama, the sun daime wanted me to inform you that your fiancé Sabaku no Tamari has arrived while you and Jiraiya-sama were away to look for Tsunade-sama and right now she's at the Nara clan's compound, he stated and Tenten's eyes bugged out when he said Tamari was his fiancé. Gotcha well I'll see you later Tenten and I'll head to your dad's weapon shop and bring my swords with me he said and shun shines away. Nara compound. Tamari and Shikamaru were engaged in a terrifying game of shogi. 
So far Tamari won 4 game with Shikamaru winning 5 and so far they were evenly matched. Hey I should have known you two would have been doing this, said a voice and the two looked up to see a smirking Naruto and Yoshino Nara, Shikamaru's mother, approaching them. Thanks for the green tea Yoshino-sama. I've never tasted anything so amazing like the kind you made, he said politely and bowed. Why thank you Naruto-kun and just call me Yoshino-san and be sure to treat your fiancé like a queen, she said while he chuckles and does a mock salute. Yay ma'am. Naruto said which made her giggle and looked at Tamari. You've got a good one here Tamari-san. Polite, strong, rich, and not lazy, she emphasized which made Shikamaru's brows twitch while Shikaku, who was cleaning up some deer antlers to send to the pharmacy center sneezed and muttered troublesome wife. Tamari on the other hand grinned and nodded and as soon as Yoshino left, Tamari placed her game piece on the board and said checkmate which caused Shikamaru to slump his shoulders. The fan user then walked over to Naruto and wrapped her arms around his neck Hey Naruto-kun, she said while he smirked and wrapped an arm around her waist. Hello yourself beautiful, he said. Thanks for letting my future wife stay here while I was gone Shika, said however waved his hand in dismissal. Yeah yeah whatever. Wait did you say future wife? He asked as he shot his head up in shock and Naruto nodded. You're engaged to her? Tamari on the other hand narrowed her eyes dangerously at the shadow user. Yes I am his fiancé is that a problem you lazy rat? She asked in a tone that promised pain and was slowly reaching for her fan and use it to cave his skull in. Naruto's eyes widened when he saw what she was about to do and Shikamaru was about to open his mouth only for Naruto to speak up. What would you look at the time we gotta go and get you settled at my apartment Tamari-chan? Naruto stated while she looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Apartment? I thought you had a clan complex? She asked. Oh I do but sadly I need my godfather Jiraiya who is now in the hospital has to remove the barriers and security seals since he and my dad made some new ones that keep people out and sadly I'm only intermediate level when it comes to Fuinjutsu and I could end up killing myself if I messed with them. He answered. Oh I see. Well is the apartment nice? She asked and he scoffs. Nice? My mom left me the place and it is beyond nice. Trust me you'll be wowed by it, he said. So where's your stuff? He asked. Oh I got everything I own in a ceiling scroll, she said releasing him and grabbing a large scroll from the porch and Naruto whistled. Wow did you bring the whole house with you? He asked humorously and she responded by lightly punching him in the shoulder. Shut it you and carry me to your apartment. She ordered with a playful grin on her face. After Naruto straps the scroll with her belongings on his back as well as her fan, he scoops her up in his arms holding her bridal style and making her giggle while she wrapped her arms around his neck. See you later Shika. He said and Shun shines away with his second fiancé while the Nara mutters troublesome but he was also glad that he now had another rival aside from his dad and Shogi, Naruto's apartment. Naruto and Tamari appeared in front of his door and he sets her down. Well here's our humble abode until we move into my parents' complex, he said as he pulled out the key and opened the door. As they entered Tamari whistled at how clean and decorative the place was. Wow this place is huge. Your mom must have been loaded to afford a place like this. She said as she looked around, yep she was and so was dad though I barely scratched the surface on either of their accounts so there's no need to worry about money. Oh and before I forget there's someone you've got to meet, he said and a red kit popped out of his jacket and landed on the ground which surprised Amari. The fox then glowed and transformed into a human shape and after the glow died it revealed Q and her human form grinning into Amari's eyes bugged out. Tamari say hello to my first mate and tenant the QB no Yoko or Q as I call her. Naruto said which made her sputter and point to Q who just giggled. You can relax Tamari-san I'm not gonna hurt you or anything even though I'm the strongest of the Baiju I'm not like that bloodthirsty weasel Shukaku, she stated while the wind user let out a sigh of relief. So you're Naruto-kun's third future mate huh? She said and started to walk around a nervous Tamari and seemed to be inspecting her body. Hmm. Not bad. You take real good care of your body and despite your age, you're filled out in the right places. She commented which made Tamari turn red due to the fact that she's being checked out by the opposite gender and a female demon no less. Naruto on the other hand had to plug his nose in from the thoughts he was getting but what he saw next made his eyes bug out. Q was groping Tamari's breasts with both hand and were giving them a good squeeze. Wow, you're already a C-cup, she said as she squeezed them more and Tamari's eye was twitching in embarrassment and steam escaped from her ears but the she squeaked when Q grabbed and squeezed her rear. Damn do you have any idea how many girls would kill to have a nice and firm ass like this one, she stated. Naruto managed to snap out of his stupor and cough. Ahem Q I think you should stop inspecting Tamari-chan before her head explodes from the amount of blood rushing in it, he said and the demoness blinks and looks at Tamari's red face. Whoops sorry about that. Anyhow welcome to the family Tamari-chan and don't hesitate to do anything I wouldn't do with Naruto-kun especially with what he's packing in his boxers, 
she said which made Tamari cover her nose and Naruto to turn red. Q, Naruto yelled out in embarrassment. Night. After that little scene and after Tamari got settled in and they had dinner, Naruto was currently in his room in a gray sleeveless t-shirt and a pair of black shorts writing down some notes from a few Injutsu book he got from Jiraiya during his training. Q was currently in her fox form sleeping on the edge of his bed curled up into a ball with her ears twitching occasionally. As he continued to do this, there was a knock on his door. Come in Tamari-chan, Naruto said as the door opened. He looked up and saw Tamari with her hair down and was wearing a light purple shirt that stopped above her knees. Hello beautiful come to give me a goodnight kiss? He asked as he put the stuff away. Tamari smirks and walks over to the bed and sits down on it. Actually I was hoping to stay the night with you Naruto-kun. Please. She asked with a pout on her face while he chuckles. Sure I was about to hit the hay anyway, he said getting a grin from her. She crawled onto the bed and then kissed him on the lips and he returned it. After kissing for a few minutes their lips parted and Naruto laid back. Tamari rested her head on his chest and pressed her body against his while he wrapped an arm around her. Good night Foxy-kun, Tamari said while he smirked. Good night Sabaku Haim, Naruto stated and snapped his fingers which resulted in the lights turning off. A few seconds later Tamari squeaked. Hey! No groping pervert, Tamari said in the darkness. That wasn't me, Naruto stated and heard Q giggling. Q, ah. Oi. Stop feeling me up you perverted vixen and Naruto move your leg it's poking me, she said only for Naruto to remain silent. Naruto did you hear me? She asked as she shifted her body around. Ah Tamari-chan that's not my leg. Naruto replied and said female blonde was glad Naruto couldn't see the huge blush on her face. Q on the other hand was giggling like crazy. I told you he was packing. She said and groped them both making them yelp. Q. Naruto and Tamari yelled at the same time as she grabbed them both in the darkness. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.